It's only just, mind you, marginally, really. Hello. Just made that, anyway. <laughs> yeah, I was Never seen you move so fast. Yes, you have, actually. <laughs> but we don't talk about that on there. No. No. How are you? Very well. How are you? I'm extremely well. I've really enjoyed David's show again this evening for uh, three reasons. One, because I, um, uh, I, I, I really think the time has come for him to ask her out. I don't suppose you were listening. Oh, I know what you mean, though. Yes, I had a chat yeah. with him about that during did the week. Did you? Yes. I did, too. Yes. Oh, did you? Yeah. Now, what did he tell you? Uh, he's... Uh, he was guarded. Mm. He told me there was three of them. That's all I'm saying. Okay. Okay. <laughs> um, Make of that what you will. What, what else did I love about his show? I love the Elvis song. The Elvis song. That was great. I've never heard that before. There's no other song makes me laugh more than that. There've been funny songs, but nothing as funny as that. I mean, just he goes. hearing someone laugh though does he really make goes. you laugh? It's infectious. And he's got a big laugh, hasn't he? Very big. <laughs> <laughs> it's sort of like Tommy, Tommy Cooper with the bass turned up. Mm. Uh, yes. And I have to apologise to David as well because I was messing around in a studio and um, I was putting a load of stuff to air which was extremely naughty of me. So uh, very naughty. Well, I've done very well to uh, to deal with that. So I owe him a pint, oh, about ten pints now. Anyway, um, good evening and welcome to the late night Saturday night phone in on BBC Southern Counties Radio with Ali and Tommy. The first part of the programme from nine until ten is the internet hour, uh, where we slant things slightly in favour of people who are listening on their PCs. Although you don't have to be listening on your PC to take part. No. The way it works is we're going to set you some internet challenges. You might perhaps know the answer without needing to refer to the World Wide Web. If that's the case, you can call 08459570057. But if you are online, you can look it up and get back to us with the answer. You can either text 07786207070. You can email me, alison.ferns at bbc.co.uk. Or you can email tommy, tommy.boyd at bbc.co.uk. Okay. And if you are listening at home and you're not on the internet, but there's something that you've always wanted to know the answer to, then you can phone in, set your own challenge, and then our listeners will try and find out the answer for you. Yeah, if you're on your PC, you, you should also have a, a dip into the forum, which is where uh, there's, there's about 170, I believe, listeners. Hey, I'm on the forum tonight. I am loving the forum tonight. Why is that then? Everyone should go to this, www.tommyboydforum.com, because what? they've um, tampered, shall we say, with the uh, name of the shrine. Uh, it used to be called the Tommy Boyd Shrine. Quite right, too. The Alison Ferns Shrine. Oh, here we go. Beaming smile of me. Little, tiny, minute photo of you. I'm just not bothered, you see. <laughs> I have other ambitions now. Yeah. Um, oh eight four five nine five seven double oh five seven. If you if you can get to a PC and you want to join in the forum stuff, which is great because, a we um, we uh, broadcast quite a lot of what goes on on the forum. Uh, we're uh, I I enormously indebted to the people who, um, who who use the forum, who provide us with uh, challenges, and who go researching the questions that are set by listeners. Um, but if you want to join in, the address of the forum is Tommy Boyd Forum dot com. Simple as that. But it is the Allison Ferns Shrine. Yes. Tonight. Yeah, fine, and I'm cool <laughs> with that, but the address <laughs> remains Tommy Boyd Forum. <laughs> but of course, you can email me, Alison yeah. Ferns, at oh. bbc.co.uk. <laughs> Are we doing one of these things now? Yes. This sort of like, you know, like radio, ra like radio married couple. Richard and Judy squabble, eat your heart slight out. squabbly, yeah. Yeah. No, let's not do that one. Um, there's somebody online too, which I'll just say hello to quickly and then we'll crack on. Hello. Hello, Tommy. Hi. Hello. Hello, Alison. Hiya. How's the canals doing? Very well. Uh, two little questions, please. Yep. Oh, they intrigued me. Is, uh, the year, we, we say we're in the 21st century. Mm -hmm. I'm still trying to work this out. If we can go back to AD and a dominate from zero. Now, look, the, I'm sorry. I happen to have been listening to Southern Counties earlier on this week. That's right, I still can't work it and out. And I heard your distinctive Welsh tones ringing some other poor sod and asking <laughs> this same <laughs> tedious question, man. But they didn't get... Let it go! They didn't get it right. Let though. it go. What is the question? I'm intrigued L now. Don't be intrigued. It's not intriguing. 
Taff, let it go, man. <laughs> let it go, it's not all right? Answered. Let it go. Right, then, number two question. A watch. Most people are right handed. Agreed? Mm. Why is it that a watch is designed for the left hand? Because the winders on the. Ah, well, it had to do with sword play back in medieval times. Ah, lovely. Okay. Thank you. He bought it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't Some believe you. Some people just want an answer. <laughs> no, you shouldn't believe me. I don't. I don't, I don't think they had uh, watches exactly, in medieval times. Exactly, that's time. why I said. Good, well, good spot by you. Good spot by you. You're, you're not going to get easily wound up, are you? No. No, good. But I would, if there's any listeners about this 21st century... No, look, pal, <laughs> I was listening. You got a perfectly good explanation. No. From several... You, don't say no. no to me. One. Come round there with a leak and I will show you a <laughs> trick that will make you hate vegetables for the rest of your life, all right? Now, don't know me. One, one person. I heard you get a perfect, perfectly good... And I thought, that's that bloke who rings me sometimes. That's correct. Us, I mean. Sorry, Alison. It's uh, George Holbert. <laughs> nice gentleman, too. No, so, the, the simple fact of the matter is, right, that it doesn't matter. It's right? It doesn't true. matter. It doesn't matter. Let it go. <laughs> well, you always say you like an argument. I know, but there's not enough there to make an argument of it. I mean, either you don't understand the answer... Exactly. Well, the, the but then the reason for that is either it hasn't been very well explained to you, well, or may what? I, may, may I talk for one moment? No! Uh, excuse me, could both of you shut up? Is that possible? No. Certainly. I'm... Polite. Good. Okay. Alison, may I address you? Yes. Thank you. May you undress her? When, <laughs> when Tommy said several people, only one person, he said, well, my teacher told me that blah, blah, blah. Never listen to what people tell you. Try and work things out All right, yourself. okay, let's, let's go through this. All right, Joe, I'll give you my... Uh, what's your name again? Taff. What's your name? I'll call you Taff. Right. Alan, actually. All right, Alan. Alan. So, it's the year O, okay? Zero. M start from the minute, the second. I, I don't have to start from the bloody second, man. I'm just starting from the year naught, right? No. It's now year one, okay? No, no need to shout. Get it's excited. now year one. What year is it? <laughs> Back at me. What year is it? <laughs> I'm asking you a simple question. I'm giving you a hint. It's year one. What year is it? No, it's year zero. What year is it when it's now year two? It's now year... No, you're losing it already, Tommy. <laughs> what is the matter with this man? Start with uh, the minute. Right, OK. You don't count a minute until it gets to a minute. It's seconds. Right, fine. This is the point. Zero to 59, then it becomes one minute. All right, minute. so when do, where, do we, where do we start... Anno, no, where do we start Anno Domini Six, from, then? 60 minutes. It's irrelevant... It's irrelevant. Uh, if you uh, want to stay on the line, you're going to be banned. You're going to be banned Jesus if you. Christ. You're going to be banned if you don't stop being right. stupid on I'm purpose. Not being stupid. Because if you're out. not being this stupid on purpose, then I would deny you the vote, and I would make sure that your neighbours played music very loud until <laughs> way into the night. I would punish you hideously. Now shut up and listen. Well, there'd have to be a few miles away. Got a bit of land. I said, shut up and listen. Right? What year? Do you want it to be after the birth of Christ and before the 100th? It... it, just, it you, we're, we're playing here. I'm we're not, imagining. It, never mind. If you just listened... No, I'm, I'm asking you to listen and answer me a question. Let's assume it's the third year after Christ was born. Couldn't we just start with the seconds and minutes right. and hours? Please. No, because you're... Uh, you, you, and because then it's not relevant. It out, you see. I, okay, I, go I, on then. Go on then. Right, we start off zero, shall we say. We don't say, ah, it's... No, wait a minute, wait a minute. Has he been born yet? Is it the moment of his birth? Can, can we just start... What time was he born at? Is that relevant? Can we... Can what, we... is it the day of his birth or the no. day after his birth? Let's what go is... for the day after his birth, You're all right? You're interrupting me now. Well, I'm trying to fix a point in Religion time. Is, is it's wrong. irrelevant. I'm trying time to fix a point in time. another Tommy. Yeah. Uh, fix a point no. in time. Can I just... No! Answer the question or else you'll be banned for life. Perhaps you'd like to hang me, shoot me. Banned for life. Shoot me. All right. Is that how you do, you can't work out things if you don't agree or disagree? No, you're, you, 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 you're wasting our time. I'm, no, I'm afraid. I, I've quite listened. liked talking to you of, a little bit from time to time, but... You haven't listened to me. No, I'm the, the point... to say my one little thing yet. The, yes, I have. The point is this, all right? You're wasting everybody's time. I'm sorry, you're now banned forever. Isn't that sad? <laughs> <laughs> Silly man. Oh, what, he do, what he pretends he doesn't get is that for the first hundred years after the birth of Christ, let's mm. say it's 32 AD, okay, yeah. that's the first century. 
isn't it? Mm. We're in the first century yeah. then. Then it gets to be 102 years after the birth of Christ, so it's 102, but that's the second century. That's what you can't get, that the number at the front of the number of years it is, mm. is different from the amount of centuries that you're involved in. It's mm. the second century you're in. You can't get that. But why does he keep ringing up everybody and asking them this question? He's on his trouble, for Joe. I, he's not. He's 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 uh, he's a bit sad, and he's banned now. Only You're ten minutes in, he's in a row. I know. That's <laughs> even good going for you. Banned for life. <laughs> Is Sorry? that him again? Is he still there laughing? Yeah, but he's not coming on again. Okay, let's crack on, shall we? Luckily, a lot of our listeners are considerably more intelligent than that. Um, I think I might give the internet challenges out. Good idea. For this evening. Good idea. Um, the first one. What is the most expensive piece of artwork currently reported as missing? Yes. Didn't that screen painting go missing recently? And then I think they got it back. Oh, did they? Um, well, that I think was it might be a, uh, a Van Gogh, I think, uh, got uh, half-inched somewhere along the way. Oh, right, and that's from Tristiro. I hope I'm saying that right. Um, aside from the Bible, which book has sold the most copies worldwide? This Dan Brown bloke yeah, seems it will to be, be selling a lot code. of copies. Well, mm. I don't know about that, but he's got f il uh, four in the top 11 at the yeah. moment. Yeah, I think they're huge. All rubbish, but anyway. They're not, actually. Derek from Glasgow asks, what is or was the most successful and most watched TV programme in the world? Right, I'm guessing the World Cup final, the last one round. Yeah. But now a lot of people it, it, tuned it in for... some kind of sporting event. Olympics, Churchill's... Something like that. Funeral, a lot of people tuned in for that. Number four, why is cold water denser than hot water? That's from Daniel in Louisville, Kentucky. Good question. Mm. Jason, I didn't even know it was denser. Jason from the Shrine, why is mould on certain cheeses perfectly acceptable to eat, but not on other foods? Good question. I've often wondered that. Yeah, it, uh, m yeah, me too. Mm. Um, but I sometimes eat bread and then find out that there's a few little of those l little blue spots that you yeah. get on the crust, you know, and you realise you've already eaten them. It doesn't hurt. And you think, hey ho, here we go. Mm. But actually, the following day, you feel pretty good. Yeah. Go for a jog. Yeah. Mona from Louisville, Kentucky Getting asks... another fight. What causes swollen taste buds? Didn't know that could happen. I didn't. Hmm. Number seven, um, from Vivid Ricks. Whatever happened to the surviving lifeboats from the Titanic? That is a good question. Hmm. Probably buy one on eBay. Um, Brymon <laughs> asks, where is the strangest place a couple have made love? <laughs> Can you find that out on the internet? I, 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 I don't know. I got <clears throat> caught uh, this afternoon. I was looking up. I needed a picture of um, of, of somebody giving somebody a piggyback. Right. I, I'm not, you know, you don't need to know why, but no. I just did. And so I put piggyback mm. in on Google. Mm. And uh, I got back a site and um, it was not what I had in mind. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure. That question's quite funny, actually, because I pulled a great wind-up this week. Yeah. Now, I don't want to name any names, because it could be very embarrassing for the party's concerned, but let's just say I found out that at my wedding, yes. one of the couples attending yes. sneaked away, yes. went to the top of the hotel, yes. found a room by which they could get through and out onto the roof. And? And got down they? to it. Fantastic. So I found out through the grapevine, so I emailed them yes. and said... Look, this is a really sort of tricky thing. I don't quite know how to ask you this, but yeah. the hotel have phoned me. Mm. They're trying mm. to mm. identify mm. someone. Mm. Apparently, they've got mm. CCTV footage. Oh, excellent. Brilliant. Um, they've got concerns about uh, indecent uh, exposure. exposure. And it was very funny. This person was very, very, very ashamed and very embarrassed. And they owned up to it. Yes. And you got no, them. They didn't, first of all. They didn't own up, first of all, at all. And then they right. kind of cottoned on that perhaps I was in fact, winding them up. But yes. But a hotel roof, probably not the strangest place. Well, there aren't many strange places, are there? You know, what's the strangest place that you've had a picnic? What's the strangest place that, you know, you've been? Mm. What is the strangest place you've been? The strangest place I've been? Yeah. Hmm. I don't know. Yeah, exactly. So there aren't any strange places to, to make love, are there, really? Mm. In that respect, because there aren't any strange places on Earth. I mean, I've been down Wookie Hole. That's probably the strangest... <laughs> You know. <laughs> that's odd. Have you been there, Wookie Hole? It's yeah, odd, isn't it? Gorge, the Jedi Gorge, yeah. all that is odd. That is yeah, odd. That is odd. Yeah. Strange. But I haven't made love there. 
No. Obviously. No. But, you know, you don't go to... I mean, people... I think people are... Uh, some people are drawn by the idea of being romantic in a dangerous place. A lift. A phone box. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I can think of some of the strangest sights I've seen... But <laughs> yes. I don't know whether that's broadcastable, is it? Probably really? not at quarter past nine. You know what I mean. Challenge number ten. Why do dictionaries have page numbers? That's mysterious. Oh, and I've missed out. Okay. How could I miss out number nine? It's from Darcy Sato. Yeah. Where and how tall is the highest slide in the world? Oh, sliding with Darcy <laughs> Sato. Oh, 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 Darcy. <laughs> and he has a big one, too. <laughs> Another one from Spurious. Going, doesn't it? Has there ever been any governmental or otherwise official response from a governing authority concerning a conspiracy theory? Well, I would say that um, certainly uh, there was a... a I, I, I have a friend who was involved in a congressional inquiry into the Kennedy assassination, which was several years after the Warren report, which came to the conclusion that it was more likely that there was more than one person involved in the assassination mm. of Kennedy and therefore it was a conspiracy so since the J who shot JFK is probably the biggest conspiracy um, around and has been for a long time then um, Spurious on the basis of that alone I'd say yes there has been also official... um, Princess Diana that's a conspiracy I theory I guess the if fact I... that our lot want the they're still having car. an inquiry aren't they into that because they've got this lovely old fashioned notion that our coppers are much cleverer than French coppers hmm which is um, quite sort of touching, isn't it? <laughs> Number 12. Jason from the Shrine asks, several failed attempts were made to kill Rasputin at the same gathering. What were they and what did he eventually die of? Well, I think all of them, if I remember rightly. They had a go at... They poisoned him, they um, stabbed him, they shot him, they, you know... Threw I, him think off, went th for it. I think they threw him off the top of a tall building. Right. <laughs> they weren't messing about, were they? No, they were going to get the job just done. trying to scare him off. Um, Daniel Louisville, Kentucky... Wound him. ...asks, a monkey was once tried and convicted for doing what in Indiana? This is an excellent question. The uh, Louisville link is working really well tonight. Thank you, guys. And the last one on the board, I think we've got at the moment, on the forum, why does lightning sometimes seem different colours? What causes this and what colours do people see? That's uh, Chris. Who's, I didn't know uh, that it did seem different colours. On the message board. Well, somebody said to me a long time ago, how do we know that when we see red, other people see the same thing? Mm. That's thought, isn't it? It is. Um, there was a big storm, wasn't there? Was it Monday night or Tuesday night? It, uh, where we were in Chichester, it skirted us and went off up towards London. Quite right, too. Um, don't have storms in Chichester. No, God, we don't. You don't pay that kind of money for your homes to be bothered by things like lightning storms. Absolutely. Chichester's been voted officially the third best place in Britain to live. And I, I say you... Has that, it? Yes, that means we're in Europe next year. <laughs> Where's we're the, the first and the, second? We're in the Champions League next year. We've been drawn in a very difficult group. We've got Rome, we've got Monte Carlo, and um, and Oslo. So we'll probably won't have any trouble against Oslo. Where were the first and second best places? I, I didn't see it, but the mayor of Chichester was going on about the fact that not only is Chichester the third best place to live in Britain, we also have the biggest rock star in the world now. Who? Because some poor little fellow lived in Chichester for ten years and then went off to New York and made it big. He won the Mercury Award. I've forgotten his name. I never knew his that name, big. actually. <laughs> oh, he's big. He's Huge, big. but you can't remember. Oh, he's big in both respects. But right. I, I've never heard one of his tunes. And it wouldn't be I, it wouldn't be anywhere near as funny as Elvis Presley's um, laughing version no. of Lonesome tonight. We already had some answers in for Excellent. the internet challenges. Graham Forster, you can always count on Graham. He's answering this major art thefts challenge. He says, Jean Vermeer's The Concert was stolen from the Gardner Museum in Boston on March the 18th, 1990. Five million pound reward is offered for its return. What they're doing now, speaking of paintings, mm. is looking for the ten ba greatest paintings of all time. Another Channel 4 Saturday night programme. I'm getting fed up with lists, aren't you? Oh, Channel 4 love it, don't they? The top 100 films of all time. Yeah. The top 100 TV Do you think we'll get the top time. 100 programmes about lists <laughs> of all time? We will. We should do. It Probably will happen. in the end. Eventually, it will definitely happen. Yeah, I'm pretty sure of that. Oh. 
We've got some more answers coming in. If you do want to answer any of the challenges, you can email alison.ferns at bbc.co.uk or tommy.boyd at bbc.co.uk or you can text 077 Oh yeah. double seven eight six twenty seventy seventy. It's the Internet Hour on BBC Southern Counties Radio from nine until ten o'clock on a Saturday night. Um, you're more than welcome if you're listening on a wireless, but if you're if you can get to a PC and listen to the show on a PC. And by the way, you can download the show. There's there's loads of sites. BBC is fi official Southern Counties Radio site. It's very good. Um, there's various other places. Chaotics run a very good site for where they've archived all of our shows. Um, but the Internet Hour is, is primarily for people to uh, set and respond to challenges, questions that only really the Internet as a fabulous database, a lot of it's nonsense, of course, uh, can deal with. Um, I'll, we'll run over some of the questions and challenges that uh, are out there tonight in just a second, but let's get one or two answers, shall we? Ali Matthew Parker has emailed... Oh, this is a private email. Yeah, fine. No, I'll, yeah, thank you. Um, I, I emailed him. He's the guy who runs the internet. He's running the forum tonight. Oh, okay. And I've said to him that um, it would be nice to get the word out about the forum. Uh, we've got about 170 listeners who are signed up to it at the moment. And I, I said to him just before the show, I emailed him uh, and said it would be nice to get some more uh, people on the forum. And one of the ways we can do that, of course, is by publishing some of the photographs of you that were taken last week, because I found them very fetching. Did you? I did. Well, I thank did. thank you. No, I did. I told you that, didn't I? You did. There was one particular one that yeah. you found very Number seven, fetching. I think it was. Number seven, yeah. Yeah, that was good. That's going up there. Good. Because people wonder what you look like. They do. Yeah. Yeah. And that's you at your best. I oh, think. I don't think it was my best. No? No. Oh, okay. No. Yeah. If I'd have known there was a photographer in, I would have made an effort. <laughs> you see. Okay. Um, Jack from Manchester has emailed with regards to this missing art question. Yep. Um, as my insurance company know, I've owned a few dozen Michelangelo paintings which went missing from my two-bedroom flat in Manchester. <laughs> Wish him luck with the claim. Yes. Jason of the Shrine has emailed, there's no rush for you to get back with the interview questions, Alison. <laughs> <laughs> for the uh, the website. What can um, I say? That's I'm just a rubbish. quote from Roger. That goes back to the 4th of December 2004. <laughs> um, he says, I'd like to get uh, in early with the answer to question 13. The monkey in Indiana was tried and convicted, he says, for smoking. No. That's what he says. Well, and they tend to be out. right, these people. Daniel and Mona have answered um, with a response to whatever happened to the surviving lifeboats from the Titanic. Yeah. They say the surviving lifeboats were returned to service with the White Star Line and on other ships. No record has been found that tells us what ships they ended up on. And WSL repainted the lifeboats with the name of the new ship they were put on, so there is no way to know the final disposition of the lifeboats. Hmm. And Chris Hogben has emailed, looking through this week's questions, this one seems to be the easiest to answer. It would appear that a monkey's once tried and convicted of smoking a cigarette in Indiana. Not quite sure how he could be tried and convicted if he can't even speak English. Um, do we know what his sentence was? Does anybody know what he got? Because in Hartlepool they hanged a monkey, didn't they? Did they? Yes, the football team's oh, nickname is the monkey hangers. No, no! No! No, no! If anybody wants to go and check this, this is astonishing. Um, it was only about a hundred years ago. Um, but they were really worried about aliens, I think. You know, people coming over here and taking our jobs. And uh, they, f they found this monkey and trumped up some charge and they hanged it. No. They hanged it. It was a mob thing. It wasn't an official, you know, court thing. It was a mob thing. No. They lynched it. Unbelievable. But I'm sure it must be the truth if it's coming from your lips. Um, if you want to talk to other people listening to the show, you can go on to the Tommy Boyd forum. Tommy. Oh, hello. My Liz. Liz, Tommy. I come from up near um, West Hartlepool. Right. Right. Yeah. And it is very true, and it is history. Um, I didn't hang the monkey, I was alive then. But what happened to the monkey was, it was um, a, sh a friendship was sunk, and what happened to the monkey was, it was washed up on the beach, hanging onto a bit of a raft, a bit of wood, anything. It was given a fair sentence, 
But in them days, they they fought, you know, it, it was given a fair sentence. Which was what? And, um, it was, um, <laughs> when, being, when being cross-examined, all it could do was give gibberish. <laughs> they could not understand the French much. And if, I hanged was everybody, if, I hanged was... ev if I hanged everybody who came on this show just because Tell they me. spoke gibberish... Tell me. Do you know what? It'd be, like be like a gulag down ah, here you're in the okay. south of England. Tell me, please, Liz. And it had Liz? a fair trial. Liz. Who the hell is Liz? And it was... I think I might be Liz. Are you Liz? <laughs> yes. So, okay. Yes. Right, I listened to you. I've listened to you a couple of years now. Right. And I listened to you all the time. It's so the first what, time I've got bravery to talk to you. What, what was the oh, please? Yeah, what was the crime? It, that the, the monkey, crime was French it was being a monkey. It was found guilty yes. being a French spy. A French spy. <laughs> Fantastic. Thank you very much indeed, yes. friend. Thank and you. it was hung by the neck, sentenced to death, and hung. Right. Well, and okay. that is true history. It is. Yes, sir. Thank you. Mm. Thank you very much indeed. A French spy. Yeah. Let's go to line four. Good evening. You're in the internet hour on BBC Southern Counties Radio with Ali and Tommy. Careful, Hello. though. Don't come on here and speak gibberish. <laughs> <laughs> well, have you done in? Hello, Ali. Hello, Hello. Tommy. No gibberish. No gibberish. Well, I've got, I'm a podcaster, so I've got no idea what you've been talking about, but I've got a question. Okay. okay. And hopefully, this is a weird one, because I, I really want to know, yeah. but I also want to be right and think that no one on the internet will, will know. Okay, that's good. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's excellent. Because I think this is unanswerable via the internet. Okay. I think people will either know or they won't know, okay? Uh, yeah. Mm. What is this called? Dum, 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 da, 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 dum, da, dum, da, 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 Everyone knows it. Yeah. Everyone knows it. And what is it? Well, it, I know it's the music that the muscle man used on uh, Opportunity Knocks before you or Alison were born. <laughs> and he was the worst show business actor I've ever seen. And he was oh, a... Oh, not the one... Tony Reynolds, I think his name was. I think I've seen somebody use this music when they do that awful thing where they twitch, 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 twitch their twitch stomach their, muscles. Yeah, and he, that was the music he used. Yeah. And he won it six weeks on the trot. Yeah. He beat Lena Zavaroni. <laughs> What's your name, mate? I'm Mark from Luton. You're Mark from Luton. So Someone will know what that's called. You'll be listening to this on the train about Tuesday, will you? I then? will, I will. Beautiful. Thank you so much for your call. <laughs> Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. So Mark set a challenge there. He doesn't believe that anybody on the internet can find out the name of the tune that goes... Doom, da doom, da doom, doom, doo 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 It's called Wheels. Do, do, do. Oh. That's quick. It's called Wheels. <laughs> Who's this? It's Brian in Chessington. It's called Wheels. Wheels, yeah, because I remember it back from my youth. They used to play it before that muscle man found out about it. It was, it yeah. was just a, an instrumental tune. What is it? Wheels. For, yeah, but uh, what sort of... So it was written to illustrate something, because they often used to write music, didn't they, well, to illustrate... So no, it was... It was I, I don't think so. I think it was just wheels. an instrumental piece. That Why Wheels? Wheel? I don't know. I, to ask, I don't like know who wheel. wrote it either. I haven't got that far yet. I'll tell you what sounds like Wheels. <laughs> and again, I think this was written just to illustrate... Um, Railway footage. Oh yeah. Probably. Now you say that there's a big vote now going on to change the national anthem. Oh yeah. And I believe that one of the songs that's up there is I think it's Elgar's Coronation March. But I don't know how that goes. No, I don't no. know. I'll, I don't it wouldn't know. be that one, would it? No, no, no. I don't think it'll go that No. No, 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 no. Thanks, no. Brian. OK, bye. If anybody knows how Coronation March goes, mm. I'd love to hear, because it, 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 apparently there's serious talk about us getting a better national anthem. You can't go and change the national anthem. Of course you can. That's exactly why you have a revolution. No. Of course you do. We'll keep the Queen. We'll let her keep her head. Just change her song. We'll get a better song. <laughs> at the at, at the ashes, they now play Jerusalem. Yeah. They don't play God Save Our Gracious Queen. They play Jerusalem. Mm. And there's a big vote for this coronation march. But I don't know how that goes. I'm sure somebody does. And I'm sure they'll let us know. If you do, give us a call. 08459 Hi. Hello. Do you know the coronation march? Uh, I don't know the coronation march, but the tune the man was after... Yeah? 
da 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 uh, it was called Wheels Cha Cha. Wheels Cha Cha? Yes, the man that did the muscle... Yeah? Yeah, flying about. Yeah. But it was called Wheels. Yeah. The original song was the Wheels, and then he called it Wheels Cha Cha. Sounds you know, I've got a good idea. If yeah. somebody remixed that, that could yeah. be a number one hit. No. It could. What, which one? If the crazy frog can do it. Yeah. Imagine the... Yeah. Do, <laughs> do, 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 do. The other do, thing is the do, top do, selling do, do, do. book. Put a beat behind it. <laughs> Go on then. <laughs> Well, maybe. Yeah, I think it could work. What's your name, mate? It's John from Wargrave. Beautiful John. The best-selling book. Yes. After the Bible. Yeah. The Thoughts of Chairman Mao. Probably. Funny you say that. I've got an email from Daniel which says exactly the same thing. Quotations from Chairman Mao Zedong. 900 million copies sold. That's well, right. hang on, guys. Yeah. Well, surely, I mean, hey, wake up. What's going on around here? The Koran? No, no. The no, Thoughts no. of Chairman Mao. No? Not I have actually got the top ten, if okay. you would like to know. Okay. Uh, number one is the Holy Bible. Number two, as we say, quotations from Chairman Mao Zedong, which apparently is more commonly known as the Little Red Book. The Little Red yep. Book, that's right. Number three is the American Spelling Book. Ooh. Number four, Guinness World Records, 2003. Mm -hmm. Five, the World Almanac and Book of Facts. Ooh. Six, mm. the McGuffey Readers. What's that? Mm. Do we know what that is? No. No. Number seven, Dr. Spock's baby and child care. Oh, yes. Yeah, hit the baby with the book. And number eight, a message to Garcia. Oh. Number nine, in his steps, what would Jesus do? Uh, and number ten, Valley of the Dolls. Oh, right. No! <laughs> Valley of the <laughs> Dolls? At number ten. You've got all those fine shrines to human wisdom and endeavour and then the Valley of the Bloody Dolls. What's Valley of the Dolls about? It's a book about a bunch of transvestites who go... I think so. Fla ...flouncing around Los Angeles and oh. Hollywood and, um, what have you, around about the late 60s. Tommy. Yes. Yeah, um, I now change my evenings around on Saturday nights and have a beer indoors. Yeah, good idea. If you ever want me to email you a free recommendations for a beer for yes. people to drink indoor to buy from their um, supermarkets or off license. Yes. Um, I'll email you a few. Oh, okay then. It's one of my highlights of my, my bit of an anorak on that sort of thing. Excellent. But, uh, that? Rather than buying the, the usual rubbish in cans. Yes. Um, have a good selection of, uh, of English beers. Okay. And if the worst comes to the worst, if you don't like it, yeah. it actually makes fantastic gravy. Alright, thank All you right. mate. And Tommy. Yes. I keep frightening myself of the years I've been listening to you. I know. Oh, yeah, 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 so have I, and uh, it's, it's, <laughs> oh, it's painful sometimes, isn't it? John, thank you. Thanks, Tommy. Bye. Bye-bye. Nice bye. Um, Nicholas Fudge has emailed about okay. this Rasputin question. Yeah. He says, Tommy and Alison, Rasputin froze to death in a pond. He oh. was shot twice. Yep. Ate poisoned cake, yep. drank poisoned wine, yep. then he was stabbed with a sword, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. then he managed to sort of escape, mm. only to then fall into a pond mm. and freeze to death. Mm. His own clumbiness, clumsiness killed him, not his assassins. I think we, we, can, we can be excused the odd stumble if we've been shot, stabbed and poisoned. I think so. I, you know, if I were to hit, hit the deck, or a yeah. pond even, <laughs> after that, I, I wouldn't be apologising for my behaviour. Not at all. Um, this is going very well, isn't it? What is? Well, this internet hour thing, it's, it's absolute nonsense and yet somehow it's quite interesting. It is. It's all thanks to people. It's not us. All we do is read the stuff out. Exactly. People go, you know, oh, that Alison and Tommy have come up with a remarkable format here, this internet hour thing. And all we're doing is reading out other people's hard work. Mm. Great I'm gonna, idea. I'm going to patent it. Oh, Darcy's speaking to me via the message board. Okay. Say my name like that again, Ali. I'm melting faster than a Texan bar. If you want to find out what else Darcy has to say, and if you want to speak to Darcy yourself, you can go on to www.tommyboydforum.com. Let's take another call, shall we? Because look, things are getting very busy, which is fantastic. Hello, line four. Hello. Who is there? Oh, hello. 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 You sound surprised. <laughs> yes. I didn't think I'd get straight through. Oh, yes. Uh, no, it was just, um, I did send you a text, but I was just, um, text, yes. it was on the subject of the Mercury Award winner. Oh, oh, yeah. Um, it was Anthony Hegarty. Oh, right. And it was Anthony and the Johnsons. Yeah. And the album is I'm a Bird Now. 
and nobody can get hold of it. No. I've never heard of it. You're PJ in Tunbridge, aren't you? That's it. Hello. Hello. I've got the text. Hi, Tommy and Allison. The guy on the Mercury Boys. Well, don't point me reading it. You've just told us what you said. Um, what's it called? This song? Um, no, the album. The called album. I'm a bird now. And you want to hear it? Well, no. I'd like to get hold of the album, but nobody's got yeah. it. Okay. Well, um, eh. somebody I'm on the uncool. internet. I've never even heard of it. But, but, well, they, they won the Mercury Award. Yeah, I don't know what that is anyway. <laughs> well, I didn't, but my sister told me about it. She lives in Bexhill and she's listening to your programme. Beautiful. And I want to send her all my love. Yeah, do that then. Thank you. OK, bye. Cheers, PJ. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 PJ in Tunbridge to Brighton, I think we go now. Hello, uh, Hello. Tommy, it's yeah. David again. Hello. Um, you know all the books you're on about? Yeah. Right, and if you, you didn't have this book, then you wouldn't know afterwards you're on about. Uh, the dictionary never came into it, did it? Mm. You know, then no. we wouldn't know afterwards, Tommy. No. Bye. Oh. Uh, Tommy. What? Oh, yeah. You don't cut me short because um, I'm North Country, do you? Yeah. Hard. Can't stand um, you, North I was down here from 1959, mate. Yeah, I know, but And I'm sad. 65 next month. I know, but I can still tell you from Barnsley. I'm not. I'm Darlington, mate. Well, that's close, isn't it? I don't know where Barnsley is. I don't know where Darlington is. Oh, you take care now. Cheers. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny how people don't mind being mild. People quite like being mildly sort of... They do. <laughs> Phone up and want more of it. <laughs> yeah, they do. Use me some more. <laughs> <laughs> it's like some kind of bizarre S and yeah. radio show. Yes, it's like the torture garden. Where <laughs> yeah. is it again? <laughs> torture. Oh, Do it to me again. <laughs> oh, that poker's not hot enough. <laughs> Let's go to line two. Hello, line two. You're on Southern Counties Internet. Hour. Hi, Tommy. Hi, Alison. Hello. I hope I'm not wrong here, but I think you do know El Gar's Coronation March. Go on. Go on. The land of hope and glory. Is it? Oh, yeah, that would make oh, sense, well, wouldn't yeah, it? You are, then. Yeah. Which is why yeah. we do know it. <laughs> Thanks, yeah. mate. Who's this? Thank you. It's Helen from Shoreham. Beautiful. Nice one, H. Speak to you soon. Bye bye. bye. Cheers. I noticed in this um, list of the world's top ten selling books, yeah. Tommy Boyd's joke book. Glaring omission, I'd say. No. <laughs> that um, that did well. That joke book, did actually. It? Well enough. It did well enough to keep me in broadcasting. Yes. Um, uh, but I did have one book that got into the bestsellers list. What was that? But, but that was because I found out then how easy it is to get in the bestsellers list. Um, which is a sort of, not a cheaty thing, but, um, oh, I'll go, it has to do with signing copies of it. Oh, but what book did you write? I wrote a book called Monster Monsters. Right. And, uh... A children's book. Yeah, it was, yeah. Yeah. And, um, if you sign sufficient, if you go down... I went down to Plymouth to do a book signing thing, and if you sign sufficient copies of the book, mm. okay, they, they they are effectively sold. So the, these two or three bookshops in Plymouth <laughs> <laughs> sold about four thousand copies of this book. So I just get signing them away, so that they had cop signed copies, you know, to um, uh, to sell. Um, and that week I got I think it was on number third or fourth or something in the South of England bestsellers list, oh. and the. Publisher said to me, "Yes, that's that's how a lot of it works." Mm. Um, looking at the text message board, which you can text to if you fancy, oh double seven eight six twenty seventy seventy. Um, Fee has texted, "says I don't have the internet and was wondering if anyone knows of an address I can write to Katie Price, otherwise known as Jordan." I'm sure somebody does. She got married today. Who did? Jordan. Oh, fabulous. Peter Andre. I'm a huge fan of hers. I, think I she's am. A genius absolute genius no not a genius but i think she's great uh louis has uh emailed to say blimey he says tommy you must be commended i've just seen a picture of alison for the first time on the i assume on the, the forum and he says how you keep your hands off her is a miracle <laughs> <laughs> no, <I don't. clears throat> it's a good point you make though louis <laughs> louis more effective is the <laughs> kenneth connor poor as opposed to the Sid James version. Mm. <laughs> Thank you, Louis. You're um, quite right, she's a fine animal. We have some more answers. Um, now, this is something different. This is about the 
highest selling books again, but Graham Forster from Hampton Hill, he says that the second highest selling book in the world, in mm. the English language, mm -hmm. is John Bunyan's Pilgrim's Progress. Okay. But that didn't appear in the list we had before. No. A little bit of controversy this evening. Evening, Tommy. Hello. Evening, Alison. Hello. It's, uh, it's Tommy the cab driver. Hello, mate. Hello. Um, there's another banal question for you, but one we've been scratching our heads on. Is there any record of who was the first person to have laser eye surgery? Okay. Mm. Because they had person. to be extremely brave. Wouldn't they? Yeah. <laughs> it's funny, I got the chance to have that done recently. Well, one of our drivers recently had it done because he wore, you know, contacts before. Yeah, all okay? Um, yeah, yeah, no problem. It was amazing the difference, but it, it dawned on us. You know, at some point, someone had to be the first person mm. to do it. Done. No, I think I, I think you should be banned. <laughs> yeah, well, um, fortunately, my eyesight's all right. The thought of someone. No, I think I think my eye. No, it's it's like it's like sprinters using steroids. It, these artificially aiding their performance. <laughs> Well, it, well, yeah, because he's had an operation to artificially improve his ability to be a tax dri taxi driver, oh. he's taking business away from uh, taxi drivers who stick to the rules. <laughs> he talks so much. This bloke, no, oh, it's true. I, I think you didn't move for another no, argument. No, no, no. no. What is wrong? What is wrong with you tonight? This bloke is the Ben Johnson. Your mate is in a really bad mood. He is. He is the Ben Johnson of taxi drivers. He's a cheat. Yeah. He's a drugs cheat. <laughs> Even so, Tommy, if you can find out, it would it would, uh, it would uh, answer a question that we've been musing over. All right, fair enough. Cheers, thank thank you. you. Where do you stand on taxi drivers who have those beaded on their seat throat. covers? <laughs> Is that artificially aiding their performance? Yes, I would ban them for that. What are they about, those beaded seat covers? The thing is, the, thing is, the Beatles wrote Sergeant Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club band on drugs. All right, so if athletes can be drugs cheats, okay, then why don't we, y y you know, ask for the money back that the Beatles got for Sergeant Pepper's? Mm. It's the same sort of thing, isn't it? I mean, those are illegal drugs that they were using, but in the case of the Beatles doing it, we go, ah, oh, you know, well, they were pop stars, you know, so and it's a fantastic man. album. But when Ben Johnson does it, we go, oh, it's an absolute disgrace. You know, not just that he's Canadian, but he's done that. It's double standards. The whole thing is not a level playing field. <laughs> I do <laughs> believe. One of these days, you know, I've, I've been reading, I've been reading some work that is being done by a highly respected scientist that promises humans a life expectancy of a thousand years, and oh. this is not far away. Not far away. But we already have people having hip operations. My brother's had a hip operation, and I said to him, you know, you, are you fitter now than you were? He said, yeah. I said, is your hip better than the one that God gave you? He said, yeah. I said, well, in the, in, in the not-too-distant future, we'll get athletes having artificial hips and knees and ankles, and they will be able to run that much faster as a result of it. And uh, will they be banned from the Olympics? And should they? Probably not. Think it through. You see? You just don't think, do you? You are especially feisty This tonight. taxi driver, mm. this taxi driver should have got himself a safe job at home base. As it is, <laughs> that is ridiculous. not safe. Working at home base, is it not? You would need your, would need very good eyesight, mm. because how are you going to find all those products that people come up and ask you for? Oh, I'm only, I'm only, I'm only talking. True. I'm only it's true. I'm only talking deep rubbish for the sake of it. Absolute tosh. Um, Owen Pinnell has emailed about this monkey being arrested. Question. Um, he agrees. Yes, it uh, was arrested and convicted for smoking a cigarette. But also, the website that this information has come from yes. is the same website that claims Donald Duck comics were banned in Finland because he doesn't wear pants, mm. the Declaration of Independence was written on hemp paper, etc, etc. If you get a moment, could you go to the hit parade and see whether we've moved up from number 52, our forum? If you get a moment. The hit parade? Yes. How do I find that? Oh, well, you were there earlier on, weren't you, looking up... Well, you know what? Oh, I'll do that then. You chat to line one whilst I check out because the forum was the 52nd most used forum in some sort of world uh, at, ten to, at 10 to 9. Oh. So I'm just, I just want to see if it's moved up. But you talk to 9-1, you flirt away, go on. I Hello, can... who's on line 1? Hello, Ali, it's Adam from Brighton. Hello. How are you, darling? Very well, thank you. Good. Just a quick question, I've mm. tuned in a bit late, so Tommy, you'll have to smack my wrist. Um, I just wondered if they answered the Tesco question from last week. What was it again? It was, uh, where did the name Tesco come from? Oh, yeah, there was a bit of debate about that, wasn't there? 
Mm -hmm. So, Norman, have you got the definitive answer for us? Well, I, I haven't looked it up yet, but uh, as far as I understand it, it was um, the shop owner, Mr Cohen's wife's name. Oh, no, we best. heard all that. That's rubbish. We heard all that last mm. week. That's what I believe it is, anyway. Isn't it just the guy's name? Wasn't he just called Mr Tesco? Well, I thought it was Mr Cohen, and he named it after his wife, Tessie. Well, he might have done, in mm. which case it would be like Tess Company, Tesco. Yeah. Tesco. We yeah. heard another one last week, though, about him naming <coughs> after the guy who supplied his tea bags or something mm. ridiculous. And then another quick question I've always wanted to know, and Tommy, I've spoken to Tommy about this before, backslang, where does it come from? Which is what again? Backbang slang. Yeah. Backslang. Well, I understood it was, it was invented by, uh, service people and work, <coughs> working class people in London. All so right. that they could have conversations um, about their superiors, mm -hmm. vaguely within earshot of them, but without the danger of them being, get, got into trouble because of what oh, they were right. saying, so it was... Yeah, I mean, yeah. I still speak it fluently. Yes. And, uh, I've, I think we've had a conversation in it before. We've sort of st stumbled through it, haven't we, really? We, we have, we have. Yes. Great All fun. Right. Thanks for your call, Adam. Nice Thank one. Thank you. Bye, yeah. mate. Bye, Bye, mate. No, we're still at number 52. Oh, right. So, 52 in which world? In the world of InVision or something. In oh. InVision's, um, world of forums. We're, we're way behind the leader, though. The top forum in the world at the moment, of InVision anyway, is... Oh, I'm not going to give out the address, actually, because it says the most notorious and controversial site. So this is what you're up against on the internet, really, mm. if you're doing clean, good family fun. Yes, which we are, of course. No, I wasn't thinking of us. Ah. Oh. <laughs> God. Oh eight four five nine five seven double oh five seven. A lot of calls during the internet hour tonight. Ah, ah. An answer to this: Why is cold water denser than hot water? Okay. But I'm not going to tell you the answer yet. Why? Because we've got a caller on the line. Okay. We keep you in suspense. Yeah. Hello, Hello. who's there? Hi, it's uh, Bernard, the taxi driver in Brighton. Not a taxi driver's phone in tonight. Quiet night for you guys, is it? Well, no, I just dropped somebody off. So oh, okay. I'll uh, ring you back. It's just. Um, you know, you're talking about the, um, books and, uh, which ones are published, mate? Oh, yeah. The, the, the Bible at the top. I remember hearing, I'm pretty sure I heard it on your radio station, actually, during the day, uh, a few weeks back, that, uh, if you include publications in general, then the Bible has now been outprinted by, you'll never guess what. Go on. The IKEA catalogue. No. In, now printed in 24 different languages around the world. That's possible. It is possible. Scary, but possible. <laughs> yeah, that's what I thought. Because they said since the printing press has been made, the Bible every year has been the most printed thing, except now and the IKEA catalogue has gone past it. <laughs> One way or another, though, it's cabinet makers, isn't it? Oh, yeah, very good. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you can't, oh, no. can't get away from these bloody carpenters, can you? <laughs> <laughs> hey? God. <laughs> Cropping up everywhere they are. Yeah. Yeah, um, I, I shouldn't imagine there were many design pluses to what Jesus knocked out, but, um, <laughs> it was practical. It's practical. Yeah, indeed. Thanks for your call, Bernard. Thank yeah, you. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 So, do you want to know why cold water is denser than hot water? Yes. Cold water is denser than hot water for the same reason that cold gases are denser than hot gases or cold solids are denser than hot solids. Mm -hmm. In hot water, the molecules are bouncing off each other more vigorously mm. and need more space than in cold water, the result is that if you have fewer molecules per unit volume mm. in something hot than in something cold. Mm. Interesting. See, when, mm. when, when we go abroad, we go to a hot country, and if there isn't air conditioning, my brain swells. And by the end of the holiday, when I come back, mm. um, I've got a headache, simply because my brain is now too big for my skull. Because the skull... No, because... Don't laugh. No, I'm it not. Hurts. No. It's painful. Yeah. The skull contracts first, mm. right? Yeah. But the brain is still, because it's right down, you know, the brain takes a long time to cool down. Mm. So first of all, the skull contracts, mm. right, and it squeezes my brain. Dear. I'm convinced that this happens. Yeah, Tommy Nobody believes me. Big head. No, no doctors, one would believe that. Doctors, no one would believe that, that your head swells from time to time. Do you know what doctors I'm do? I'm shocked by the news. My doctor scoffs. <laughs> does he? I love that saying, scoffs. My doctor does scoffs. does scoff? Show me. <laughs> That's it, that is a scoff, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> but, Doc, my, yes, it's a she, but she scoffs. Oh, eight four five nine five seven double oh five seven. the internet hour, 
uh, on BBC Southern Counties Radio, where we use the internet for finding out totally irrelevant pieces of information. It won't yes. help you, won't be of any no. value to you in your life, um, unless you're a taxi driver, in mm. which case you can talk about it at the rank. <laughs> Talking about Endless completely waste. useless, irrelevant information. Good old Brian of Chessington has emailed me. Good evening, Brian. He says he has his own little challenge he'd like to set the listeners. Okay. He says he was listening to a Kate Bush tune this afternoon, and in this said song she mentioned burying her yo-yo in the garden. And he wondered who actually invented it. He said he did some Googling, but with mixed results, it seems. It is Greeks. Oh, no, it's Malaysians. No, it's Chinese. Anyone know? Who invented the yo-yo? I hate yo-yoing. Oh, I used to really like oh, it. Oh, how awful. It used to be quite big, didn't it? Oh, There was God. a time when it was a bit of a fad at I school. I never had one. And you could learn all the different tricks. I wasn't very oh. good at it, but... The cheap ones, one and eleven, were, were, were rubbish. And you had to buy a, a fancy one for three and sixpence. Mm. And, and I was... I just wasn't interested. I couldn't see the point of up and down, up and <laughs> down, walking the dog, <laughs> all that rubbish. I've got a nice email from Bob Skin, oh, yeah. who says, I have further details about the smoking monkey. One of our questions on the internet hour uh, was, is it true that in Indiana a monkey was uh, uh, tried and convicted of a crime in 1923? And he says this, uh, thanks, Bob. In March 1923, a chimpanzee gave a performance at South Bend, Indiana, and amongst other tricks, he smoked a cigarette. Mm. The moment he lit up, policemen stepped forward and demanded the animal's name, uh, to issue a summons for infringing the law of the Indiana legislature against cigarette smoking in public. In court the following day, it was pleaded that the chimpanzee could hardly be expected to know the extent of its guilt, but the magistrate ruled that ignorance is no excuse of breaking the law, which of course is the case, Crazy. and fined the defendant five dollars, which was promptly paid by its trainer. And that is from a book, Beastly Law, by Fenton Bresler. 1986. Fenton Bresler was a famous broadcast lawyer. We don't get them anymore. You don't get tele television lawyers, do you? No, not really. No. Anyway. Um, oh, an answer to what causes swollen taste buds. Okay. Kind of obvious. We should have known this one, really, I think. This is from Daniel, Louisville, Kentucky. He says, it can be caused by a number of things. One of them being very hot food that burns and irritates a taste bud can cause swelling. Yes. You know, like, if you drink hot chocolate, you get that awful... If you drink it before it's cooled down enough, and you've got, like, a woolly mouth, mouth for the rest it? of the day. It just burns your mouth. No, but when you then taste other things later on in the day, they don't taste the same, do they? No, I haven't had this. Oh, I've had that, and I think that's obviously because your taste buds swell. Um, allergies to specific foods can also cause it. Taste buds that taste sweets are located on the tip of the tongue, and salt taste buds are in the two side areas of the tongue tip. Sour taste buds are situated on the lateral sides of the tongue, and bitter taste buds on the back. The area of the tongue where the swollen taste bud is located can be a sign of which taste is involved. Very interesting. Speaking of which, um, I've done some original research, and I've discovered why footballers spit. Oh, yeah. Uh, I think I have stumbled on something, and I don't think anybody else knows this. I'll do it. At, I'll tell you about it after, after 10, 10 o'clock. Good. Jack McMahon has emailed from Manchester. Just an idea for the internet hour. How about having a chat room running during the internet hour to provide a faster instant response to some of the internet challenges? I, I, yeah, Jack, what I need to do... Jack's made a good point here. What I need to do is have the forum up and running at the same time as everything else, but we've only got the one PC in the studio. I've got the forum up, though. Well, OK. So I kind of keep across it. Are they yakking away? Yeah, um, the last thing that they've been talking about, ah, is the fact that we're not just getting the pleasure of you tonight. Yeah. We're getting you all week. Yes, I'm going to be looking counties. after Bill Buckley's show from Monday to Friday ne next week, mm. which is going to be fun. If anybody on the forum wants to contribute, then that, that will be fun, because I... I, I can only bring my own slant on things to a radio programme, so it'll be uh, different from from it, what it normally is. It'll yeah. be fun. It'll be great fun. I'm looking forward to Monday because the test, the Ashes series, will climax, hopefully, yeah. in front so of it's me. It's still going on. We'll, uh, we'll talk about it after 10 o'clock. After 10, yeah, oh, yes, yeah. after 10. Because <sighs> I've, I've realised why I hate it so much. Oh, OK. We'll discuss it further later. Um, I also have a contact address for Jordan. How come? Daniel and Mona from Louisville, Kentucky have emailed me. It's Katie Price's fan club. Okay. 
Uh, P.O. Box P.O. 15036 Argus House, Crowhurst Road, Brighton, East Sussex, BN 18AR. We had to have a listener in Kentucky give us an address up the road from here. <laughs> yes. I like it. <laughs> uh, Tommy and Alison, this is Howard Smith of Kidderminster. Here's a cinema-related question for the Internet Hour. Nearly all film trailers are accompanied... Yes! Yeah, this is so true. Nearly all film trailers are accompanied by that overly dramatic, deep American, gravelly male voice. Yeah, that is very true. Who is he? Who is he? He must be earning a fortune. Who is the guy? It only ever seems to be him. It doesn't matter what the movie is. A gentle comedy, a, a, a farce, a... No, we don't do farces anymore. That's ridiculous. <laughs> a costume piece, a, a blockbuster... A historical drama, it's always, you know, Steven Spielberg. I can't do it. No. I can't get close. Nobody could. But we know what you mean. Who is he? Anyway, Howard asks, Howard asks, have there been any trailers which have been voiced by a female? Mm, none spring to mind. Nay. Alan Crow also has emailed contact details for Jordan. It's a bit creepy. No, not creepy. It's a bit <laughs> worrying. <laughs> That is just so e that some people have her address close to hand. <laughs> well, her fan club address close to hand. Mind you, it's going in my address book as well, so yes. I guess that makes me a bit creepy. I don't know. Um, Howard Smith and Kidderminster has come back again. Dr. Stephen Trokel pa patented the Eximir laser, originally used for etching silicon computer chips for vision correction. Dr. Trokel performed the first laser su surgery on a patient's eyes in... In 1987, the patient, the name of the patient hasn't been recorded for posterity. Hmm. Um, if you do want to answer any of the internet challenges, you've got five minutes to do so. You can email alison.ferns at bbc.co.uk or tommy.boyd at bbc.co.uk. You can call us 08459 570057, just like this person has. Hello? Hello. 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 It's Joan here, Lord's Lake. Hello, Joan, you all right? Yes, I'm right, fine, thank you. Hello. Good. My voice may go in place, but I hope you can hear me. I want to ask you a question, Alison. Yeah? I, as you know, I need to do the other phone. This is the uh, program on the, uh, sort of the other phone. And then that's what I'm going to do now. Hey, Rachel, hi. That's the phone. Sorry, Joan, there's a bit of feedback on the line. It's very difficult to uh, catch exactly what you're saying. Okay. I can't see the letter. Um, I am related to the other phone. There's the phone on coffee. Are you related to the other phones? Yes. Are you related to another phone? Who's on the radio, Joan? Yes. Yeah. Yes. You are? Okay. Are you related to another phone? There's no, no other phones that I know of on the radio. Oh, I see. No. I see. I see. I see. I see. Okay. Oh, yes, oh right. on the phone on the TV, you mean? Yes, that's right. No, no, I'm not related no, to her. Yes, no. And her mother and father still dead. It's the same thing as her mother and father. Okay, thank you for that. No, you're not related to which no. ferns is that? Does she mean fern from Tilly? Fern Britain? Yeah. No, I don't think so. But you're not related to anybody in uh, any other broadcaster? No. No. God no. You can tell this doesn't run in the family. God, yes. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Paul John. 08459 570057, the switchboard number. After 10 o'clock, uh, we'll let it all hang out. Now, there's a lot to discuss this week. Issues, big and small. Uh, let's keep them small. It is a Saturday night. And that's the philosophy of the main part of the show, really, or at least the second half of the show. It's that it's a Saturday night, and um, most of the issues and topics, the news agenda has been um, thoroughly well masticated elsewhere. So our, our view is that um, we'll just kick our shoes off and uh, if you want to join in, if there's something you want to yak about, it can be as trivial as you like. The more trivial, the better, really. Hmm. After all, it's a Saturday night. We don't want to fill our heads with stuff, do we? You can text the show 07786207070 or you can email Alison double L dot ferns f-e-r-n-s the one and only uh, at bbc.co.uk or for me it's tommy.boyd and then the same thing and then you can go to the forum and play if you can get to a pc it's uh, tommyboydforum.com then there's www experiment x 
which is a website dedicated to the Internet Hour. And the Tommy Boyd Shrine is back up and running after a period away. Um, Although this evening it is the Alison Ferns Shrine. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. That's cool. That's cool. <laughs> I'd hoot me. Yeah, yeah. Now you don't think yeah. this, but my ego is much smaller than yours. Yes. The only thing I've got that's smaller than yours. <laughs> <laughs> Graham. So. Well, if I say so, <laughs> yes. Um, Darcy Sato has emailed about oh. the world's tallest slide. Shall I do it in a Darcy Sato voice Could just you? to turn you on? Okay. Yeah. Right then. Alison, I'm answering my own question here. The world's tallest slide is the Summit Plummet at B Blizzard Beach in the States. The Summit Plummet. Say yeah. it again. The Summit Plummet. Here's the relevant blurb, and I attach a view from the top. Dare to take the vertical plunge from the top of the world's tallest and fastest free-fall body slide. At an exhilarating height of 120 feet, this skyscraping ski jump of a thrill drops you down the slopes of Mount Gushmore at a speed limit breaking... Mount Gushmore? Mount Can you Gushmore. do that one again? You want to go up Mount Gushmore <laughs> with Darcy Sato <laughs> and come down at 55 miles an hour for a 360-foot long trip. I'll just say that again. A 360-foot long trip back to the lower atmosphere. Fantastic. Yours, Darcy. Ah, oh, Darcy. In brackets. Mwah. Mm. You can't be with <sighs> flirting, can you? No. Graham Richardson has emailed. Is Alison related to Fern Cotton? No. <laughs> no, it's not that. And hi, Tommy and Alison. Maybe during the next week in your afternoon slot, could I become the quarter to three man? <laughs> Joke. I'll call later if that's okay. Next bit secret. Mick Y N W A. As in you'll never walk alone. <laughs> Thanks, Mick mate. Brian has contacted us and with regards to this da 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 anyway, we found out from a couple of earlier people that it is called Wheels Cha Cha. And Brian says it appears the definitive version of this is by Joe Loss and his orchestra. Yes. As in a great loss. Um, and somebody else has emailed, and I've forgotten who they are, but I should have read the email out, out at the time, but it's gone into my head. Um, uh, Tony Reynolds, I believe. Was it Tony Reynolds? Was the man who used to do the muscle pumping to that tune on Opportunity Knox. Mm. Steve has emailed, uh, help, new to the internet. Tommy or Alison, how do I get the forum up on my screen? Right, you have to go to your internet page thingy, Bob. Te All technical, technical knowledge. Technical. <laughs> and then you type in www.tommyboydforum.com. That will take you to the front page. And then you just tick, um, or click rather, on this week's show, on the date. And then you'll go to the conversation that is underway at the moment as we speak. The last thing Don't having been said... I don't like as we speak. What's wrong with as we speak? It's a bit like indeed, but not quite as bad. As we speak's okay. I don't like as we speak. Well, in that case, I'll say it all the more. Uh, Darcy Sato is actually the last person to have uh, posted a message on the board yes. as we speak. Don't say that. <laughs> and he has attached for all of the people on the forum a picture of the summit plummet. Which I'm just opening now to browse at myself. Uh, we've also had another text message from Fee on 07786 207070. It says, Hello, Ali and Tommy. Thank you for reading my question about Katie Price. I've been signed off work for two weeks. Your show has put a smile on my face, but it always does. Glad to hear it. What time are you on in the week, Tommy? I'll listen to you. Love, Fee in Bogner. Oh, and sorry, Ali, I didn't catch the road name for Katie. Let's see if I can find that again for you. Michael Marshall's email. We're just about out of time for the internet hour, but it, it, it works so well. If anybody wants to keep faffing with it, F A W -F, F. By the way, faffing is. Faffing. Oh, I've looked it up. I, it's, it, no one knows its etymology, though. Um, Michael Marshall has emailed. Always a pleasure, never a chore, whether I'm up or down. Was just wondering if you've ever been one for harmless practical jokes and have any good ones. You've done a good practical joke this week, Alison. Mm. That's brilliant. He says, I know it's probably an old classic, but the other day I left a note on my boss's desk to call sea lions and wrote the number of Belfast Zoo underneath. <laughs> uh, I was subsequently threatened with disciplinary action. No. When I worked at the Dolphinarium, I used to pick up the internal <laughs> phone and go, Thank you for calling the Dolphin Trainers. Unfortunately, there's no one here able to take your call at the moment, so please leave a message after the tone and we'll get back to you. 
<laughs> but of course it was the boss. It's uh, always the boss. It's always the boss. But he was very good. He said, uh, do you know, he said, you nearly fooled me then. Um, let's draw a line under the internet. Uh, unless, of course, you, Alison, next door mm. have got... No, for fee Anything though, I will pressing. just give her this address for the oh. Katie Price fan club again. It's P.O. Box P O one five O three six Argus House, Crowhurst Road, Brighton, East Sussex, B N one eight A R. Beautiful. Um okay. That's about it for another internet hour. Always works well. Always absolute rubbish. Brilliant rubbish though. Real chewing gum for the mind, don't you think? Absolute rubbish. Fantastic. <laughs> Tommy Boyd and Alison Vance on BBC Southern Counties Radio. Marvellous. So that little 60 minutes of almost conventional broadcasting, very nearly conventional broadcasting, is a great way to start. Do you want to turn the light out when you come in, Miss? Because mm. I like it quite, uh, you know... Yeah, take the top two out. Oh, don't close the door and turn the central heating up again. Ah. That'll do it. No! No, 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 no. You what? haven't even got the air conditioning on. Oh, not. And so that I don't have to turn it up, I yeah. put on, especially, a big thick jumper. I noticed so that. So that I would be warm, so that yeah. I wouldn't have to turn up the heating. I noticed that, but, but, you know, it, it'll keep... It, I find that if the temperature is like the great outdoors, it yeah. just keeps you sharp. It keeps <laughs> me sharp. It would be too sharp. Oh, eight, four, five, nine. Are you well? I am, yes. Go on, what's happened to you this week? Anything? Um, what have I done this week? Went to a wedding yesterday. Yeah, beautiful. Uh, went for supper at the Vicarage on Wednesday. Nice one. Nice one. I've always one wanted about, to do then? that. We got an invitation through in the post. You're invited to an informal supper at the Vicarage. An informal supper at the Vicarage. It was good. It's a bit of a piss up, actually. <laughs> <laughs> you just, you, you just reminded me of, um, something that I read in The Guardian today. Mm. The Guardian does this great thing. It corrects every mistake that it makes. Oh, OK. All the papers have to do that, don't they? Well, I haven't seen it in any other newspaper. Oh. Maybe they do. Um, it'd be great to do that on Southern Counties, don't you think? Have a cock it'd up. Be a, it'd long, be a, uh, a long old programme. Well, I think it'd be great fun on a Saturday evening, you know, to do, you know, uh, apologies, uh, we cocked this up, we got this wrong, we got this, you know. Um, and what they said was... <laughs> um, <laughs> Uh, during a report, and it was quite a serious thing, during a report uh, about um, a television programme on Murder on the Rock, Death on the Rock, in which uh, some IRA activists mm. were shot whilst <clears throat> trying to set off a bomb that um, would have uh, blown up the Royal Anglican Regiment. Um, that should have read the Royal Anglian Regiment. <laughs> 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 it was Such a, very, a small um, mistake. But you know, th you then had this mental. You, you yeah. then could not be given any image other than, you know, lines of marching vicars. <laughs> <laughs> it was. Oh dear. Anyway, so you had tea at the vicarage. Yeah, and on Monday night went to the launch of the Brighton Food Festival. Okay. That was a good do. Excellent. Mm, down Excellent. at the marina. Food very was taken. Nice. Wine was. Yes, drunk. a free bar. <gasps> A free bar! <laughs> oh, yes. Those words ring out. Oh, <laughs> you know, you're just made up, aren't you? A free bar! Oh, yeah, and you go straight there and you have a pint. Yeah. And then you stay there, you don't mean <laughs> to. <laughs> you find somebody to talk to. Anybody. And there's always peanuts as well, so, <laughs> you know, you are putting down some blotting paper. Mm. <laughs> okay. Yeah, well, what about you? What are you putting to? Um... Oh, uh, lots and lots of different, different tiny little um, projects and things and stuff. One of which is probably worth talking about this evening, which is that um, I, I, I was mentioning to a few people that I've got my oldest son going off to uni. Yes. In a couple of weeks. And how my wife and I have noticed that actually, you know, it, it gives you quite a few emotional ups and downs. Mm. So I did a bit of research into it and found out that there is this thing called empty nest syndrome, mm. which um, can really knock you for six um, this website that I found on it in America, which is one of the very few, said if the continual crying lasts for longer than a week, seek professional help. So I thought, blimey, this is obviously something. Mm. 
So I was chatting to Neil, who runs Southern Counties Radio, about it, and he said, um, well, maybe we should do something on it, because there'll yeah. be lots of people listening, to, lots of listeners to Southern Counties Radio, who will either be experiencing this mm. in sept on September the 25th, which is, it seems, when all universities take in their freshers. So it's going to be a big weekend right across the country. Yeah. Lots of, you know, traumas and uh, sadnesses and happinesses and stuff. Mm. Um... He said, well, why don't we find out, you know, how it has affected people who listen to Southern Counties in the past, yeah. who may have sent children off to university or college, um, or if you're a Southern Counties listener who went off to university and college, you know, how did it affect you and how did it affect your parents? And do you have any idea how much it might have affected your parents? Because mm. you, you, you just don't always know. And then, so anyway, I was mentioning this to you. Yes. Ali, and you told me such a story about your first night yeah it was dreadful the whole run-up i found just so so stressful i was excited obviously to be going away to university you know and you kind of have that sense of it's a new adventure and things to look forward to but i was such a baby when it came to leaving my parents there's just the thought of being on my own was just horrendous and the first day we got up to the university and I've made the mistake of not really going beforehand to see the halls or anything because I think I just didn't want to face it until mm. I actually had to. Mm. So I'd completely put it off and out of my mind. Mm. And we arrived up at the halls, which weren't the greatest. They were in White Hart Lane in Tottenham. And I remember my dad taking me up to my room and sort of brought the bags in and we sort of sat around for a little bit and then he said, oh, I'm going to have to go now. I'm going to have to make a move, and that was it. Oh, I just sobbed and oh. sobbed and sobbed. And looking back, it must have been so awful for my dad, what I put him through, because I was literally begging him, please don't leave me. Oh, God. Please don't leave me. anyone that the man's insane now. Excuse me. You know. You get away with it. He's well, not listening yeah. to that. He's in Cyprus. Put him through. I know. And I look back and I just think, that must have been so awful. Well, he said to me that it was just heartbreaking. He said it was the most heartbreaking moment of his life, having to walk away from me on that evening. And he said it was bizarre because when he looked at me, he didn't see his 18-year-old daughter. I when he looked at me, he saw his little four-year-old little girl oh, sitting on her bed saying, oh. Daddy, don't leave me. Oh, it was horrendous. Yeah. Absolutely horrendous. Well, this is what the sort of thing that a lot of families are going to be going through mm. um, in two weeks' time. Yeah. The, the build-up to it isn't too bad because you do a lot of denial. Yeah, a lot of that. And there's a lot of planning mm. and you do f fancy things like, shall we all have a meal together the night before? Yeah. And, you know, and, and getting the right clothes. I'm going to buy him a, a whole... I'm going to buy him um, uh, several packs of n new underwear because I think it'll just help. You know, you're, okay, fine, go and do that. And I'm going to buy him a new toothbrush as well. I know that's fussing, but... So that, but, that camouflages the vastness of the emotional impact of what is going to be taking place right across the country mm. on September the 25th. And what we found out is that not many people know very much about how it affects people. No. So we, we teamed up with, with we, we're getting together a, a panel of, I suppose, and, you know, you very kindly decided that you're going to be in on this, aren't you? Yeah, and I, it's been really interesting. I've spoken to quite a few sort of experts in the field over the last few days and as you say this is a much bigger problem in fact i got an email earlier on from um, a group called family line in surrey and they are a confidential helpline a phone line which anyone experiencing any sort of family difficulty can phone right. and discuss now obviously it's completely confidential so they can't sort of give me names of, of people that have phoned but they no. said there is um a, a, a regular, regular caller to their line who already, and for the last month, has been in a state mm. of complete anxiousness, so, so anxious, dreading the fact that her son will be going off to university in a mm. couple of weeks' time. Right. And they said they hear a lot of it. They, yeah. they hear a lot. And I think as well, one of the other things I was talking to um, people about, sort of counsellors and uh, psychiatrists and stuff, and they were saying that a lot of parents feel so guilty about feeling this way 
that they don't like to talk about it because yeah. they feel that in some way yeah. um, they shouldn't be like that. They should be encouraging their child's development. They mm. should be really behind them all the way and saying, yeah, you go and have a great time. And mm. that to show to your child or teenager that you are in fact it hurts. really hurting inside yeah is somehow uh, letting think, your child yeah, down. It's a tricky one, mm. and nobody knows what the best way no. of doing it is. Yeah. And that's why, actually, what we're going to be doing over the next three or four weeks, and I think this is really cute, I'm looking forward to it, is, is maybe establishing one or two ground rules, yeah. if such a thing can happen, mm. by using listeners' experiences and passing those on to, as you say, healthcare experts, people mm. who have experience of analysing and you know, forming conclusions from the kind of evidence, which will be, of course, entirely anecdotal. Oh, completely. But anecdotal means, I was there, I saw it, it happened to me. I know, it's true. And exactly, as you say, it happened to me. Yeah. And sometimes, if you're going through something, particularly a tough time, just knowing that somebody else mm. is also totally going true. through it, or has been through it, and has got through the other side of it, totally can be true. completely reassuring Absolutely. to you. Absolutely. Well said. You should have been a psychiatrist. Well, there's still time. <laughs> As opposed to sometimes needing a bloody psychiatrist. <laughs> Thank you. If people want to talk about that, I'm cool this evening. We won't give the show over to it at all. We'll do. We'll still do the usual rubbish. Of course, but if people do want to talk, and of course, if anybody is interested in being one of our volunteer families, if they'd like to get involved uh, with the sort of series we're going to be running on Southern Counties Radio, yeah. then do either call tonight or yeah. email me, alison.ferns at bbc.co.uk. I yeah. can have a chat with you during the week. Yeah. Um, and see where we go from there. We just, we, we think it would be nice to have uh, a couple of, or three or four or five, whatever, families who are sending somebody off, mm. saying goodbye to somebody, going to university or college, and we can just sort of keep a very casual diary of how you feel and how the ups and downs of it and everything. Mm. Um, let's go to line three and say hi. Who's this? Hello. Hello, Hello, Kirsten. Hello. Are you both well? Yes, very thank well, you. thank you. You? Yes, thank you, yes. Good. I wanted to share a dream I had with you two. Okay. And my like Martin fans. Luther King here. Sort of Sorry? Swedish. Sound like a sort of Swedish version of Martin Luther King here. No, it was a dream. My mother and father were here to visit me. Mm -hmm. Okay, they they live in Sweden, although my father is dead now. And my relationship with my mother is not the best mm -hmm. since then. And I took them to the Sussex Swedish Club Clubhouse, which I don't know if they've got one or where it is. Yeah. However, it was set in big grounds and down a muddy uh, road there were some birch trees growing and underneath in the grass lots of daffodils. Mm. And I wanted to show them that, which I did. My father's shoes nearly got stuck in the mud, but he managed. <coughs> Sorry. And uh, then we had to rush off to, to get my children from school, so they were quite young then. They weren't in the dream. And, you know, I woke up and I was so happy. Everything will be okay with my mother. That's the feeling I had. And I had this feeling it was my father telling me that. Right. Yes. Mm. It meant an awful lot. Good. Yes. Nice one. There's the ghost again. Yeah. Did you hear that? Sorry? Nothing. It's all right, Kirsten. Sorry. Whenever anybody talks about anything spooky on this show, we get that noise. Did you hear it? Yes, and the light flashed again. Did you hear it? No. I'm asking Alison, you heard that? Yes, I heard it. And the light went. Okay. Now, I'm not a believer, but this is getting a it bit much. It is weird. It's very odd. I, 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 whilst you were talking about what somebody might say might have some kind of supernatural... Yes. Um, ...element about it, Kirsten, uh, the, the noise went again. Yeah. And it doesn't go off when we're talking about football. No. I'm sorry, not to distract from what happened to you, Kirsten, it was just a bit... Spooky. ...significant. Mm. Yes. Well, I'm glad you had a lovely dream. And I'm glad it's made you feel better, because most dreams, I find, don't make us feel better, yeah. do they? I'm interested in this idea about the Sussex Swedish Club. If there isn't there, one, there, is there should one. be. There, there is, is one. A, 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 a society, yes. You were asleep. <laughs> no. 
<laughs> what? Yes, there is. Of course there is. And well, what? I must have missed that show. Ah, I think Lisa was on that ah. week. Or the other Alison. Yes. Yes. So remind us, Kirsten, about the Sussex Swedish Society. Well, it, it tries to keep up with the um, Swedish traditions. Yes. You know, like we have, we celebrate the beginning of spring with the bonfires. Mm. First of April. Uh, oh, you have April bonfires? Yes. As opposed to April Fools? Yes. Do you have an April Fools Day in Sweden? Yes. Do you? When is it? First of April. But doesn't that sort of conflict with the bonfire thing? No, that's usually in the evening, the bonfire. Right, I'll say you do practical jokes in the morning and then you have a bonfire in the evening. Yes. Okay, I can live with that. That sounds like a fairly good day. Yes, and the, you know, the Midsummer, the Lucia. Yep. It's just a way of keeping up traditions. Yes. Do you yes, have an Independence Day in Sweden? Sorry? Do you have like an Independence Day or a National Day in Sweden? National Day, yes. What's it's that? of June. What does that commemorate? Well, Sweden. Well, I know, it's but... It's the National Day, yes. I know, but is it like when you threw out the Germans or something? Uh, that, I don't know why they picked that day. I don't know. No. Because it's uh, in the middle of the summer, so it may helps with celebrations, doesn't it? It's it's silly to have a big day in the middle of the winter, and I should think Swedish winters are pretty. Filthy. They messed up with Christmas, didn't they? Didn't they? <laughs> <laughs> well, Someone didn't think that one through. Very nice. Yes. No, your sweet your winters must be pretty filthy. Yes. Yes. Kirsten, thank you so much for your call. As ever, lovely, lovely to get your unique take on things. Yes. And she's so intimate mm. as to tell us all about that dream which meant a lot to her mm. and yet the, the noise went mm. during it i'm going to because I, I can go to an archive and i can find this show and i'm just making a mental note that happened at quarter past ten yeah and uh, i'm gonna see if i can identify that noise and and see if we can work out what it was mm. but it's the same noise always the same noise let's just yeah let's take a note of it as it happens throughout the show okay. and see if there is anything in this theory that it only happens when we're talking about things of a supernatural mm, bent mm. 08459 is the switchboard number it's the um, Saturday night phone in on BBC Southern Counties Radio with Ali and Tommy and I think this might be our fisherman friend hello hello I think he doesn't know he's switched his mobile on no. He's got speed dial. Hello? Heavy breather. <coughs> Maybe he's... Hello? Oh, Elvis. <laughs> no, I have to leave it there. I had images of somebody uh, up to his chin in quips quicksand. Did you? Wow. I had what? someone sitting in a deck chair with a can of Stella. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, well, mine was more hope than... Yeah. No, no. <laughs> no, no. 08459 is the number. Um, Howard Smith has this about Darcy Sato, and I wondered where I'd heard the name before. Oh, go there on. There are two Darcy Sartos. Are there? Yes. Two of them. Yes. <gasps> Your fantasy figure. Yes. <laughs> and Tony Hancock. Hancock's Half Hour. A, a brilliant Hancock's Half Hour. You've never seen any Hancock, have no. you? No. Well, I've seen it on those best of, oh, well, <laughs> those list shows, I the know top you, 100. Yeah, you, you will find this hard to believe, but it, mm. he was funnier than even Faulty Towers. Mm. And the writing was outrageously good. And there's a, an episode called The Missing Page in which he goes to a library, he gets a book out, mm. and it's a whodunit. And the last page has been ripped out. Oof. So there's all sorts of argy bargy and he goes back to the library to complain and so on, so on, so on, and then he rings up and goes round to see the widow of the author. Anyway, the author of the book, which is called Lady Don't Fall Backwards. <laughs> <laughs> and wise advice. And the author of Lady Don't Fall Backwards in that episode of Hancock's Half Hour was Darcy Sarto. Oh. Um 
And in fact, Howard has just uh, tacked onto that. When he found the last page was missing, Hancock did everything he could to find out how the story ended. He even tracked down Dar Darcy Sato's house, only to see a plaque on the house indicating that Sato had died, which led to the classic line from Hancock, Dead? The fool! <laughs> So thanks for that. That's excellent work. Uh, what's the address, Nick says, of, he emails, the address, please, of the site you're referring to about forum rankings. Um, I think that's just something like Envision, uh, Mick. Envision free. Oh, and also I got an email from Mick asking me when I'm going to pull my finger out and do those interview questions. Do you yeah. know what? No. I'm going to do them. Oh, good for you. Yeah. Good for you. Yeah, Envision free, one word, Mick. Envisionfree.com, if you want to get technical, slash directory. Um, I suppose I could forward this to you if I was really clever. Let's take a, a call. It's a Brighton caller. Who's this? Hello? Hello, line two? Oh. Um. Hello, it's Margarita Rakatan. I love you. I love you. I love you. Remember her? Who was Margaret Braggart? Oh, she used to play the keyboard on the Clive James show. Do you remember? Oh, oh, you do yes, remember? Yes, yes, vaguely, vaguely. Margarita Braggartan. Mm. 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 Very vaguely. So, what's wrong with the cricket then? It goes on for too long. And I also have another theory that people don't really watch it. It's all that business. It's like my mother will go, oh, yeah, great, cricket's on all weekend. But no one really watches it. All you do is you sort of flick it on and just check what's happening. And then you go away and get on with your life. Yeah. And then you go back and check on it. Yeah. But football, at least, you know, it's a set time. You can sit down, have a few beers and watch it. No one really can sit and watch. Is it four days of cricket? Five days. Five days of cricket. Yeah. Who? Is there anyone that sits and watches all of that, apart this, from the people doing the commentary? This particular match, yes. The, this particular series, yes. Well, you've sat there for five days. Uh, if it's been on, I haven't missed a ball. I, I, I will occasionally try to get an Australian out by leaving the room, which it always, it often seems to work. <laughs> Just as if the game's boring, my family tell me that if I go out to the kitchen, then there's usually a goal. So that, that, but yeah, I've, I've, I've watched every mm, ball. I just think they've got to shorten it. I just don't think it fits in with our lifestyles these days. I mean, you can do it, but most people go to work. Well, <laughs> how come it's so popular then? How come the nation is preparing to stand still at some point on Monday afternoon when this because whole thing... Because everyone jumps on the bandwagon. There are people... Jumps on the bandwagon? Yeah, there are people this week banging on about cricket who don't know the slightest thing about cricket. It was like when we had the Rugby World Cup. People just love to kind of, you know, get behind England and then say, oh, yeah, did you see the cricket, mate? Did I half work? Gave the Aussies what for, eh? They've never watched cricket before. And also, I think you've got too many of the football fans now getting into the cricket. Cricket used to be sort of sedate, a bit of a classier affair. Now, the bits I have seen, it's really raucous. Like, yeah. wee, wee, get the beers in, wee. It shouldn't be that. I thought cricket was that whole sort of, you know, afternoon tea up at the Oval. Had a few cucumber sandwiches. Well, that was when the game was dying. Now, it's, it, you know, it, it's got its own niche. It's not as popular as football, but um, it's really struck a chord with, with the nation. And if it were to strike a chord with the, chord with the world, and we would get, you know, we'd get more cricket playing nations actually no that wouldn't work i'm not interested in seeing germany playing football argentina would be ludicrous we, we've got the right sorts of countries they're all countries that we used to own uh who we play cricket with <laughs> um but i i don't understand your arguments really you, you chucked out a couple of things and i don't think you've really told us why you don't like cricket um when you say that people are now jumping on the bandwagon um where did it say where was it written that once we like a certain number of things, we're not allowed to find out whether any other things are interesting? And if they are, then we start enjoying them too. That's what I think has happened with this Ashes series. I met a lady walking the dogs and we were all talking about it and she said, I've never bothered with cricket before. She said, but this has just become so compelling and so enjoyable and it's real that uh, she was going home to watch it. That was on, that was this morning. Was she really going home to watch God, it? Yes. Though? Was she really going to sit there for hours and watch it? No, she wasn't. She was going to flick teletext on and see what the score was. No, she was going to have it on the television. That's not difficult to do because it's on Channel 4. So everybody, nobody needs to go to teletext. 
you've got teletext, you've got it, because it's on terrestrial. But line. she wasn't actually going to sit down all day in front of the TV and watch that. It, it, she it, would have potted about, nipped in, had a look at the score, nipped back out again. I, I don't want to get technical with you, but I think she would be using, as I do, she would be using cricket on the television the same way that people use the radio. Nobody actually listens to every syllable or every note that's played on the radio. Mm. It's there. Occasionally something really gets your attention, mm. but generally speaking, it's going on. And, yeah, that is largely how cricket is consumed. It is going on. And you kind of watch, and then you hear a cheer and you turn and there's a wicket or something, or a six or a four or something like that. Mm -hmm. So, actually, consuming cricket as a broadcast sport is very similar to the way in which radio is consumed, I think. But that doesn't, you know, belittle radio, the fact that people don't go, right, I'm now going to sit down and listen to three hours of the radio. And they don't pull up a chair by the radio. I'm sure our grandparents did. But do you, anybody, you know anybody who listens to the radio No, like that? no. You have it on, don't you, there? And but it's about a, one third of your awareness is given to your radio. Unless it's an unmissable show like this one. Of course. <laughs> Everyone's sitting there glued to the radios at the Taking moment. Taking notes. Yeah. <laughs> um, Discussing it with their friends. It's not very accessible, though, is it, cricket? They, they want it to be just for the little in crowd. All the, all the, all, uh, oh, I think they do. I think most people can watch a football game and work out what's going on. Cricket just isn't like that. That's probably why I really don't like it. You don't get it, do you? I don't get it, and I don't get all of the different terminology that's used. Oh, wow. A lot Anything. of rubbish. Oh, come, no, a lot of that is rubbish. Talking about Which Golden thing? Ducks. Mm -hmm. I thought that was a Chinese oh. restaurant. No. Diddly Doos. No, come on. A donkey drop. Yeah. What's a donkey drop? It's nothing to do with cricket, dear. No, that's, I've heard that used. No. That is a term they use, donkey no, drop. There's no donkey drop in cricket. But they do, that is a term they use. I don't think so. I think you Somebody phone over. me and tell no, Tommy he's wrong. No, there is no donkey drop in cricket. There is a donkey drop. There simply isn't. I'll tell you what it is, shall I? It's a type of, it's a way of bowling that isn't as fierce as a... Now, I forget what it's called, but something like a diddly doop. No. But a diddly doop is not as fierce a type of overarm oh. bowl action than a trundler. She'd come so far <laughs> in such a short space of time. I'm telling you, there is the, a thing that's a donkey drop. Oh, You're going to be made to look foolish here, Boyd. A, a relapse like this could be quite critical, really, and she could be... Line Ill. number three, please. An oxygen tent for years <laughs> of something I don't know now. It's just when I was beginning to have so much respect Hello, who's on line three? It's Margarita from New Haven. Hello, um, Margarita. Now, it's about cricket. Yes. And being Swedish. Oh. Following uh, Kirsten. Yeah. Okay. Yep. So um, am I on air now? Yeah, you're on air. Oh my God. Right. Um, I have to say, being Swedish, and I have listened to Kirsten many times. And Do you know uh, Kirsten? No, I don't know her. Oh. I listened to her. Okay. And uh, once before I called. And uh, I have to say, being Swedish, we don't play cricket in Sweden. No. And I have to say, I, I came over in 1971, 72. Uh, Tony Gregg was Captain Sussex. And I was completely uh, grabbed by it. I thought it was wonderful. I had no idea. And I'm learning gradually. And even now, now, um, the rule. Mm. And uh, my heart's been beating. This uh, test or, or as serious and uh, I can't believe that you know they don't play it in Sweden what do you love about it? well it's just oh let me think I think it is also the, the passion for it the English um, um, there's no um, oh, aggression about it it's the um, acceptance you know who's doing a good thing or who's not and uh, it's just the uh, gentleman game, game. And uh, I no, can't no. wait to see yes. tomorrow what's happening. No, 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 no. It's brutal. It's the most brutal sport of all. It's it's more dangerous than boxing. Oh, you joking? I'm absolutely not. If you had any idea how many grotesque bruises and broken limbs and cracked skulls and broken noses and knocked out teeth have happened in cricket entirely legitimately 
You know, in America, they sometimes show cricket matches on PBS and they laugh at how gruesome it is because it makes baseball look like a pussyfoot game. Am I right in thinking that you had a very unfortunate incident with a cricket ball? Several. Mm. Several. I mean, yes, certainly. That's all ponting bleeding at one time with Napoleon, today. Nelson. Where was ponting bleeding? But I just saw one... Oh, yes, they cut him open. Yeah. And they gave uh, Brett Lee a couple of nice short ones which reared up and we... Let me tell you a quick story about, uh, about how dangerous cricket can be. Um, years ago, the Australians came up with these two blokes who could not only bowl this very, very hard, very heavy ball, mm. very, very fast, but they liked to hit the batsman. And they made no pretense at all about the fact that they weren't aiming at the stumps. My they God. Were, they were aiming at the batsman. And this was the days before helmets and things. Oh, okay. my God. So they were knocking Englishmen over, right, left and centre. And the mm -hmm. crowd was cheering. The Australian crowd were going, yay! Every time an Englishman was carried, bleeding, <laughs> no. unconscious from the pitch. So... That's the, before the, I came to this country. Right. Well, the English cricket board called up this man. Now, this man I'm about to tell you about is truly one of the most remarkable sportsmen the world has ever known. His name is Brian Close. Oh, I know that name. And he first played cricket for England, I think he was about 17. He was a phenomenon. Yeah. He was a phenomenon in a great many ways, but one of the ways in which he was a phenomenon was that he had no fear of pain whatsoever. Right. None whatsoever. He was once fielding very close to a man who swung at the ball and hit it really hard and it bounced off Brian Close's head. He was standing three yards away yeah. and went straight up into the air. Now, anybody else would have been polaxed by this, yeah. but Brian C Close just went, catch it! Oh, God. And another time, he got hit on the ball Oh, he got hit by the ball. That was me got hit on the ball. He got he got hit on the bridge of his foot, you know, the top of the arch of his foot, mm, yeah. by a really fast delivery. Mm. And he carried on batting. And when it was lunchtime, the players were walking off and the two batsmen came together and the other batsman said to Brian Clough, what, uh, uh, Close, what's that squelching noise? Oh. And what had happened was that the ball on his, that, that hit him on the foot had broken some of the bones in the top of his oh, foot. Oh, don't. Which then pierced the skin oh. on his foot. And oh, the, no! And the squelching noise oh. was blood oh. coming out of the lace holes. But he was impervious <laughs> to it. Now, when the Australians, Lillian Thompson their name was... Oh, I know that name. OK. These men were fantastic, but they were hard. When they were knocking over all these English batsmen, our selectors said, well, what we need is somebody who can stand up to these chaps. So they gave Brian Close a ring, you see. Now, he'd been out of cricket for years. Yeah. He was about 47. <laughs> and they rang him up and they said, um, hello, Brian. Are you doing anything on Thursday? And he said, no. Why? <laughs> they said, but we'd like you to come down and have a crack at these Australians, Lillian Thompson. So yeah. Brian Close just went, all right, then. And he was picked... And he played, and right. he could hardly see the ball. He was picked to show the young English batsman that being hurt doesn't matter. Yeah. So Lillian Thompson started bowling all this short stuff at 100 yeah. miles an hour at Brian Close, and there was no way he could get out of the way of it. So one of my greatest memories of all time in sport is Brian Close, the ball comes down, <laughs> and he didn't even try and hit it with the bat, he didn't even try and get out of the way of it. Do you know what he did? He leaned into it. Oh. oh. And there's this incredible shot of him chesting down a cricket oh. ball. I've seen a photograph at Lord's of his body. He <laughs> took, the pain as you're talking. He took, the shirt, he took his shirt off at the end of this innings. He only scored about 18 runs, but he did his job. And they took his shirt off at the end of the innings and they photographed it. And he is absolutely covered in oh. black bruises the size oh. of an orange. And on them, you can see the seam of the ball. <laughs> oh. Well, 90 plus miles an hour. Now, you see, to me, that is why sport transcends even sometimes great literature, because that was for real. Yeah. Why on earth was he doing I was lucky enough to meet him years later. Yeah. Was he that? No, he was Yorkshireman. Same thing. <laughs>
Well, uh, I've been lucky enough to to go uh, with the friend to Saturn's in Hastings to meet some uh, ex test players. You know, it was just amazing to see them live. Yeah. So uh, well, enjoy, yeah. enjoy, enjoy tomorrow and Monday, won't you? Oh, yeah, you bet. Enjoy I from it. Fantastic. Thank <laughs> you for your call. Uh, the, sw the Swedish connection is interesting, isn't it? Mm. Um, so you prefer the X Factor, don't you, to yeah. cricket? And so I and I can't see that. Really. No. To me, it's such a shallow exercise in human irrelevance. And of course, we were chatting about football last week, mm. weren't we? Mm. And how England were going to get on against Northern Ireland. Mm. And how I wanted to see them trashed. Yeah, mm, they were. Yes, they were. Well, they weren't trashed, but they lost one nil. Yeah. Um, Peter in Portslater said, uh, is Tommy related to Carol Boyd, who plays Linda Snell in The Archers? I don't think so. Tony in Chertsey asks, last week you said increasingly you were believing we are more than flesh and blood. A bit early to do existential stuff, Tony. We might get round to it a little bit later on, but thank you for your email. Um, I am a big cricket fan, emails somebody. Um... And the most annoying thing is that I know people who have got tickets for tomorrow and are, are going, even though they don't really like it and have never watched it before. I would do anything to get a ticket. I think you're just as well off watching it on the radio, actually. Um, watching it on the telly mm. and having the radio on, which is what I do. So I get the radio commentary and the TV pictures, which is absolutely brilliant. Oh eight four five nine five seven double zero five seven, the telephone number. Well, we, you should be... Getting behind the nation, Alison, and celebrating this fantastic sporting thing. I'll get behind it, you know, and I'll say, oh, nice, you know, I'll be, I'll be very happy if they win, mm. but I ain't going to sit there and watch it day in, day out. Hello. <laughs> it's the, um... I'd better make a note of that number. I think I'm getting quite fed up with the nonsensical... Of course, if it turns out to be somebody who's been burgled and they're, it, you yeah. know, sitting... Gagged in their living room. I'm going to look a fool, aren't you I? Are. Not as foolish as them, but anyway. <laughs> oh eight four five nine five seven double zero five seven, or you can email the show Tommy dot Boyd at uh, BBC dot co dot UK, or you can text. What is it again? Oh double seven eight six twenty seventy seventy. Splendid. Okay, and let's quickly grab some emails. That come in. Um. Yeah. So we've been talking a bit about the cricket. Um. Because I just think it is so uplifting, mm. and I'm so pleased that my, fa my whole family have got into it a little bit. I don't know what I can do to... Because you don't like sport very much, do you? Not really. No, well, let's... Oh, and I heard something ridiculous today. Let me run this one past you. Okay. You're a bit of a Seagulls fan, aren't you? Brighton right. Hove Albion. Yeah, rubbish though they are, but, you know. I was listening to the fans phone-in, which I, I don't like football, but I love the fans phone-in. Right. And they were having this discussion as to whether they would ever go and shop. You know the Goldstone Ground? Having a discussion as to whether they'd ever go and shop at the retail park that is now on the site of the old Goldstone Ground. Right. There were all these people phoning yeah. in, wouldn't even drive past the place. Mm. They won't even drive along that part of Old Shoreham Road no. because they'd have to go past the retail park mm. where the Goldstone Ground mm. once stood. Yes. Tell me you don't feel the same. I understand what they're saying. They're wrong. Brighton and Hove Albion be belong at With Dean. I'm, I think it's really cute that Brighton are at With Dean. It's the right place for them. It suits the club. It suits the town. Um, it's exactly the sort of unusual, very unusual venue that I would expect Brighton to mm. be playing at. It, it, it's so appropriate. This is an, an, there, there are a whole bunch of reasons why Brighton uh, uh, struggle, generally speaking. Uh, and it has to do with sea air, because, and this is, don't like <laughs> This is poppycock. I can tell already. Do you know what? I've been working with you long enough now. Before you're about to say something which is complete and utter tosh, <laughs> you're, listen, your left eyebrow yes. slightly raises. <laughs> it does. I've noticed it. Every time you're no, about to speak no, complete no. and utter rubbish, no. your left eyebrow does Fern. this. Ferns, ferns. <laughs> Let's establish a couple of things, right? Yeah. You don't know much about anything, do you? Oh, what is wrong with you tonight? You're in you, a real arse of a no, mood. You don't know much about anything. Mm. Um, I'm just going to get the television C facts up. Why? Well, okay. I'm not playing cricket now. No, seriously, seriously. Who are? Uh, if you look at the clubs at the bottom of the Premiership, mm. all right, all of them are seaside towns. Every single one is a seaside town. Yeah. None of the teams at the top of the Premiership are anywhere near the sea. But down at the bottom, 
you've got the likes of um, Portsmouth. Oh, okay, they won today, but Everton, that's a seaside town. Where's Southampton? Well, Southampton aren't doing too badly, but then they're down. Uh -huh. in the, well, they're down. Ah, 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 ha ha ha. Roughly a sixth of the teams that play football, professional football, mm. are seaside towns, and the vast majority of them are in the in, are, are involved in relegation. So Again, come on then, what's your theory? Yeah, you know, I, I I I I don't know. I think it's because seaside towns are soft and genteel compared to places like. You know, inner city areas where the fans are hard and they expect hard things of their team. There, there is a genuine so sociological explanation for this phenomenon. But seaside towns don't win trophies. The only team that has in, in the past done well, and they're not really a seaside town, is Liverpool. All the big honours are always won by inland teams, urban inland teams. Towns like Brighton, Bournemouth, Southampton, even Portsmouth, rough and tough as it is, they're pussycats compared to, you know, the inner city areas in London, in Manchester, in uh, Birmingham, uh, in the North East, you know, even Newcastle. Sunderland are rock bottom, seaside town. Newcastle are practically rock bottom, seaside town. You know? And then you go down the various divisions and you'll see that all the other seaside towns, Bristol Rovers, Bristol City, rock bottom. Bottom club in the whole of the Premiership, of the whole in the whole of the four leagues, the bottom club is Torquay. But you wouldn't expect Torquay to have a good football team. No, because they're ritzy, you know, Riviera, English, English Riviera. Riviera. Yeah. yeah, they're Ponzi. Palm trees and ninety-nine exactly. cones. Right. Statistically, what I'm saying is correct. I mean, year after year after year, seaside towns struggle because they're nice and genteel. And like it or not, Brighton is very genteel compared to East Ham or, you know, or, or, or White Hart Lane. Yeah. Who do we know who knows White Hart Lane? Mm. How Brighton was White Hart Lane? <laughs> not very. What happened to you the first night that you were there? Or was yes. it the second night? It was the second night. I had a knock at the door. This wouldn't happen in Brighton. Police officer there wanted to know the size of my feet mm. because one of the neighbours had been kicked to death on the way home from the pub okay. and they knew the size of the boot right. that had done the damage. Right. And White Hart Lane, of course, is a spit and a cough from... Tottenham Hotspur. Right. Am I, am I making some sense to you here? I'm a sociologist. I'm a genius. I'm, I, I'm revered, but, but not in my own land. Mm. That's the phrase. <laughs> 08459 oh, After you've gone, we'll all realise that it really was a Tosh. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, there is no, something in no, it. Something in it. Not well, sure no, what, well, but something. You know, like a lot of people, I notice things, but um, I don't have to keep them to myself. I mean, you must, myself, you must notice things. Mm -hmm. you think to yourself, I keep that to myself, otherwise I think I'm mad. Mm. I kind of go, I better keep not keep that to myself, otherwise... People won't know I'm a genius. What are we going to talk about? Yeah. You know. <laughs> now, um, Sunny Jai has emailed, no, no, no. I have watched many a cricket match all the way through. This Ashes series has been a compulsive watch because so much is going on. And you don't really know what will happen next. It's like chess, but a lot more physical and dangerous. But, Ali, I agree, it is an intelligent sport, that is why some people don't watch it. But oh. I agree with Tommy. <laughs> oh. Radio is like cricket. No one really listens to radio. People generally delve in and out. The only people who listen to radio all the time would like to sit behind a mixer and spin a few records. There's no such thing as a donkey drop or a diddly-do in cricket. There is a donkey drop. There isn't, darling. I know I've got the diddly-do bit wrong. Oh. That's not how you say it, but it's something along those lines. There's definitely a donkey drop. Look, let's take some calls. Loads of calls. If you're, if you're, if you're dialing, keep dialing, because I will get to everybody, or try to. Let's go straight to line one. Hello. 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 Hi. You're on. Oh, change the mind. No, I just wanted to how it worked, I think. If you call the show and you hear us talking, then you're on. Line two. Hello, Tommy. How you doing? All right? Good, mate. You? Yeah, I'm fine. Hello. Hello, Joe. How you doing? <laughs> I'm good, thanks. I've forgotten your name now. <laughs> That's all right. You can call me Joe. That'll call me whatever do. you want. I'll yeah, call I'll you Darcy, if you don't mind. <laughs> That'll do, yeah. Listen, you, you're on about this football. Yeah. Being a person from the... Uh, the nether regions of inner London, yeah. uh, as you can tell by my wonderful accent, mm -hmm. um, I think 
there's another angle on this, Tom, and I think what it is is that uh, all those people around the coastal areas have more brain power than those in inner cities, and that's why I've moved out to West Wittering and I hate football. OK, well, thank you very much indeed for that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we didn't know your name. <laughs> But it was nice of him to call. Yeah. Let's go to line three. Line three, you're on BBC Southern Counties Radio. It's a late night, Saturday night, phoning with Ali and Tommy. Hello. Hello, oh, the duck. Oh, it's the duck. Oh, I'm fed up with the duck. Line one, you're on. Hello. Hello, Tommy. It's Tony, the taxi driver again. Hello, Hi. Tony. Um, I think the uh, term Ali's looking for is a dolly drop. Yeah, it probably is. No, I'm sure it's which a Which is a thing. form of bowling which you bowl to someone to try and get them out, simply by lobbing the ball up into the air so that they can hopefully thrash it as hard as they can and you'll get a catch out of it. Well, there is a delivery which might have been called a donkey drop. I believe nobody does it anymore. It was invented in village cricket and it worked for this guy and somebody started to do it in county cricket and it was a long time ago. And that was you bowl the ball up really, really high... And you land it on the bales down at the other end. Hang on, and if it, you knew there really was something called a donkey drop, it's not why called have you a donkey drop. It's not, not called a donkey drop. It is. It, you can't use something to denigrate my argument, which is basically false and fictitious and in, in, inadequately explained. And then when I try to explain in the intelligence of a donkey drop, you kind of go, "Ah, oh, well, there you are. Then you're a wrong woman." So shut up. <laughs> you know, <laughs> shut your cake hole. Having a tiff now. There is a donkey drop, and somebody is going to phone in any second now and show you that you are wrong. Well, if it... Tony, thank you for your call. Are you so That's all right, now? Tom. I was just trying to clarify the matter, but uh, obvious, obviously... Um... No, you just come on here and caused a row now, Tony. <laughs> <laughs> it's what you've done. Thanks. Oh, look, look, he's sulking. What time? Oh, this? look at it. Make a note of this. <laughs> end, of, end of the first week in September. <laughs> I know what I'm doing here. <laughs> Thanks for your call. What? what? Well, what's your excuse, then? What? Hello, who's on line two? Hormones. Oh, no one's on line two. Hello, who's on line four? Dave, can you get this out? Hello? Hello? Oh, sorry. Hiya, Hiya. you all right? right? Yeah. Good. Um, I know it's going to probably annoy him, because that bloke was annoying him earlier, mm. but um, I didn't get the bit about the, um, you know, decade bit and all that, 21st century. No, none of us did. Tommy was but talking... my husband just explained it to me in about a minute. So, I don't know if you wanted him to explain it to you. Is he always that fast? <laughs> uh, he's not, no. He's normally very, very slow. Fantastic. <laughs> Dad, no. if I can get him. Oh, go on then. So, I'm just trying to get a cocktail stick out of a turnip. <laughs> That's what I'm doing. <laughs> You're just doing what? <laughs> what sort of party game is that? Hello. 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 What are you doing with turnips and cocktail sticks? It's not me. That's not me. It's, it's a children craft type thing. Don't ask. Maybe a scary face. <laughs> are you are you wood faring folk? Craft <laughs> 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 work with vegetables. It, it was it was um, a town show today, and um, okay. they had to do some. Uh, they had to craft make a scary work. face from vegetables. Oh. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Explain this decade thing to us, then. Um, uh, <laughs> I didn't want to come on. Uh, what it was, was, I was saying I could understand where... Do you not want to come on? Hey? I I'm intrigued as to how your... Is it your wife? Yeah. I'm intrigued as to how she managed to persuade you to come on the radio well, and explain the, the decade and thing. Said, no, no, don't worry. And then suddenly she's on there and said, come and speak, and they kind of do what she says, I say. That's oh, all. you've been railroaded. So go oh, on, okay. explain it to us. Oh, no, all I was saying was I could understand um, where the guy was coming from. By mm. saying that, you know, if it's 0. so many seconds, then you're still in the 0 minute and you haven't got to the 1 minute. I could understand where he was coming from, but because my wife can understand, you're saying, you know, if it's the 21st century, why is it only uh, 2,000 something and not 2,100 something? Mm. So I just explained to her, like, if I was doing a race, that, you know, a two-mile race, mm. if I'd only done, if I'd done half a mile... Mm -hmm. How much would I have done? Would I be in the first mile? Or would I be in the second mile? And of course the answer is I'd be in the first mile. Yeah. So you didn't really realise that, you know, even though it's in terms of it's not point so many miles, mm. but it still counts as the first. Now I'm confusing myself now. Yeah. Right? But... <laughs> <laughs> well, 
Well, I said to me I'd say something different to her just now. So. Mm -hmm. Well, probably uh, all those turnip fumes. <laughs> probably, yeah. <laughs> well, it made sense to me. Thank you. Thank you. It's all clearer now. Sure. Did, did we'll you... let you go back to your cocktail sticks and your turnips. <laughs> Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Oh, what a lovely husband to come on the you phone and explain that because his wife told him he had to. Yes, they sound like a good couple, don't they? Yeah. But the turnip thing's a bit weird. <laughs> I'm sure, as they said, it's just a craft thing they do f with the kids. You know, the worst toy that there ever was was Potato Head. Oh, yeah, I never had one of those. Awful, awful, awful toy. And you get a potato and then you put uh, two ears in it and a nose and, <laughs> and, and a, a mouth thing and a pipe and feet. And then you go, look, and Grandad would go... <laughs> Oh. <laughs> it's a and that's egg. it. That is it then. And that's cost somebody four and six. <laughs> what was your best toy? Um, that's a good question. I will come back to that. That's a very good question. Hello, who's there? Oh, not the duck again. Hello, line two. Hello. Hello. Oh, hi, is that Ellie? Yeah. Hi, Ellie. Ellie, there is no such thing as a donkey drop. There is a donkey drop, unless, I tell you. Unless Richie... Well, Tommy might know this. Unless Richie Benno has coined it, because no. he does come up with some weird things. But I hate to agree with Tommy, but, Ellie, there is yeah. no such thing as a donkey drop. I am no. going to leave this studio very shortly. I, I, I'm going to go on the internet. <laughs> I'm going to find written proof... You, the trouble is, Ali, you see, mm. I know you don't like cricket. You know why, don't you? Why? It's because um, it's mostly a sort of a, a man thing because, let's face it, right from a young age, mm. boys did, as well as football, they also played cricket. And so they kind of grew up with cricket. Girls didn't. Well, I, I, I tip did. and run, which isn't really the same as cricket. I think that's the thing, whereas tip and run I can understand. No, but it's not cricket. No, you see, no. You see the reason you find it boring mm. is that you, I imagine, because I used to play cricket for, um, for, for Middlesex. Uh, oh. Obviously women's cricket. Yeah. Um, but, you know, most people who don't actually play cricket mm. find it boring. If you played it, Maybe you'd I'd see there's more it. involved. For instance, you probably think the only people involved in a game of cricket are the two batsmen, the bowler and the wicketkeeper. And the people who stand around the edge catching yeah, the balls. Yeah, but the people don't stand around the edge. <laughs> Tommy, help! <laughs> it looks like they're just standing there. They, yes, what are they, they doing? Don't. Every time a, a ball is bowled, yeah. every single one of those fielders mm. do something. And, and, and they're placed almost like a game of chess by the captain. Yes, that... But it goes on for so long. But no, Tommy's agreeing with me for once. All, Tommy's well, agreeing. All, all that is true. Thank you, Tommy. But <laughs> it's, not the, it's, not the re, it's not the thing that draws us lovers of all sports to the sport, although the spectacle can be quite impressive yeah. when Wayne Rooney hits a volley from 35 yards and it's just so close to mm. underneath the bar and so just inside the post that it couldn't have been done by any scientific machine. Yeah. That's impressive. But the reason I think, the underlying reason why a lot of people love sport is because of the reality of what's taking place. In terms of the actual lives of the people who are doing this thing. Yeah. And if we care a bit about them because they happen to come from the same country as us, which is in, in many ways in this global world that we live in now, a false reason for choosing to support a group of people. What, this patriotism thing you mean? Nevertheless, we do find ourselves hoping that one person will win and the other person will not win. Yes, absolutely. For a whole bunch of spurious reasons. And sometimes I can turn on a game of tennis and I will see that um, Gonzalez is uh, playing Rabati. You're aging yourself, Gonzalez. Not Pancho <laughs> Gonzalez. <laughs> right. there, there, there's, there's plenty of Gonzalez <laughs> okay. playing tennis. Now, but... You had me worried there for a moment. Anyway. <laughs> and I don't know why, but I will start to want one of them to win. Yeah, sure. Okay, and that is the lure of sport because it has a result. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I just love sport, but I think it helps if you've played it. No. I don't know. You can get into the spirit of the game I, more. I, I disagree. No, I do disagree. It doesn't. You don't have to have been an actor or an actress to enjoy a great play. Absolutely. You don't have to have been a writer to enjoy a good book. You don't have to have played sport to appreciate sport fully because what is going on is you're seeing some people doing something
the outcome of which is going to be decided by a bunch of reality rather than a playwright or a yeah i agree with you yeah i agree with you about the whole result thing and that being the attraction but i suppose i just want instant gratification Rather than it going on. <laughs> <laughs> too a, long. That can be arranged. I've got Barry White lined up here. <laughs> Length isn't everything. You don't always want it to go I on for too like long. I feel a bit now. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you get my point. You don't always want it to go on for so long. You want the result there and then. Did you see, Ali, it, it would not appear to go on for quite as long as you think it does if you actually played it. I, I just think if you took part... <clears throat> Do you know what I mean? It you, would you, go a bit quicker. You, well, you, you, you'd, you'd appreciate the game a bit more. Yeah. Maybe. Maybe. That, that, I don't know. I, I just feel... Because it's not, as Tommy's saying, it's just... I'm not talking about sort of sport universally. I mean, you know, everybody seems to love, except for me, football. I mean, I love tennis. Uh, we watch loads of sports. Mm. But if you ask somebody, what's the most boring sport ever, they will say, typically, cricket. And I think those people have never actually played cricket. No. Thanks for your call. She's making an important point about the fact that she's played cricket, and hence. Mm. Mind you, playing for Middlesex isn't too bad. But then who hasn't played for Middlesex? I know I have. <laughs> Thank you for your call. Very interesting. Hate cricket, says Helen Lilly. Uh, we, ha we can hear you clicking away on the internet. Stop stalling and apologise to Alison. You must have found out you were wrong for once. There is no such thing as a donkey drop in cricket. I cannot find out what it is, but Google at, less, at least says it exists. Uh -huh. yeah, Aha! An apology. There is no donkey drop in cricket. There might be in, you know, rubbish girls cricket. What do you mean rubbish girls cricket? A donkey drop is a old feeble fool. thing, but it's not a proper delivery. Well, let's find out, shall we? Because I reckon one of those callers on the line now will know. What's a Google? What's a Google? Oh, yeah. A googly. Well, well, where does the word Google come from? I know it's some kind of cricketing term, is it? No, where it you... isn't. Oh. No. A Google is the largest known number, isn't it? Right. Is it not? I don't know. I believe a Google is the largest known number. The next one up from that is infinity. Oh. I think that's a Google. But why they called it a Google, I don't know. And why Reginald Bosenkett, the newsreader, who had a terrible wig and used to get drunk before he broadcasts a lot when he did the news at ten, he was famous for it. And they were all... <laughs> he used to get drunk before he did the news at ten, okay? Yeah. Uh, in the pub opposite Grey's Inn Road, where they did it from. And, um, and when he was really drunk, they used to write as many stories as possible because he had a terrible wig. A really, really bad one. And so the news writers would always write lots of stories about syrup. Oh, sort of they talk like that. But his father invented the googly. Now, a googly is a delivery, and there are loads of other deliveries. There's a Yorker, and there's a Beamer, and of course there's the the wonderful bouncer, and there's line and length. There's the slower ball, all of these things. But donkey drops. That's a, that's playground stuff. Right? No, it's not. <laughs> Who are you? I'm Helen Lilly. You just read out my email. Helen. I've sockets are in. I've Come on, baby. Re I couldn't have this, Tommy. I found it on Google, and now I've actually found a site where it describes what it is. <laughs> Come on. On wondrouscricket.com, there's a um, definition of all the terms, and there's something called a dibbly dobbly. That's the one I meant. The diddly do. Dibbly dobbly. God. That's the one the I meant. A dibbly term dobbly. Applied to slow, medium pace bowling, even less threatening than that of a trundler. That's it. And then there's a donkey drop, which is a style of slow bowling less threatening than a dibbly dobbly. So I'll you sit don't. here now whilst you apologise, Tommy Boyd, because you are wrong. I for don't one. accept this for <laughs> one moment. I'll tell you this. I'll tell you this. This it, this sounds to me like I'm in an episode of Postman Pat. <laughs> I'll go and stick it up That's your dibbly dobbly. Sounds like. It sounds like some <laughs> infantile animation world. <laughs> Where, like, it's like like in Fireman Sam, where the only <laughs> things that ever happen to Fireman Sam is that a cat gets caught up a tree. We know that our nation's great firefighters have to deal with 
unthinkable and unspeakable, um, you know, acts uh, connected with all sorts of the worst and Keep most talking. frightening aspects of human life. It's got to do life. with a donkey drop. Because you girls, you're wrong. you girls, you're don't, wrong. Just don't wrong. know what you're talking about. Wrong. I'm a wrong. cricketer. Wrong. I turned down wrong. Sussex. Wrong. Oh, is there anything you haven't done? Kepler vessels. Yes, Alison, 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 I know that. something he hasn't done. I apologise when he was wrong. I yes. yes. hasn't done. With Farouk Engineer. Oh, I played care. with Truman. I've I played with Brian Close. I didn't mention it at the time. I've played with Brian Close. Colin Milburn. You are a complete fan. You name him. <laughs> Do you know that? Mike really used to bring me out. I've had more drinks with Ian Botham, and that's not the half of it, and I'm not going back there, than you've had hot dinners, you lot. Oh, you make please. me sick. <laughs> Deary mm. me, you're wrong and you can't Alison, handle it. Alison, we know he's wrong. Yeah, thank you Donut so much, Helen. E. You're most welcome. If you want to look at the site yourself, yeah, no, wonderingsbritishly.com. Get back to your knitting, woman. Thank you for that. <laughs> Get back to your knitting. I'll sit and wait all night for you to apologise now. Yeah. I hope you Never! <laughs> I brought her in well, though. What is wrong with you tonight? Nothing's wrong with me tonight. You're there is no really on edge. Cricket. Calm down. The cricket is so tense. Is that what it is? Oh, yes. You're hyper. You're, like, snappy. I'm making a note of tonight. <laughs> and four weeks from now, I'm going <laughs> to... I'm going to have a night off, I think. <laughs> you are snappy, though, tonight. Well, it's not hormones. You're feisty. Whatever it is. I'm not. You are. I'm not. Ten minutes in. Ten past nine, you managed to get into a row with some He's poor man. He was dreadful, man. I, it, <laughs> look, look. I don't like people ringing me up twice with the same thing but when i hear somebody ringing up almost every show on this radio station with the same stupid question point which he thinks you know is, is an aha gotcha then i think somebody has to cauterize him <laughs> that's a medical term of course no it's not that no uh, it's not like spaying him where should we go to now line four you want line four do you okay look hello hello who's there Hello? Oh, I don't mind the odd audio uh, contribution, but that's that's a bit poor, well, Reeves. It's hardly audible. Say. Hello, who's there? Hi. Um, Hi. Uh, I found another site uh, which <laughs> describes a donkey drop... Thank you. ...as a vicious in-swinging Yorker. Ah, you see. And that's I also found straight. that website where the uh, other person has just been talking about... No, the rubbish. reason why Tommy probably hasn't heard of it then is because it is a <sighs> vicious type of uh, bowling action. And perhaps he's uh, shy does away give... from that in the past. Tell me, sir. Yeah? Does it does it give the origin of the term donkey drop then? No, I'm afraid it doesn't. In fact, this is just a match report I found it on. I see. And w what was the match involving which girls' teams? Uh, it doesn't say girls. It's old Dartex. And Wilmingtonians Cricket Club. Ah, the very pinnacle of the game. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it, it, this is Mallingford. Oh, do you know what? The sign of a real man, Tommy, yes. is to know when you're wrong and apologise. Hold your hands up and apologise. You're wriggling about like a little fish. Just say, OK, I got it wrong. No one's going to think any the less of you. If you don't stop it, I'm going to put <laughs> Barry White on and that will give me three minutes and 19 <laughs> seconds to show you all sorts of things <laughs> that will make your eyes water. So just don't come at me with what a real man is, OK? <laughs> well, what's your name, mate? Uh, Seb. Well, clear off. Okay. Seb, thank you ever so much for your contribution to this evening's show. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Ignore the real, rude old man, Boyd. It's a silly name, <laughs> Go to line four. Good evening, line four. Hello? 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 Hello, who's that? It's Shirley. Hello, Shirley. Uh, Donkey Drop, we used to play that at school in the 1950s. Hmm. You used to throw a ball up against the wall and jump over it, and it was called Donkey Drop. Now you're talking my language, Reggie. <laughs> In other words, it's a, it's, it's a puerile playground game. Got nothing to do with cricket. Well, it was when I went to school, yes. Yeah, where was that? In Ardingly. Ardingly. 
But uh, things yeah. can have more than one meaning, can't they? It could be the name of a school ground playground game, but it could also be a cricketing term. Oh yeah, no, I don't. Know, I don't know anything about that. But I've been leading. I've been leading you know nothings up the garden path a little bit. There is a, a, a delivery in cricket. It's called a dolly drop. Yeah. And it's a feeble delivery that just pops but up in the air. Is that something different, the dolly oh, drop? Right, is it? Yes. Oh, right. I think you'll find. Do you realise how much you actually yes. do know about the great You're game? You're confusing yes. your cricketing terms. Oh, there we are, you see. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Shirley. Thank okay, you. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. What about that robbery in Stenning? Oh, no, I did it, but the JCB. Yeah. They pulled the cash point from the wall. I know. Yeah, I heard that earlier. Yeah. In Stenning, of all places. I know, that's what... Isn't that funny? <laughs> that's what I thought. <laughs> yes. I know you shouldn't, but Croydon, yes. Yes, but Stenning. Stenning. Then again, you see, if it's in a built-up area... And we mustn't explore the criminal mind too can No. I don't want to give people ideas, but... Yeah, I suppose if you were to do it in a built-up area, the site of a JCB... Or is it JCV? I don't, I've never known. JCB, JCB. I think. We don't know, do we? I'm pretty sure it's a JCB. I don't know, it might be a JCV. What does it stand for? Someone will know and... <laughs> don't... The is, I don't, don't tell us. I don't want to know. No, yeah, we don't anyway, want to know. Anyway, the site of a JCV or B, coming B. down the... Yeah, you know, uh, swinging around the one-way system. That would definitely attract attention at four o'clock in the morning. Mm. But in a sleepy little place like Stenning... Everyone's know, asleep. Yes. Now, the police are saying, if you don't know this story, by the way, what happened was that at four o'clock in the morning last night, um, a gang of bloke, people, because it could have been women, mm -hmm. you know, it's wrong to assume, sexist to assume exactly. that it's men. Could have been a bunch of women. Yes. <laughs> What's it's not? What are you laughing at? <laughs> a bunch of women couldn't, wouldn't do that. They've got more interesting things to do. Yes, higher morals. Um, anyway. Uh, appear to have stolen a JCB and also a pickup truck mm. and driven the thing at speed to a an HSBC, HBSC, I can't a, HS, HSBC, four letters anyway. I'm problems with your, <laughs> your initials well, this evening. They, they <laughs> it was a JCB and that went to a HCSAZY. Yes, this is yes. the BBC. Uh, <laughs> anyway. And uh, they ripped the hole in the wall out. They ripped and the, the wall out. Yeah. They took half the wall with Apparently them. It only took five minutes, mm. which it just makes you think so many things, doesn't it? And they then put it onto a pickup truck mm. and went off with it. And um, and they're offering fifteen thousand HBSC or HSS <laughs> B B C B. B C. We get that bloke on going. It's if it was HSBC. <laughs> Why wasn't it HSAD, since the bank, obviously... <laughs> God. Hello, who's on line two? Go to London. Hello. Hello, can you hang about for two seconds? Sure. Hang on, I've got to turn this down. Don't worry. A bit more difficult when you just sing from a PC. Good evening, it's uh, Spurious here, how you doing? Hello. Hey, Spurious, all right, mate? Hello, mate. Yeah, not too bad. Um, listen, just going back to um, earlier on when you were talking about um, people leaving for university and all of that stuff. When I left for university, a strange thing happened. Because um, about a year before I left uh, home, my mum and I weren't getting on very well at all. Mm. And um, when I left, I think she must have written this as I was journeying up. My dad gave me a lift up to Manchester. Mm. And um, I got a letter in the post from her. And it was an apology letter. She'd spent the immediate time after I had left for university thinking back over my life and the time that we'd spent together. And she'd written me a letter apologising for all the things that she felt that she got wrong. Oh, God. Aww. And, uh, and I got it in the post a few days later. What did that, where did that leave you? Well, I didn't know quite what to think, really. No. Um, did you write her a letter back? Or? I did. I thought that was the fitting thing to do, to, to send a letter back. Mm. Um, and I just let her know that, um, you know, I loved her and that no, nothing that she did had a, a detrimental impact as far as I was concerned. Mm. But, you know, I would always remember the time that we spent while we were living together in terms of uh, her love and support for me. And um, I hope that would do the trick. But she was obviously having a, a difficult time with it all. Mm. So, yeah, that's what happened to me. It's a cathartic time. And um, well done for helping your mum deal with with all of that, did you, did, did she have any reason to feel that whatever it was that she got wrong deserved her to apologise to you? Did it, did, did any um, of it add up? 
Well, or do you think she was just being very, very emotional, which of, of course you are at this time? Probably more, more of the emotional side of things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, the difficulty for, for my mum and my parents are that they're quite religious people, so they have very uh -huh. specific ideals and, and ideas about where they wanted me to go and the values they wanted me to have, and I didn't end up choosing to adopt those myself, so I think that they felt they got a lot of that kind of stuff wrong. So a lot of that, that mm -hmm. side of things were involved in it. Quite loaded like then in some ways. Yeah. As all yeah. apologies are loaded slightly, or a lot, or totally. Mm. But, um, you don't seem to be turning out too bad for all of that. Um, well, I hope not. Chewing and I'm throwing. Trying, I'm trying my best, you know. <laughs> That's all we can do, mate. That's right, yeah. yeah. Anyway. Cheers. Good show. Take Good care. To, uh, yeah, Thanks. take care yourself. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Very nice young man. Mm. Um, uh, Matt, uh, uh, a, a Matt has emailed, Tommy, I picked up a copy of Games People Play from a bookshop near the Devil's Punch Bowl for 20p yesterday. Was it you who recommended this book? Yeah, it's a good place to start if you're interested in psychology. He says, my other half asks if you could recommend three books to read before you die. What would they be? Mm. Well, assuming that you have to finish them before you die, I would go for <laughs> <Short Entire ones. laughs> Encyclopedia Britannica. Because mm. was it Ali G who said to that, you know when Ali G did those interviews? with people where... Oh, yeah. And he was in, in America. Mm. And he went to a, a prison that still had the death penalty. And he was interviewing the governor of the... Uh, not the prison, but of the state. And he said, Is it true, like, man, that you still get a last breakfast before, you know, you was electrocuted? <laughs> I said, uh, yes, we still allow that privilege. He said... Well, what I would do see is I would have the all-day breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> and then all day. <laughs> you see? <laughs> and the chap, because this is the great thing about Ali G, wasn't it? The chap was a great, you know, he didn't quite know how to say, but you say to Ali, you know, you're an idiot. Yeah. Um, oh, eight four five nine five seven double oh five seven. It's God, time's totally well. I did a time check. Yes, now. it's quarter past eleven. You're listening it's to Tommy Boyd. Eleven fifteen. Fifteen, 15 minutes BBC. past the hour of eleven. Southern Counties Radio <laughs> on the uh, <laughs> uh, Saturday night, late night phone in uh, with me. My sons have bought me um, the Alan Partridge DVD. This oh, is not because great. I'm. This is not because I'm and doing. They don't tell you something. Yes, this is not because I'm doing a midweek show. <laughs> <laughs> I bet you will, by the end of the week, morph into a little bit of partridge esque broadcasting. Uh, you would better help yourself. I don't know. I'm gonna try I'm gonna have a little sort of BS meter about me. And I'm gonna try really hard not to do that. I can't wait to hear you. I can't wait to hear you <laughs> intro songs. <laughs> and I know that that is where you'll fall into the cheesy trap. No, you will I do. I bet you do. No, I don't. Oh, by the end of the week, come Friday, you'll be saying things like Go on, then. Well, and talking of... Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> and talking of glasses, no, no, here's Elton John. No, I do not do <laughs> cheesy links. I'm not a cheesy links man. Anybody on line two? It's gonna be cloudy, and then Slightly spooky. Yeah. Thank you for that. And line three, more nonsense, I expect. Hello. 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 Here we go. I'm going to somewhere special. I'm not going to fly good. I'm not going to fly the water. 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 The region is very, very, very grand. But I have to tell you that it's in the sand. I know it seems strange and it must be quite a shock. You want a more? No. <laughs> He's not listening. 
Where did that come from? Segwification. I don't know. No. Oh, well, I know. Thank you for your... What? That's okay, Tommy. That's okay. I hope you enjoy my song at Brighton from Rene and Renata of Brighton. Very beautiful. And may I say, the Seven Counties radio show, it is the best show in the world. By distance. You're very God kind. God bless you all. God bless Thank you, sir. Thank you. God bless you all. I couldn't tell. <laughs> but it doesn't matter, does it, really? <laughs> no. No. What is wrong with you? What do you mean, what's wrong Look with me? Look at you, I've never seen you like this. Look, you're sitting <laughs> there with your arms crossed. <laughs> I've never seen you huff and puff and sit I'm doing the show huffing, with I'm your huffing. arms crossed. I'm trying to be myself, all right? Because I'm a great believer that m the more, you know, broadcasting becomes normal, then the better everything will be. Oh, no, I know you're being yourself. I just no. wonder what's wrong with you tonight. There's nothing wrong with me tonight. What makes you think there's something wrong with me? <laughs> no, you're just... I'm on edge about the ashes. Mm. Um, something very odd about you tonight. What's well, something very odd about you tonight? No, there's not. There's something very odd about everybody who's called the bloody show tonight. <laughs> Everybody's odd. It's there probably a full moon. Probably. I bet it's a full moon. I wouldn't be surprised. Do you think it's a full moon? Could be. I wouldn't be surprised if it's a full moon. Mm. But I'm not the one having a... Line three... <laughs> Can you put line me? three on, please? Thank you. Okay. Hello. 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 Hello, Ali. How are you, darling? I'm all right. How are you? I want to know where that phone come from. It was bleeding blinding. Wasn't it good? It was, wasn't it? Where did mm. that come from? Who sung it? Um, is it Rene Renata? Rene Renata. Like yeah. Oh, right. That's a wicked tune. Wait, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Rene and Renata had a hit, didn't they, with Save... Uh, Save no. Your Love For Me. Hey! Save your love for me, my darling. Please, wasn't it? Well, yeah, that was that's getting the ready one, for yeah. the midweek show. Yes. It's from his hip Yes. Um, oh. uh, but I didn't know that they did novelty songs as well. They must have done. I really? don't believe that um, Armagon de Brighton was Renee and Renata. <laughs> well, that's what it was. I just said. I, I think, think it was. No, I think it was that man who had a hit with. Um, What's the matter, you? Hey, God, no respect. Oh, yeah. Shut shade. up of your face. Yes. Nah. Yes. Nah, I think yes. it was. Do you know how I know? Yeah. Because I just played it. Oh. Ah, you are coming. I am, aren't I? You are. No, it was Renan it was and Renault, and it oh. was I'm a going to Brighton. Yeah, but I don't believe you. It's true. I've got it on CD. Would you like me to play it again for your listeners? Well, that won't prove that it was Renan and Renata. Why well, were Renee and Renata who could sing, it, Save it your love for me? What are they then doing going? <laughs> it was on the B side of that record. Yeah, but they're not Italian, are they? No, of course they weren't. But what are they doing doing a cod Italian voice? Because for? that's the whole gag of the song. Then at the exactly. end he says, why? I'm not why? going to Brighton, I'm not going to stay. Why Italian? I am going to why Italy for German? a happy holiday. German would do be a funnier. German accent. I'm going to Brighton. <laughs> happy holiday, mein Herr. <laughs> 
Yeah. I'm bringing my fa- my mother and my fur at all. It would be I've funnier. Got, I've got lots of I've got lots of lovely tunes. I make up my own ones sometimes, like right, uh, uh, Kim Town. No, not interested. Thank you very much indeed. <laughs> God. Stop encouraging these sorts of nutters. Not nutters. Nice people <laughs> with a quirky sense of humour. Can you stop encouraging nice people? How am I encouraging them? I don't know, but you. It's not me. I want a good argument. I fancy a really good yeah, argument. I can tell. What? Hello, who's on line one? Line four, good evening. You're on BBC Southern Counties Radio. Hello. Uh, oh, it's a bit boring, isn't it? It is, yeah. Very boring. It's a bit boring. It's a formula. Yeah. All the, well, it's not a formula. It's all these people who uh, think they're characters. No, I mean, your show, the formula, you know. The, oh, completely uh, boring. Well, well it hasn't got one, hasn't got a formula, has it? Well, you know, the uh, husband and wife kind of theme. That's how it's trying to come across. It's not. Well, it's like, that's what you like, isn't it? Well, it's like a bloke and a woman, that doesn't mean it's a husband and wife, you know, you... No, but you sort of act like... Father-daughter. No. no is it father-daughter? I don't know how old you are, though. It is actually more father and daughter, actually. But you're well, fla you flatter me and you insult her, <laughs> so that I'll go with that, you know. Yeah, but, you know, it's a bit tiresome now. Oh, I, can just, I can understand why you're all fed up. Uh, I, 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 why are you listening? Yeah, I wouldn't listen if I was uh, you. Actually, it was an accident. Oh, right. I came across it on the dial. Mm. And how long have you been listening for now, God, then? I'm so, so bored. Yeah, how long have you uh, been listening for now? Too long, really. Well, how long's that? Your voice is sort of a bit piercing, isn't it? Oh, completely. Annoying. <sighs> Mine's cracked as well. I mean, if, if I was you, I would not listen. Oh. You have to, don't you? You've got to listen to something. Let me I'm, tuning in, I'm tuning in on the dial, and this is the best thing that came up. Oh, you must be joking. Isn't the there something thing. better on Radio 4? Radio 4? Well, Radio 2, then. They must be doing something quirky and intelligent. <sighs> well, I don't know, but you, you sound pretty fed up yourself. Oh, I'm totally fed up. Why? I'd far rather be down the pub, wouldn't you? Well, why, why are you doing it? Money. I you got... Paid... You got... Paid, I paid a fort I've got loads of money, but uh, you can always have more. In fact, the more you have, the more you want. That's the funny thing about money. I, I didn't really want lots and lots of money until I had lots of money. So you're greedy, then? I suppose so, yeah. Good quality? Oh, God, yes. Greed works. Not really. It's not a nice thing to be. Oh, it is. Why? Well, because it's successful. Successful? Yeah. No, nah, it's not. Yeah, it is. Money's not successful. See, is your fool. No, you, you can rob a bank. You can rob a bank and have loads of money. It doesn't make you a good, good person. It makes you a good bank robber. Yeah, but that's yeah. not a good thing to be necessarily, is it? Well, if if if, if getting money, well, you brought it up. If getting money is what you want, then that's you one can way murder of doing someone. It. You can murder someone. Well, there's not a lot of money, money in that, is there? There is. If you're a hitman. Well, you don't get hit men, honestly. You do. No, you don't. There's one after you. Oh, good. Good. Bring it on, because I'm from Feltham. Yeah, you scared now? Yeah, no, I want it. I, I would love that. I would love there to be a contract out on me. That would be interesting. I would love to have to duck from doorway to doorway down to my enormous limousine this evening. I would love that. That would make me feel so excited, so alive, so intense. Don't be ridiculous. What do you mean, don't be ridiculous? I no, don't want that. to hit men after him, did I? I just said I do, and I explain why. Because life for an average bloke is very dull. Are your, you an average bloke, then? Your life is very dull. Hang on. You just said your life was. Don't, don't. Everybody's life is dull. Rush. Everybody's That's life is dull. No, it's not. Of course it is. Yours may be. And yours isn't? You do realise what we got going on here, don't we? Don't don't you? What's that? The possibility that you might have small awakening in a minute. What are you talking about? Stay with it. You'll get it. A small awakening. Yeah. What you want a hitman after you, dear? A small awakening. Might be your first. What are you talking about? Stay with it, and you'll find out. Have you gone mad? Stay with it and you'll find out. <sighs> got nothing going on on a Saturday night, have you, friend? Not with you. You're sat in the studio. 
He's getting paid. Weird dude like me. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And so He's you feel paid. And so you feel a bit angry. He ain't about getting that. laid. <laughs> no, you're not either, mate. No. How do you know? No, you. It's a, you know? it's a Saturday night, and yeah. you feel a bit inadequate because this is the best you can do, and you feel as though you ought to be doing something more than this. Well, I think you ought to really. You ought to get out more, don't you? Stuck right. in there talking to weirdos, ringing in. It's a bit boring, and it's not much for life, is it? No, who are you talking? I can leave. I can go out now if I want. You got to stay there and do this. Why aren't you show. out then? It's just talking it's, to. Uh, it's just talking to himself, Ali. No, I'm listening to you. He's just talking to And himself. your bird, I'm listening to you and your bird. And he's cross. Your bird, he is cross, isn't he? Yeah, he's cross. I'm not cross. You are. Yeah, I'm the one laughing, you want me to listen. <laughs> I know, where are you calling from? Uh, a shoebox. Yeah, probably. Yeah. But, you know, it's not as bad as you think. No, I'm calling from Brighton, because yeah. I dialed it on your dial, didn't I? But it's not as bad as you think. What's not? What you got? What? What do you mean what I got? How well, do you know what I got? Well, I don't, of course, but... Actually, did I tell the Samaritans? <laughs> and that's oh, not a good, very good laugh either, is it? I'll tell you what you do. Uh, give us a ring again next well, what's week. what's a good laugh? <laughs> mm. What would you can constitute as a good laugh? A genuine one. Yeah. A I, genuine one? Yeah. Yeah. Well, like your thrilling one. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> you know what, we both feel so sorry for you and that's going to make you feel worse. <sighs> so we won't. We won't, we won't going to feel sorry for you. Um, but we do. Yeah. Oh. He's sitting there and he's thinking it's a Saturday night. I know. I'm missing out on something, but he doesn't quite know what he's missing out on. Oh, I know. So he's listening to the radio oh. and he's thinking, right, they can have it. I'll take it out on them as if yeah. that'll make him feel that's right. better. That's right. That's but right. It's not going to. Um, it yeah, only will if he's able to persuade himself that what he did was give some people a hard time and try to persuade them that they're worse off than him. Yeah. That'll make him feel a bit better. Because we always need somebody to be worse off than ourselves. Mm. I think that's probably about the agenda. I don't know, what did you think, listening? 0845 957 is the number. Um couple of emails very quickly. Oh, there's lots of stuff about the donkey drop, going back to something we were talking about earlier and the <coughs> little argument we were having, Ali, about whether the cricket's worthwhile or not and you came up with the notion that there are things such as donkey drops in cricket. Um, and the gentleman has emailed Ross in Brighton. He says, the lovely lady is correct. I found the following on the net. I've made the bit, bit about donkey drop easy to find. The website is... And he says, bowling, bowlers bowl overs, and over consists of six deliveries. This goes on for a bit, and I presume at some point, he's, oh, he's taped, he's um, pasted the whole thing. Uh, um, the donkey drop is a slow lobbed delivery which describes a high arc. Not for proper cricketers, Ross, that's my point, you see. <sighs> this is for people who don't know anything about cricket, the donkey drop is that. Hello? Hello, Lancey. Hello? Hello, Tommy. Ra radio off. Hello, Alice. Hello. Can you hear me okay? Yeah, loud and clear. It's that last one who was on, right? Mm. Now, I go around Brighton and I talk about you a lot, honestly. Mm. And nine out of ten, well, ten out of ten, I haven't heard anybody say a bad thing about you. Oh, dear. And what I want to say, Tommy, please listen. And what I want to say is, there's people, hundreds of us, like myself, who are at home, and you are just like in our room, you're like company, you're like family. And when he's saying you have a little nutter between yourselves, and it's lovely. It's yep. as though you're in our front room and uh, you're keeping company to lonely people like myself. God bless you. Bye. Right. Bye bye. That, well, that's, that is certainly. Um, I think <clears throat> with any form of entertainment, you 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 tailor it. You tailor the way that you consume it to suit your own needs, mm. don't you? Up to a point. So I can sit and watch EastEnders, um, and I'll enjoy it because I can tell what the dilemmas that the scriptwriters have had with certain scenes. That will amuse me. Mm. Or if I see it cross-cut, then um, I can notice how the lighting's changed. And I know this is feeble, but sometimes you'll see somebody 
with the light coming from the left on one shot and then when they go to the master shot they're lit from the right mm, you know just crap like that really so you make of a piece of entertainment what you want, don't you? You take out of it, yeah, what you want. Yeah, exactly. Mm. That's why I can take a lot from cricket, but we don't want to get too no. admired there. And I'm grateful for that last caller for pointing out that it's quite nice to have two people talking rubbish in the living room mm. if you're by yourself. But I think listening to the radio is a solitary activity. I don't listen to the radio with anybody in my family. I don't invite anybody around to listen to the radio. No. But I invite people around to watch stuff on telly. I don't do that either. Well, if you fine, come you don't round, have to. No. Have to. But, no, I have the football. No, the I football's suppose. on. My mate Cy comes mm. round. Football, but phone that's probably the only thing. Cy. Sporting events would be the only thing. I yeah. wouldn't phone up someone and say, I'd fancy come round and watch EastEnders with me tonight. My brother's mate, uh, my brother, my son's mate, Rob, comes round to watch Man U. Yeah, to watch sports and stuff. But you wouldn't invite someone round, you know, that's a problem around to watch 10 o'clock news with me tonight. <laughs> <laughs> You'd make a great no. night out, would it? No. 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 Um, but you never do that with the radio. I have never said to anybody, you coming around to listen to the, um... Bill Buckley show. The, the no. test, test, you know, test match special. No, you wouldn't do you it. Wouldn't do it. I can't... And I do tend to regard radio as sort of a one-on-one -on -one thing. Hmm. Let's, um, take another call. Line one, good evening. Hello. Hello. Just going to say thanks for your show. It's been very entertaining. Oh, Thank is you. Is it always this weird, though? Uh, yep. It is. Okay, my Is that all right? Me. I mean, do you like it weird? Yeah, it was quite entertaining. I've been doing my ironing, and I've been... Yeah. It's been a couple of hours now, and I'm just oh, sort good. of... It's getting increasingly bizarre, if that's a word. Well, I, I... Yeah, I mean, we try and make it... We, we try and allow it to be as... Uh, just as normal as possible, really. Where, where are you calling from? Uh, Little Hampton. Beautiful. So, uh... And you're still ironing? I'm still ironing, I know. I've got a big pile. I've got four kids, so it's uh, oh. quite a lot. But we're going on holiday on Monday, so well. it's a worthwhile ironing challenge. Where are you off to? Oh, Hastings, not very far. Just uh, Caravan Park. Right. Or oh, Coombe what, Haven. What, That's what, the one. Mm. Are, are you not going to be prosecuted for that? For what, sorry? Well, I heard that it was illegal to take your children on holiday outside of school holidays. Oh, they're homeschooled. Oh, cool. So, ah. people are there. Oh, good for you, man. Who are you with, or do you do it all yourself? I do it myself. Brilliant. And my husband, we share it, so. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. Are you, do you, do, are you trained or qualified or anything? Or um, no, my husband's done teacher training. Okay. But, um, he's self-employed at the moment. He's actually a window cleaner, so he can do his own hours. Oh, this um, is great. How old are they, then? They're seven, five, um, and I've got a two and a one-year-old as well. Brilliant. And uh, did, uh, is your plan to do that right the way through with them, or...? Depends. See see how they go, how, they, yeah. how they're how getting on, how they feel. Um, we've only been doing it sort of uh, six months, so um, just sort of Good making sure we keep up the social side. Yeah, um, we'll keep it... Well, there's that, isn't there? But, I mean, my, my son's both yeah. had the option not to go to school. I said to them, look, if you ever want to pack it in, yeah. Mum and I will teach you from home. And yeah. they all said the same thing. But we, 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 we do find it boring. We do think yeah. it's a waste of time. We do struggle to concentrate mm. all day long because the teachers tell us off if we just let our eyes wander away from yeah. the blackboard. But we like to see our friends. Yeah, yeah, sure. We've, we've made sure we keep up with you know, school friends as well as they go to, you know, they go to Beavers and, you know, swimming club and football club and various bits and bobs. But we've just sort of kept in touch with school friends by inviting them around once a week. And often when they're at school, they don't, you know, you have friends around here and there, but, you know, we can make it a sort of certain point that one day a week they'll have, you know, a friend yeah. around and stuff. So. Of course, yeah. Yeah, brilliant, that's all right. Brilliant. brilliant. Well, keep up the good work. Don't worry too much about the ironing. It doesn't have to be perfect. Oh. Yeah, I know. Just, just I, won't, I won't worry about ours. I'm just, I'm just getting the kids done. I've done yeah. some of theirs perfect, so I couldn't not do the others because it wouldn't be fair, would it? Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, make sure. sure you do it in bare feet. That's the only thing I know about ironing. It's easier in bare feet. Was it? I don't know. It's just. I'm sitting down. I've got the ironing board really low. Oh, but oh. Oh. <laughs> it's quite chilly, really. Oh, that's okay then. So, yeah. All, All right. Well, glad you're listening to us. And, Have a good uh, holiday. Hope Thank it makes you. sense and keep up the good Cheers. work. Bye. 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 A very nice lady. Mm. Um, Helen Lilly has emailed on the business of the donkey drop because she believes that I was wrong and you were right and therefore I should apologise. And she says this, which has got me thinking. She says, when you realise you've made a mistake, make amends immediately. It's easier to eat crow whilst it's still warm. <laughs> but is it? Is it, necessarily? 
cold crow might be quite nice with a tomato and a piece of bread. As long as it's kept moist. Wrap mm -hmm. it in cling film. I think I'd probably prefer it cold. Cold crow, you see, you see exactly. Well, I think if it was warm and you, you, you'd be Can more you mindful crow? of the fact got that, lots that of it's crows. a crow. Yeah, we've got lots of I'm not planning on shooting them. I do sometimes throw <laughs> small things that don't hurt <laughs> no, them No, 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 you don't. Yes, no, I you do. you don't. Don't say that. No, I do. Oh, they'll all be on the phone. I don't Cruelty care. Cruelty to Crows Association. Nobody loves crows. We're reporting. Oh, someone will. No, they don't. They're absolute buggers. No. These crows, right, bully the two wood pigeons that live in the apple tree right outside my bedroom window. And for years, every morning, I'm woken up by this. <laughs> and that is Kevin and Sharon Pigeon. Kevin and Sharon. That's them. But, about 18 months ago, the crows moved in. To what the are they called? What? What are they called? I don't know. They look like Messerschmitts. <laughs> they do. They look like the Luftwaffe of the avian kingdom. <laughs> and they bully Kevin and Sharon Woodpigeon. So They're you trying, think... Trying to get them out. So then you bully the crows ah, back. Ah, 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 ah. I don't bully them back. Well, you're throwing things at them, you say. Oh, uh, only, uh, pathetic chewed pieces of... <laughs> well, you, you can't be going around throwing things at birds. I moisten pieces of newspaper and ro roll them up into balls and just throw them in the direction of the crows when they attack Kevin and Sharon. And I enjoy it. It doesn't hurt them. I the crows get it. hurt them. What? Well, I've never hit one yet. Oh, right. But they, <laughs> well, can tell it, hurt they can tell there's some bloke chucking it out the bedroom window. These are good things to do. These are important things to do. All men must do things like this. Right. Women, you carry under the ironing. Ugh. We're very close to nature, men. So... If I ever get one of these crows, I don't know if it's illegal to kill crows. I think it probably is. Why? Why because you can't be? just go around killing things just well, because just because you you trying to stick up for some pigeons. Well, tell that to Bernard Matthews. Because <laughs> <laughs> is he going to get a knock on the door? <laughs> oh eight four five nine five seven double o five seven. Um, more people saying that there is such a thing as a donkey dropping. Ah. In cricket, but you know, I'll tell you what. I'll get. I'll get. I'll. I will accept that you are right, Alison, saying there is a donkey dropping Thank cricket. You. If anybody can ever tell me any professional cricketing journalist or broadcaster who has ever referred to a delivery as a donkey drop, well, somebody will. No, they won't. Just a matter of time. No, I'm sorry, mate. They won't. Oh, and I must tell you about a letter I got during the week. Okay. Oh, we'll take this call first. Hello, who's, Hello there? who's there? Oh, yes. I was just ringing up to see what your views on um, when they, they called uh, Bush a racist for um, for the recent events. Who's they? Well, it's, uh, uh, news reports. Which ones? I just heard new, uh, news reports and on the t television uh, the people saying oh, he's a racist because um, if it was... Uh, a white population, then they, there would have been aid there quicker. Why, why do they say? Do they, do they think he's a racist? Do you think he's a racist? I don't know, and I haven't uh, read or heard any such reports myself, so I can't comment. Haven't you? No. Oh. And it's not something I really want to talk about. What 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 makes you want to talk about that at quarter to twelve on a Saturday night? Well, I was just it was just interesting. I just just think it's strange how the the public. Uh, uh, can label some, something on someone over something that they haven't really given that much thought into. I mean, do they not realise that uh, the extent of the, of the, of the fact that um, the, the 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 hurricane itself uh, was a factor involved, and they're just quick, quick to blame? No, I, don't, I don't know who these people are that you keep talking about. Who well, the, gen the, the general public. Well, what is the? Ge but you're wrong. You uh, sorry. Who are the people? Be specific. Tell me, who are the people who have said that he's a racist? Uh, it was on the news. I, ca I, I cannot remember exactly. Well, who are you was. sure you got it right? I mean... 100%, yes. It was on the television. Well, you, well be 100% then. Go ahead. Because at the moment you're being about 17%. You're saying that somebody okay, said just, it, but you're not sure who. The actual source was, was from, the, from a newscast. I think it was on TV one Yes, it was. During, during a recent... Can you, can you be specific? Yes. Well, go on then. 
It was on a, on a newscast. And, and That's I, not specific. Well, how, how That's specific? vague. You're saying it was on some telly programme, I think it was ITV1. It's not good enough. I but I do find it strange also that, um... No, don't, don't make any more casual allegations that are... I'm not, not making gonna allegations. Be able to I find it strange that when the, the Americans, um... Uh, send in uh, bombs to to Iraq that they have nine eleven written on them. I mean, the whole point of invading. Where Iraq do you get your information from, and why? Why do, why do you? Why? No, wait, 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 wait. I mean, I, I don't really want to spend any time talking about a, an awful thing like Hurricane Katrina. I'm concerned that you might think it's interesting. Of course, because I think it's I think it's disgraceful, of tragic, it's it's and disgusting. Disgusting. it's not interesting. And I don't see why you want to, would want to make casual conversation out of it at quarter because to twelve very, uh, on a Saturday in... night. Well, what? Of course, it's very topical. Who cares? Who cares? Isn't it being done elsewhere? Why do you? Uh, this isn't a show that's dedicated to things like that. Well. I'm afraid we're, we're dare I say it we're, we're we're far too intelligent to find things like that interesting. Important, perhaps, well, I think but not it's interesting. very important because it affects the, well, the world at the moment. It isn't a very nice place. Rubbish. You have to, yes, of course no, it's not. No, no, I knew you'd be somebody who'd think that. And you know why? It's not a very nice place at the Shall moment. I tell you why you think that? No, because it's true. No, shall I tell you, you why you think that? You can cover it up with as much as you like, but at the moment it's too, it's, it's a very bad place. It's not like it used to be. No, good. Shall I tell you why you think that? Since 9-11 it's changed. Shut up. Shall I tell you why you think that? Why? Because you're one of those news junkies. Well, of course I'm a news junkie. The whole yeah. world is... Do you know what a news junkie is? It's someone that likes the news. No. Nope. What's... what is it then? A news junkie is somebody who is addicted... Yes. ...to bad news. Well, that's what most of the news is. Exactly. And do you know what it does to them, that addiction? But that, that's just... Do you know what it does to them? Do you know, do you know, do you know, do you know what it does to them, that addiction? Do you know what it does to them, that addiction? The news is bad news and that's what's happening. Yeah, what does it do then? Go on. It's what it's done to you. What's that? Made you sad and depressed and angry. Well, that that's, other people. that's the world at the moment. You, you, you can't go through London or New York and, you're, and you're, say you're happy. You're, you're suffering from... We all are. You're a news The world junkie. is at the moment. What do you do for a living? What do I do? Yeah. Uh, I work in an office. Have you ever been a journalist? No. No. I have. And? Two well, years there you go, then. You're a news junkie. No, I'm not. I'm a what? dealer. A drug dealer? A news dealer. Oh, you're a news dealer? Yeah. I was. I'm an ex. I'm reformed. Well, therefore, you obviously take an interest in the news. I know what it is, the news, in the news that appeals to you. Well, so, is, I give it is... to you. Bad news. Well, that's unfortunately what we're getting, my friend. That's because that's what you want. Not at all. To feed your addiction. We'd all love to see the world as a good place. You wouldn't. I would, but all I'm saying You're is too I far find gone. it strange. You're too far gone. Okay. You're too well, far gone in your addiction to bad news. It's you're starting we, we to must, enjoy. It's you're starting. We must you're starting to enjoy the buzz that you get from hearing over and over again that I quote: "Our leaders are corrupt." And bad. No, 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 no. I haven't said that. I, I find haven't it strange finished. that you're I haven't the point finished. finger. I haven't finished. Well, not if I. No. But what I haven't you, finished. What makes you have to always go first? I'll tell you why. Because why? you are going to make people feel bad and uncomfortable. No, I'm not. Yes, you are. You want to. You want well, other this people. This is just one topic. You want other other topics I could talk about. You want other, yeah, but you want other people to be as unsettled as you are. And I don't want them to How do that. you know this? How, do, how know? do I know which? Which bit? How do you know that I want people to be unsettled? I'm telling you that that's what you're, that's what you rang up about. You wanted Pete, you wanted to bring... No, you, no. But don't say no before you've heard the end of the sentence. What was I going to say? You were going to say that, that I want people to be sad and I'm trying to bring, bring them down. No, and, I wasn't going to say that, so don't interrupt. Try listening. This, this, the, the, the people like... Shall I tell you one of, shall I, that. shall I tell you one of the characteristics of the news junkie? Yes. Is that they don't listen very specifically. Okay. And you don't. Well, carry on then. I listen. If you listen specifically, you would be able to be specific in answering the question that I asked you several times and you couldn't. Go on then. Well, I've already asked you it lots of times. Do you remember what the question was? No. I wasn't no, listening. Don't, do you? <laughs> exactly. No. You're going to have to go now. And I'm sorry that, that journalism has done what it's done to you, and I believe it has done this to an awful lot of people, 
and I'm glad I'm out of it. You just, uh, you just have to be realistic, the world. Yeah, 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 yeah. I believe all that, Ali. I'm sorry if you find it... whatever. You know, it's interesting. We had the same conversation last week, didn't we? I believe with it. With people thinking that whole, oh, the world's going down the pan and it was better before and... I really believe it. Mm. There is such a thing, I think, as an addiction to bad news. There are news junkies. Mm. And, um, I've worked at other places where, um, they present themselves an awful lot and they get a, a great deal of pleasure without realising it out of sort of almost recycling their own fix on the news and they want the bad stuff. They really want it reinforced. They not want the notion reinforced that things are going down the plug hole. Mm. And and then they will ring radio stations or write letters to newspapers to perpetuate, you know, to recycle. Yeah. The fact the stuff that they want to focus on themselves because actually it makes them feel quite good to think that the world is becoming a terrible place. I'm not sure if I know quite why, but, you know, I don't know how new you are to the notion that there are a lot of people who like to feel like that, but why? Why would you want to feel as though the world had become a bad place? Maybe it goes back to what we were saying earlier about how some people want to make other feel uh, make other people feel bad so that they can feel better yep. so maybe there's an element of oh this world is so awful therefore it's not my fault that i feel down or depressed i'm not responsible for how i feel it's not my fault that i live in this awful dreadful world it sort of makes allowances for them i think mm. they don't have to actually be responsible for their own happiness then mm. they don't have to say well i'm actually in control of my own life i've mm. really got to try and make myself happy yeah which instead, one is exactly but yeah. instead they can say well it's not my fault mm. it's the world that's gone to pot mm. Mm. that's mm. why i'm depressed mm. there's nothing i can do about it it's, mm. it's everyone else mm. it's that yeah. sort of thing i think mm. 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 i think that's right Oh eight four five nine five seven double oh five seven is the number or you can email the show tommy.boyd at bbc.co.uk I was going to tell you about this letter I got. Oh, yes. Do you remember last week we were talking about the um, fact that it's going to soon be a year anniversary when we started doing this show and how we're going to have a special sort of Oscar yeah. sort of ceremony? For the worst caller. Yeah. And we mentioned about the lady who was very concerned about the food dye. Oh, yeah. That had made her bones ache. Well... No, both, both aren't. She'd been eating nothing but um, whatever seafood it was. Seafood sauce, wasn't Seaf it? A sea seafood mayonnaise yes for two weeks yes and she had pains in both arms and both legs mm. yeah well lesser wound up in my pigeonhole this week now it was dated a while ago so i'm not sure whether it got lost in the system here or whether it's somebody it's not really from her maybe it's somebody having a laugh mm. the letter's addressed to you and me i should have brought it in i completely forgot and she says um how she couldn't believe that um, we belittled her anxiety over whether this food dye had caused problems with her limbs. Um, she then goes on to describe in, in quite a lot of detail the pains that she experienced and just how oh. much of this seafood sauce she was consuming. Uh, oh, right. How much was she? Uh, well, quite a lot. I mean, it was sort of three meals a day, seven days a week, but she was very annoyed. But she wasn't so annoyed at you. It was me, apparently. Uh. Apparently, I had been very rude in not taking her complaint and concern seriously to the point that after she spoke to us on that show, she yes. did write to all of her local newspapers. Oh. And apparently they're very interesting. One of them wanted to follow up the story. <laughs> but then she decided that she didn't want to go public. Right. A TV company was also interested. But again, she decided that she didn't actually want to go public. A TV company? Mm. Is it a series? <laughs> <laughs> Seven and a half hours? Maybe. Well, one television, 45 minutes. How interesting. And do you think it's genuine? I'm not sure. Um, and I sure. thought of another, um, nominee for oh, the okay. category of worst okay. phone caller. Okay. Do you remember the lady who phoned up and said she was calling from her tent? In oh, college? She wanted yes. to complain yes. that David Miller Had was encouraging people, people to commit suicide, commit suicide. Because yes. he'd referred to the music of, who was it? R.E.M., I think it was, of being music Kaiser slash Chief your somebody. wrist to. Yes. Yes. Mm. yes. I think she's got to be up there. 
Yes, she told me. And then she phoned back as her friend. Yes. Yes. With the same voice calling from the same number. <laughs> we've had a, we've had we've had some real lulus as they <laughs> call them in America. Which is, which is, you know, fine, 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 fine. All part and parcel. What I don't want, what I'm not going to do on a Saturday night, I mean, I'd do it elsewhere, but I'm not on a Saturday night going to get mired down in yet another conversation about, you know, Hurricane Catriona, because that was a, that is an awful, tragic oh, episode. Yeah, and, um, and there's nothing more that anybody can tell us about that that we don't know. No. If, if, if there's more to be learned about that, it will be on a news package. Uh, as far as discussion of it goes, I don't think there's anything more to be learned. So but also, if we start doing that on a Saturday night, then we're, s we're also then feeding this strange the desire that some people have yeah. to feel depressed. Oh, there are news junkies. A uh, quick email from Paul in Burgess Hill. Uh, to clear things up, he says, it's okay to kill crows. <laughs> Who says? Oh, Paul does. In, and uh, rooks and magpies. If they are damaging crops or livestock and there is no viable deterrent, according to the latest DEFRA licence, under this ruling, I have been shooting at the magpies. I have killed, they have killed 30 of my baby ducklings this summer. Be good. Oh, I wouldn't shoot magpies. I'm very superstitious when it comes to them. Magpies? Yeah, you always got to see two of them, haven't you? Um, so they say. Yeah. If you're, if you're the superstitious type. Shall I take a call? Lots mm. of mobile phone calls. Coming into line one. Hello, line one. How are you? Never been better, sir. Are you? I'm George W. Bush. Oh, this one. Okay, there fine. There we go. Play this. I, I, I want you to be on my team. No. I'm absolutely, adamantly opposed to that. So is Alison. Uh, no, not working. Good effort, good effort. No, 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 no. Too far too sharp for any of that rubbish. <laughs> Line four, good evening. You're on Southern Counties Radio. Let's see what Line three has to offer. Hello, Line three. Do you want to turn your radio off? Hello. Uh, Hello. Yeah, how are you all? Um, Could you turn your radio um, off? Right now. Good. Um, could I speak to, uh, t um, Tommy? Yes. Right. Um, Marie from Tin. Hello. Hello, my dear. Um, two things. I'm um, pick up with cricket because I live right near, um, the, um, Lord's Cricket Ground and I can spit on it. Oh, right. And that, I don't want to know about cricket. But I'd like to know what Tommy thinks about Ed Douglas. Because Ed Douglas doesn't seem to have much time for Tommy. No. Twice told us not to listen to you. Yeah. And and I know he probably got more money than you. So I wondered what you thought about him. Um. In a very nice way. Yeah, what? I mean, I don't mean you to be very rude or... You just tell me how you feel. He wasn't rude about you, he just said... You know, we always get the time to dream. And right. I wonder how you feel about Ed. I don't mind. Ed's on every morning. Right. Um, how do you feel about him? Fine, not at all. Don't worry about that. Uh, no, um, you haven't, you don't worry about, um, what, um, Ed says about you? No. You don't? No. I'm oh, absolutely amazed because I would really have thought you'd be up in arms. No. Because I know how you get your goat about you. <laughs> you know, when I've talked to you before, you've got the goat me. Oh, I, I can get my goat with people, yes. But, yeah. Um, no, Ed's a pussycat. Uh, you think so? Harmless. I've met him and I didn't think much of him, actually. <laughs> no, you're uh, right. He's a bit of a prat, isn't but he? But, you know, the fact that he keeps on about you each Toss time, him. he says, oh, you don't want to bother to do him. Yeah, okay. And I thought, well, you know, why does he feel like that? I, I don't know. I don't mind, Ed. I'm just going along with you here, dear. Uh, whatever you say, but listen, don't spit on Lords, because that is illegal. <laughs> oh, oh, well, <laughs> why not? I don't live there. I don't live there anymore. Yeah. No, but all I'm saying is it's the germs. I lived there for 30 years. I couldn't spit on Lords. Eh? I, they no, but, but don't. Me. 
That don't, is how I would. Don't, because it's not legal anymore, you know. Are you sure? No, when you were a girl, you couldn't walk in that, walk down the street for all those gold watches on the street, well, could my, you? And it, my father-in-law <laughs> was a don't member of Broad's Cricket Ground. He used right. to be a member. And did and he, my, was he a spitter? Pardon? Was he a spitter? Uh, he, be, he, he belonged to the Lord's Cricket Ground. He, did, did he smoke? Oh, yeah. Well, he t but did he spit? I don't know about that. It well, was you... me that was doing the spitting. I know, but don't. <laughs> because of the <laughs> well, I, I, I played cricket at school against the boys. Have... And and, right. and and then when I got a base and put my father in law, and my, and my husband used to sell the tickets for them, uh, I had enough. Right. So I've got no time for cricket anymore. All right. Um... But, um, but it was Ed Douglas I was interested in. No, he's a pussycat. I'm a great fan of his, and he's a very nice man. Uh, thank well, you, thank I you don't know. I met him. I'm sure, yeah, and you didn't I like didn't him, I know. I didn't like him. Well, spit on him the next time you meet him, then. <laughs> Oh, no, I don't think I'll do that. Oh, go on. Listen, <laughs> thank you for your call. <laughs> thank you for your call. <laughs> thank you for talking to me, Tommy. Oh, you're you're bye -bye, quite dear. right, yeah. Bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs> she was good. I liked her. She was a bit feisty. <laughs> <laughs> She's run out of her tablets, I think. If you'd like to uh, <laughs> call the show, you can. 08459 Or you can text 07786 Hello, who's on line four? Hello, good evening. Hello. Line four. This is a lady that spoke to you a few months ago about living in a tent about the comment David Miller was on about about the suicide thing. Yes. Now, I think I, I deserve an apology. I've been badly bullied, lost all my family, lost my child in a tent, right? And all I was pointing out is there is a lot of people out there that are sad because they've had sad lives, not through their own fault, right? So I don't like people calling me a nutcase over the radio, calling me a loony, because I am not a loony. I just happen to be an unfortunate miss under circumstance of this society, okay? Which a lot of people have not done for their own fault. I've been bullied enough in this Crawley, and I want to clear my name. So, right, I'm not in a tent no longer because I've bothered to get off my backside and sort my life out and live somewhere and get on with my neighbours and live in peace and quiet in my life because that is all I want and I've also got cancer. So I don't need people like you calling people like me a nutter. Thank you, Nicole. Oh, eight four five nine five seven double o five seven is the number. Apparently not for eight days. <laughs> it's a full, not a full moon for eight days. Oh right. Yeah. Uh, line one. Good evening. You're on BBC Southern Counties Radio. It's all going off tonight. Hello. 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 Um, it's. It, I just wanted to say the, the program is actually unbelievable. Mm. Um, and uh, and I've very much enjoyed it. And um, oh. with, with it, is it always like this? Well, it varies really, from week I, I to week, but I, tonight is quite out there. It, yes. It, it, it's incredible. <laughs> it, it's incredible. I just I just had to say it. Uh, yeah, and, and Tommy. Yes. Um, we remember you from our childhood. Yes, good. Uh, did you enjoy it? Well, wow, what did we do? The tea. Well. <laughs> The TV, the TV. Did oh, you enjoy it? <laughs> Sorry, I thought you were talking about a party I went to in Patcham. Um, yeah, it was actually. Was that you? <laughs> yeah. Fantastic, wasn't it? If only the taxi hadn't come. Um, where was I? Uh, yes, um, I, yes, of course I did. I enjoyed that enormously. But that was an excursion for me. I was, um, I was on my way to being a social commentator, and I've sort of, I'm almost there it, now. So. Right. Yeah. Well, oh, thank, well, I, I appreciate your 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 comments. It certainly has been. Um, quite a, a one-off. It's, it's, it's been a, a, a amazing. As long as you've enjoyed it, I appreciate your call. Yes, thanks. Thank Cheers. you. Bye-bye. Bye. Nice lady. We've, we've had some fun, haven't we? We it's have. Really, it's still an hour to go. God mm. knows what's going to happen. You never know what's going to happen. And more calls. Mm. Just don't know people... So, it's funny, isn't it? Sort of really nice people, so, kind of people you quite happily go for a drink with, mm. ringing up and saying, this is outrageous, and all we're doing is being normal. 
Mm. I think. And then some people that I'm not sure you would want to go for a drink with, um, giving us a hard time. Mm. So, I mean, if you can judge people, they say you can judge a man by his enemies. Mm. Uh, a woman as well, I presume. So I'm happy with what we're doing, aren't you? Yeah. Okay. Mind you, what are we doing? We're just letting other people get on with it, aren't we? Who's on line two? Hello? Hello? Hi. Um, first of all, I just want to say to Tommy, cricket and apology. Um, to Come on! Thank to you. To say sorry. Um, but you had a gentleman who called in and he was a, a news junkie. Yeah. yeah. The way that was handled is fantastic. I've got somebody who I talk to quite regularly who's exactly the same. Yeah. Um, and it would be nice to actually be able to tell them why they're doing it. Yeah, good. Mm. good. So, why do you think that people do it? I had no idea. I was, I thought maybe conversation, maybe just to be a bit glum, but news junkie really does make sense. So, yeah, and I'm still ironing, by the way. <laughs> oh, are you? Because I keep sitting here trying to wipe the number down. You, you you, say it too fast. I know, but then, you see, can I tell you something really bizarre? And I've thought this for 30 years in phone-in radio, and I'm still losing. I've always said that when you say to somebody a phone number, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Supposing I gave you my home phone number, right? I'd do mm -hmm. it like this. It's not my number, obviously, but I'll go. Right. 19 26 31 because you've got to write it down, haven't you? Yeah. yeah. You play back your show, you go... I know. Right, four, five, blah, 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 blah. Because that's what you're told to do. Every radio <laughs> station I've wor worked at, you get... You do a show, you do three hours, right? And that's hard work, and you... Well, no, it's not actually hard work. What am I talking about? But you get a memo from the Programme Controller Secretary. Not here, but it goes, Oh, uh, we say our phone number like this. Yeah. <laughs> and there's always a way of doing it. Mm, every radio station has a particular way. I know. Is it O or is it zero? You know, all that crap. Mm. Mm. But then they also say, and can you say it quite quickly, please, otherwise it's boring. <laughs> so I always say, yeah, but if somebody's writing it down, you want new callers. You want, you don't want the people who've got the phone number already keyed into their phone because they ring the station twice a day. Mm -hmm. Are you listening, Taffy? <laughs> um, exactly. We're the people that are trying to write the number down. <laughs> I know. Well, I'll do it in a minute then. I'll do what I'll do. It. I'll do, I'll do the phone number at the proper pace. <laughs> Especially for people who haven't already got it written down, and, and then they can give us a ring sometime in a minute's time. Okay. All and right. don't do the ironing any longer. No, it's called midnight. Fold well, it and sit I'd on it. I'd be finished if I didn't keep having to try and catch the numbers. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, the news junkie thing is fantastic. Thank you. You've you really hit the point there. Beautiful. I appreciate your call. You're a nice person. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye bye. Bye bye. See, that's what I mean. All nice people think we're good, and. All people that you, um, you know, I would not want to go for no. drink with. I think we're awful. Think we're awful. Um, Paul says, Hi Tommy and Ali, just looked at the DEFRA rules again, and to put the last lady's mind at rest, it is okay to shoot Egg Douglas. <laughs> <laughs> Only if he's damaging your crops, though. <laughs> How would he do that? <laughs> oh, I wouldn't like to Ooh. think. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> Is he loose? <laughs> oh. <laughs> Andrew Peters has emailed, um, I'm glad to hear that you're doing the weekday show. Will you be doing the happy hour? Uh, sorry, forgot the proper name on Friday. By the way, I was given a 2006 diary today. Do what you do. Do you do what I do and go straight to your birthday to see what day it falls on? Yeah, I do that. Do you? Mm. What day is it this year, then? Uh, Sunday. Sunday? Mm. Not a good day for a birthday. Not a great day, no. Saturday's the day. Everybody's birth everybody should be allowed to move their birthday to the Saturday. Yeah. 08459 There. That's how you give it, you know. I think that's the double O bit that makes you say it fast as well. Because mm. you sort of say 08459 570057. It's mm. hard to say double O slowly. Mm. It's not really an O, is it? Because you've got a keyboard, you've got QWERTY, and there's an O there. Mm. But you actually hit, you hit the zero, don't you? So okay. technically... No, I know, I know. You I sound you know. like one of the pedants who would email in and point that out. Hoot! Line four. Good evening. You're on BBC Southern Counties Radio. Oh, God. It's a slightly eerie thing again. Mm. I'm going to have to... Don't make me ban you. Let's go to line one. Hello. 
Hello, who's there? Hello. Hello. Um, I'll just turn the radio then. No. Um, this is Maria. Hello, Maria. Hiya. Hello, I'd like to um, ask Tommy a question, please. Cool. Um, now, I love your show. I listen to it every weekend. It's lovely. Um, I heard you um, some time ago now. You were talking about in the old days, back in the 30s, 40s. Was that me? Yeah, yeah, one night. And um, as a lot of people, they say, oh, they were better days. You could go to bed, leave your doors open, leave your windows open. And then I went to an antique sale and I saw a lot of old furniture there, years old, made back in the 1930s, 40s. And everything had a lock. There was a key in it, in the wardrobes. In, in the, in the yes, that's true, isn't it? That is true. Yeah, that's very well observed. That is true. That is true. Then people did use some. And I thought, how could it be the good old days? So, yeah. They never were the good old days. It's and you don't yeah. get that now. You don't go to Ikea and buy yourself no. a wardrobe no, no, no. with a lock on. People, exactly. people, used to, people used to have bureaus, didn't they? Yeah. To lock them. Everything was locked. And they How could you lock drawers? your wardrobe? Why would you lock your you wardrobe? Because somebody might go yeah. in and steal your clothes. What would happen? And yet you could go to bed, uh, what they said, leave your doors open, leave yes. your windows open. Yes. But and lock your wardrobe. Very so old. So come on, Tommy, tell, tell yes. me, what was it? Which was which? Well, why? Why was the locks there? Why were the keys and everything? I don't know. No, I don't know. I, I couldn't understand it. No. I thought, hey, could they be good old days? Exactly. When they had to lock everything away. They weren't, were they? No, couldn't have been. No. They couldn't have been. Thank you for your call. Thank you, Tommy. Nice person, Maria. Yes, I mean, it's rose-tinted spectacles and everything, isn't Completely. it? Completely. Which is, and, you know... My, 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 you know, it might not be by choice. People might not be going on about the good old days being the good old days out of choice. They might have some sort of distortion in their perspective, in their perceptions. And also like, that there's an element of people think that they were the good old days because they've heard loads of other people say that they yes, were. Yes, yes. So they must be. Yes. Well, everyone says it, don't they? Everyone says, oh, yes. yeah, it's all going down the pan now yes. and, oh, it was much how better years person, ago. How would an old person feel about saying, I lived through the 30s and 40s and it was terrible? And it's much better now. People were miserable, they were stupid. Mm. Have you looked at the films that people enjoy? There was a Lady Vanishes was on today, early, on Sky. Do you know that film? No. No, okay, it's a black and white film. It's rubbish. <laughs> I mean, pe the only way you could enjoy a film like The Lady Vanishes would, it would be if you were completely childlike, naive, innocent. Um, it's not very worldwide, it's not very well informed, not very um, sharp, frankly. And cinema audiences of those of that day enjoyed George Formby. They thought he was funny. And then when they tired of George Formby, they moved on to a much higher form of comedy, which was Norman Wisdom. Mm. I worry about the collective intellectual perceptibilities, if there is such a term, of people during the 30s, 40s and 50s. I just don't think people were terribly sharp and bright. In fact, without having a go at the people that I love sharing this country with, I was watching the survivors of um, the Katrina hurricane, the Americans being interviewed. Yeah. A lot of these people were what you would call, you know, um, in this country, uh, not working class, but underclass or something. Mm. You know, they were poor. And yet when they were being interviewed, and I don't know how selective the uh, television newscasters doing the interviewing were, but they found people who were not only extremely articulate and intelligent, but mm. perceptive and, and passionate, and mm. th they were brilliant communicators. Mm. And I wondered whether we have many people like that in this country. I can... noticed that, actually. Did it's you? funny you mention it. Yeah, because I thought, where did they... I, my first thing I thought yeah. was, where did yeah. they find them? They must have really had yeah. to search around to find such brilliant communicators. But maybe they didn't, maybe... Yeah. There was the black guy who looked a bit like Samuel Jackson mm. on the balcony of, the, of his home with the waters behind him. Mm. And he was moving his elderly mother out. And he was he just sort of said, with some anger, but nevertheless with great sort of um, uh, uh, balance, he said, um, he said, uh, 
we lived through it all. We lived through the hurricane. We lived through the bad days when there was no one here to help us. We lived through the looting and we lived through the fighting. And now that we're just about getting back up on our feet, they're coming for us telling us that we got to get out. And I thought, but he's just summed it up so perfectly yeah. in 30 seconds. He's, he's explained it all. I've got the picture. I can see what he's been through. He's done it. You couldn't educate somebody mm. in a school to be that good a communicator. Mm. What is it? Americans good at being uh, good at communicating? They're good at lots of things. I think they are often more articulate than us Brits. Oh, eight, four, five, I'll do it properly from now on in. She's made, she's given me a good note, that woman. Oh, eight, four, five, nine, five, seven, zero, zero. I'll get a memo now. <laughs> five, seven is the number. Uh, are you there, line four? Hello. Hello there. Hello. 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 Um, you were talking about wardrobes, uh, old fashioned wardrobes with locks. Mm. Uh, a lot of these wardrobes had to be locked to keep the doors closed. That was how the doors stayed shut. Oh, I just I thought see. that you would like to know that. It wasn't anything to do with anybody breaking in and stealing from a wardrobe. The wardrobe door would not stay shut. I'm not convinced about this. What about bureaus and stuff I'm like sorry, that? I'm but I go back a lot, a lot what, further than Where you would do. the man keep his magazines? I beg your pardon? Where would the man keep his magazines? Health in, and fitness. In his magazine rack. No. Oh, I said he would keep those I, sort of I, publications I, in a magazine rack. I don't think he would keep his health, his his monthly health and fitness in a magazine well, rack. Well, how about he would keep all his um, magazines, whatever kind of magazine it was, perhaps on the top of the wardrobe. Top eh? of the wardrobe. And his prophylactics. And perhaps underneath the wardrobe. Underneath the wardrobe? Yeah. What about the mice problem? Well, they didn't have very many mice, especially those who, uh, those households who had cats. And did camphor ever keep moths away? No, but it kept colds away. I used to walk around with a camphor block around my neck uh, when I went to school many, many, many years ago. That must have carved you out as being a bit of an individual. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, 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 it certainly wasn't, uh, it certainly wasn't nice perfume, let's put it that way, but uh, we very rarely had cold. I bet I know something that you used to keep in your underwear drawer. Really? Yeah. A pomander ball. <laughs> Oh, I do now, but I didn't then. Are they those things that smell of lavender? Ridiculous. Well, yes, a lavender yes. or, or uh, potpourri or uh, What's the anything thing that you hang around your neck? Never heard of that before. Oh, what? A, ca a camphor block. Yeah, How what's that it? then? Uh, it, it, it looked like a square mothball. How big, though? <laughs> um, perhaps about, oh, gosh, half an inch square. And you used to walk around with that hand yes, in your neck? Uh, they, they, yes, my, my mother made a, a little cotton bag which mm. she hung around my neck and this camphor block was um, was put in it and it was almost like wearing a, a, a locket, you know, around your neck only it was this bag which was kept obviously underneath, uh, underneath your school uniform. And mm -hmm. what was it supposed to do? Uh, keep away colds with a, a, a spoonful of uh, castor oil as you walked out of the door and that sort of thing. When so, was this? Back in the 40s. But we discovered that there were germs before then, hadn't we? Oh, well, yes, but you see, that's a very old remedy, Tommy. Terribly old remedy. Well, well, Tommy, no, exactly, can... no, well, hang on a second. In that yeah. case, did you know at the time that it was rubbish? Well, um, I don't know that it was... How did you a... think you caught colds then? Well, I don't know. Through the, I mean, I come from, I come from the frozen north, Tommy. You know. So. Yes, but the germs are the same, whichever part of the world. Well, they probably, they, they probably are. However, uh, that is how they used to uh, combat colds and things. And I've got to say, Tommy, there was very, uh, there, there wasn't a lot of people with uh, 
colds and flu that uh, that we we seem to have now. Oh, well, we're, load we're, of old we're a hardy hardy bunch. Oh, Tommy, shut up. can I can I please shut up? Oh, shut, 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 shut up. There's a load of old no, no, rubbish. No, no, don't tell me to shut up. Well, dear. Well, you may, this I won't accept listen, you coming out listen, with all this darling, this is, this Everybody is my gets colds show. and flu nowadays. This is my show. Can everybody get, everybody gets colds and flu nowadays. But when we used to practice mumbo jumbo nonsensical superstitious superstition ridden ideas like walking around with a block of camphor around your neck kept a cold at bay, I suppose you kept a clove of garlic in the bedroom as well, didn't you? In case no. Mr. Dracula visited. No, you. no, 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 no. Dracula wasn't around then. Hmm. But Tommy, can I ask? You I don't something? mind. Are you a, are you I a don't Tommy? mind. I don't mind you coming out with any nonsense about camphor. Except, can't you see how medieval it was in the 1930s and 40s that people did that? Ah, well, Tommy, just, just think that in those days when we that wore those camphor blocks, there were very few people w left or, or had to stay away from school uh, and work. L listen. Did you not get cold then when you were younger? Um, listen, uh, there were very few rubbish. people... Don't that make stuff up. No, 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 I'm not uh, making stuff up, Tommy. Well, give me the numbers then. Uh, what numbers? The official numbers. Official numbers? Yeah. Out of my class, which is, uh, is the, the area that no, I can speak about... No, we need to be talking about, nationally here, Pat. Um, oh, well, would a, uh, would a, 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 a five, a six, seven-year-old know of, of you, any I national you, numbers? I bet you a hundred pounds you can't get a single fact to back up the rubbish you're coming out with here. Oh, and I'm supposed to say, oh, yes. No, 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 yes, no. Yes, you're no, right. No, 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 no. no. What, 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 you, what, you, what you need, what you need to to know is that um, from the from the figures that you can drum up today of children not being uh, at school just give me cold, one fact just give me there one were, fact there weren't as many uh, one that fact. Was, and they were have you got a fact there were I'm counting you down um, three um, do you have a fact three do I want any facts at all two yeah. oh why are you with a Tommy Boyd do you have any was facts Tommy Boyd Tommy one, Boyd on. no gone sorry what on earth makes people think that they can just make stuff up totally off the top of their head that supports some notion that, well, you know, things are worse now than... That's, again, she's not... also, she doesn't know how many kids are of off with illness from schools today. When people do this thing... I've been living on this planet for a long time, and therefore, since you haven't been living on this planet for as long as me, I can then just make stuff up <laughs> that will suggest that your life is not going to be as good as mine was mm. when I was your age. That is what I'm bringing to this discussion. Oh, bog off. Really? Honestly. Sorry to be so. Uh, good evening, Tommy. Hello, oh, who's God. this? Uh, good evening. It's nice to know you've got a day job anyway. Uh, coming up shortly. Yes. And I'll hopefully try and bring you during the week. Oh, I'll look forward to it. Yes, but there's a funny... Oh, well, no, it's a, not a statistic, of course. But have you noticed a lot of moths coming into the room this time of year? They never used to come in years ago, did they? No. You never no, used to see a no. moth in the 50s. No, but it's no. genuine. Between <laughs> September and October, November, the, the moths' yeah. population proliferate. But have you noticed when they fly in, their legs are open? You know, very... Yeah, I know where this one's going. <laughs> I'm not interested. <laughs> Thank you for your call. Don't ring me during the week. Uh, hello, who's on line two? Hello, Christine. Oh, yeah. Hello. Now, Tommy, I know you're a man of the future, not of the past. But I wore camphor blocks as well. And camphorated oil was, if, I mean, if you did get a cold, remember in those days there was no central heating. There was, you know, you just had fire in the, in the sitting room and the kitchen range, and that was your heating in the house. If you had these, the, when you went to bed, you had camphor, if you had a cold, Camphor rubbed on your chest, and it helped you breathe. Now, is it up there with leeches, mate? Uh, uh, pardon? It's up there with leeches. But hang on, it might yeah, have helped you, about, but it, but it wouldn't about. stop you catching a cold, would it? Uh, no. But it's much good as leeches. That... Tommy! Really? Listen a minute, if you've got the patience. It would help you to breathe. Nah. If you like had Vicks. a cold. What? Nah, they used to rub Vicks into yeah, children's okay. chest. Yeah, okay. They rubbish. did. They, no, it wasn't. It was. No, no, no that helped. Vicks no, helps you breathe. No, it helps you breathe. It does. It clears the passages. It, it does clear your little... passages. Tommy, Eucalyptus oil. Mind? That's it's rubbish. No, Tommy, it does. All these little soil. No, doctors have proved it. It's rubbish. They have not. Punk, they have. 
It's, an, it's an experiment. Can I Come on, then, what experiments? Can Let's I play him at his own game here. Go on, give us some evidence. There's an experiment on crows. I bet you £100 you, pounds you can't come up now with a single with fact to back they up use, the rubbish they, that you are use, spouting. They use surplus crows. Tommy, how can you rub a crow's chest? In a series of experiments. <laughs> how can you have rub you a crow's chest? Have you ever rubbed a crow's chest? At Horton Down. You are so silly they used sometimes. Experts. They used experts. Oh, rubbish. And volunteer yeah, people. Yeah, I'm going to use your term now. And they used rubbish. a control group of rubbish. crows. Rubbish. How can you rub a, a crow's chest when it's covered in feathers? <laughs> You've got feathers on your chest. Well, all right, cormorants then. What? Cormorants. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and same to you, dear. But the thing is, <laughs> listen, you, you, and you also, <laughs> shut up, you also. It's so it, brilliant that I can't believe you also, this conversation. You also had oh. fried balsam. Uh, do you know what fried balsam is? Oh, it's dreadful stuff for your sinuses. Yeah, but that you doesn't put work that, either. Of course it, it Where'd you put that then? Do you that know, I'd hate to it. be your doctor because you he must have it. a terrible time with you. It's a you. she, don't be so old fashioned. Well, whatever. She. <laughs> she <laughs> must be. Hey, why you see? <laughs> No, you used to have fried balsam on a sugar knob. Rubbish. Well, oh, fried balsam. <laughs> you used to put it on the <laughs> Yeah, I'll tell you what, have you got no. a dustbin? <laughs> have you got a dustbin? Yeah, well, what would you do with that? You I must, know, it must be show. full up. Yeah. With all the rubbish <laughs> you can. All this nonsense that you can No, Tommy, with. listen, fried Cold balsam was soap. good. I expect that was good as well, No, no, no. Was, that was cleansing, but, no, uh, um, Camphated oil was good, and it oh, helped you breathe in the night and stop getting your parents up all night. I can't breathe, mother, you know. Oil. It was good. It was good. And it was more gentle than Vic. Because Vic can be a bit, you know, a bit b vicious. Pun vicious! <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for your call. 08459 However did we win the war? However, did we win the war? That's so great. I still life can't get the towers. picture out of my head of what? you rubbing fix <laughs> <laughs> onto a crow's chest. Well, she wants to know how it could be done, and <laughs> imagine you need gloves, obviously. Yeah, I think so. Line two, you're on two Southern you. Counties Radio. Really? Yes, yes. Good, good morning, Tommy. Good morning, um, Alison. What a wonderful program it is tonight. Thank I sit you. here working as you understand. Graham, I am from Crawley. Um, Interesting program. Earlier on, you had somebody that was talking about threatening you, type of thing with hitmen and all that. Mm -hmm. Does that sort of worry you? No, I'd love it. Uh, oh, you, oh, you like that kind of thing, do you? I'd love there to be a contract out on me. I would keep me on my toes. Oh, so. Well, yeah. a lot of things run, um, run out on me. I'll say that much. <laughs> I'd be terrified. I would. Yeah, I wouldn't fancy it much. No, no. How's married life? Good, Pretty thank good, you. Thank you. Good, good, good. I couldn't hear you last week. I was in Norfolk. I was on holiday. Oh, yeah. And uh, I unfortunately couldn't get you. I don't know why I went up there, but uh, there you are. Anyway, it's a very good program. Always enjoy listening to you. Thank you very Thank much you. indeed, Graham. Keep it up. All the best. Bye-bye. Bye -bye. Thank you. Nice man. Tommy and Alison, someone has texted in. Uh, Chris in Chichester. What are your thoughts on women being referred to as birds? I personally think that men calling women birds makes them sound like morons. Makes the men sound like morons. Yes. Mm, hit that guy earlier. Called me your bird, didn't he? Oh, right. That's probably what Chris is referring to. Um, it doesn't really bother me, if I'm honest. I just think that it just makes the person saying it sound a bit... I don't know, even what makes them sound... It just makes them sound... I don't know if it... I don't know if I find it offensive as such. No. no. I don't, just, like just, I don't like it. I don't but like it, but, I do, but I'm not offended by it. No, OK. It just makes the other person sound a bit thick, really. Yes. Yes. Um... Because they mean it in a... They mean to to make it sound... Like, that guy meant to say it to make me feel bad, didn't he? I think so. He tried to sort of yeah. say it in a horrible yeah. way. People aren't very good at being rude, are they? No. No. Maybe we should write a book. Some guy, it's, it's published tips gu guidelines. On how to be rude. Guidelines. Not tips, guidelines. Fact, Hello? Fact sheet. Hello. Who's on line two? Um, oh, it, go away. I'm sorry, he's banned. Line three, you're on BBC Southern Counties Radio. Hello? <laughs> We 
we've had worse. Yes. <laughs> Line four. Hello. Hello. Hello, old Fred. They knocked his house down in Gloucester, they did. Old Fred. Yes, I heard that. There's a, there's a, there's a, there's a, there's a garden now there where the, the, in the Cornwall Road where that, where that was, you know? Yes. Have well, you, did, and that's not a bad thing, is it? Did you know old Fred? Obviously. What did you think of him then? A lot of time for him. You did? Did you not? Well, I, I never met him, but I, I knew people who did know him. And what did they say? Well, they said if he was on site there, he was all right. It was just all yeah. that sort of stuff that got him going, you know? I know, I know, I know. Do you like Gloucester, then? How can you not? Well, it's a nice place, isn't it? I love the headline in the Gloucester local newspaper. 1911 it was. The headline was, Local Woman in Shipping Accident. And do, you know, and do you know what the story... Hang on. Do you know what the story was? No, I don't know, no. That was the Titanic. <laughs> local woman in shipping accident. Always got to find a local angle. Always got to find a local angle. They reckon angle. they found him hanging in a cell, they did. Yes, and, um, well, they did. They didn't reckon they did. Gradually pieced it together. Now we've got this. <laughs> See, it's an odd night tonight. It Hello, is very odd tonight. Very odd tonight. Hello. Hello. It's very again, but I'm sorry to be a Newton. It's all right. I can't bother. I'm going to turn the radio. Um, I want you to have a quick word about Gertrude Jones. Why not? Nothing to do with the original things that we spoke about. Yeah. Um, hello, Tommy. Hello. It's me again, Marie yes. from 10. Um, I'd rather talk about Gertrude Lawrence than anybody Yeah, else. I was watching this afternoon film. It suddenly occurred to me that Gertrude Lawrence was in my youth. In your youth? Yeah. Who is Gertrude and, and, Lawrence? And I, and I was born in 1919. Yes. And, and I suddenly thought, God, I must be old. I'm, I'm 86 now, but I don't consider that old. Now, I wonder by how you feel at the same age. What will you do? At what age again? 86. 86? Yeah. That's um, me. What was the question again? What would you do at my age, 86? How would you fill in your time? What would you do? What were your thoughts? Um, it's a good question. Yeah. Um... Think about it. See, well, I am. You see, what, I do, what I'm discovering is that although your ability to have sex diminishes... Yeah. Your obsession with thinking about it, if anything, increases. Well, I've been without my husband for 20 years. I wasn't asking. No, I'm telling you, I've been oh. without for 20 years. I know. I so haven't needed sex. One other no, of course not. None of us need it, but it comes into your mind. Yeah. So and how does that apply to you, 86? Well, because uh, one of the things that I'm interested in finding out, if I make 86, and I hope I do... Yeah, is, I hope you do too. Yes, is whether I still think about sex as much as uh, the way things are going, I will. I and whether you know. still can. Do it. Pun? Mm. Yeah. At 86. And whether I still can do it mm. at 86. No, I think you won't be able to. What um, age do you think... What age? This is what the, age? The oldest, I, I, I feel the that most... is. Mm. My husband's slowing down at the age of 60-odd. Slowing down? Yeah. If, if, if I could call you that, slowing I down. Know. Yeah. Um, I know. Because I was, I was loving wife and he was loving husband. Oh. Yeah. But he died when he was 66. Right. So you're too young. So, Twenty years ago, Two. more, um, and I've been without him. I've not wanted sex. No, fine. No, that's fine. That's fine. But it's different. Sex is very different for women in lots of ways. I realise, yes. Yes, yeah. isn't it, Alison? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and it's also very different from individual to individual. But how would you feel? And generation, and generation yeah, definitely a generation. Well, that, that's it. I mean, I, I, I don't know, do I? No, well, I mean, I was suddenly taken. To find that I was both looking at her to go to Lawrence, and I knew in my youth I used to go and see her shows. Yes. And no cowards. Gertie. Um, they, they, yeah, Gertie yes. and no cowards. And I, I, it suddenly occurred to me 
that's so old. I never felt old before. Well, you are. That would be mine. Well, no. I, I think mean, you're as young as your. My husband used to say. No, we're not. No, this isn't. This isn't no, 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 there's nothing wrong with being old. No, 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 old is a bad thing, isn't it? Six is year old, that's fantastic. Yeah, tell me this is. You've learned joke. a lot of things, you've got great wisdom and depth. Yeah, and but tell me this is. My husband used to say, you're only as old as the woman you're feeding. Yes. You well, we're back to sex again. Thank you, Maria, for your <laughs> call. Um, I don't know. It's, it's an impossible question to ask. I know what? one thing. What? What you're going to be like when you're 86? Mm. I don't know what I'm like now. So you'll make it to 86. Oh, shut up! Not you. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> we're, no, I've been I've been just backing, banging callers on air tonight without any sort of warning at all, and most of them pick up. But this bloke who keeps going, oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's getting to me. If a caller with phones up and breathes at us, oh. <laughs> <laughs> and then it's just I'm worried that we'll find out that he has actually been burgled. He's been tied up and he's trying to dial the emergency <laughs> services, you know, with his tongue. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, line four. Hello. Speak to us. No. I don't think there's anybody there. Okay. Right, let's just sort of regroup, shall we? Mm. Quick email here uh, from Ricky, who uh, says, I am vivid from the board. I just want to echo Alison's words from last week about the England football team. A few of us from the board have expressed views about, in essence, not being surprised about the performance, attitude and motivation of the players. I could bang on about the reasons why England aren't fulfilling their potential with the so-called superstars we have. After years of disillusion, ending up supporting Northern Ireland. I ended up supporting Northern Ireland, ah. says Vivid. It did bring about good feelings seeing high-profile players being brought down to earth. What are your thoughts about that one? My heroes are the team of Italian 90, composing the likes of Lineker... Beardsley and the likes seem more honest about that squad than the current ones. Do, do you understand any of that, dear Orange? That flown right over. Oh, there? so patronising. Thank you. Of course I understand it. What is there not to understand? Oh, just see who's on line three. Line three. Okay. Hello, who's there? Hello, can I tell you a joke? Please do. A man walking down the street with a banana in his ear. A man walks up to him and says, Hello, why are you walking down the street with a banana in your ear? And the other man says, Sorry, I can't hear you. I've got a banana in my ear. Yes. Yes. <laughs> okay. I thought it was going to be the one the man's got a banana in one ear and some ice cream in the other. I'll tell you another one. He's not interested. No. <laughs> no I'm not very good at jokes. I'm not very clever. Really? <laughs> Tommy was going to tell you a joke then. Oh, go on then. A man walking down the street, and he's got a banana in one ear, and in the other ear, he's got some ice cream and some custard, and a few mm. hundreds and thousands. Mm. And a man comes up to him and says, why have you got a banana in one ear and, uh, some ice cream and some custard and some hundreds and thousands in the other one? And do you know what the man says? Yeah, I'm a banana Good boy! <laughs> you knew I was, was going coming. to tell you that one as well. Yeah, but you wouldn't have told it with the same panache. Though. No, I wouldn't. No. no. Any more? Uh, a man goes to the doctor with a cistern on his head. Oh, go on, yes. You heard this one? Go on. It's a little fast. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I quite like a man goes to the doctor and he goes, uh, Doctor, doctor, I keep thinking I'm a dog. <laughs> and the doctor goes, right, get up on the couch. She's like, oh, I'm not allowed up on the furniture. <laughs> <laughs> it's quite good. That's not brilliant. Uh, oh, well. Oh, well. Any more? No, not tonight. That's it. Is this funny, right? I don't know. No, I haven't done anything yet. A man is walking along the street. <laughs> and he's got one <laughs> shoe on. <laughs> <laughs> and a woman goes up to him and she says, Have you lost a shoe? <laughs> and he goes, He goes, No. Well, you found one. <laughs> what is that funny? <laughs> 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 an 
old night tonight. <laughs> Right, calm down. That's That's funny. Sorry. It is right. funny. That is funny. Oh, dear. That is very, very funny. And this one. Try this one, right? <laughs> I forgot to pay my BT bill. Oh. So they cut off my phone. But when the weather turns cold and damp, I can still hear it ringing. <laughs> I prefer the shoe one. Don't you like amputation jokes? No. no. <laughs> anyway, cheers, mate. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye bye. <laughs> <laughs> I love that phone joke. I can tell. Do you not like that joke? Not really. I like the shoe one. Why? Why is that funny? I don't know. It's just, <laughs> just funny. Oh. <laughs> the voice you do as well. I no. <laughs> <laughs> I found one. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, <laughs> who's on line one? <laughs> oh, go away! <laughs> so stupid, this show now. I'm so sorry. If you pay a licence fee, you must be really angry. Um, this is awful radio. I cannot apologise enough. The Just so you know who to write the complaints to, you're listening right. to Tommy Boyd Ed and Douglas. Alison Ferns. <laughs> BBC Southern County's radio. Yeah. Get us off. Who's there? Hello, Ali. It's Adam from Brighton. Hello, Adam. Um, a man walks into a vet with his dog and he says, I think my dog, my dog's dead. <laughs> We're just laughing already now. We just got to the joke's half hour. Yeah, go on. And uh, he says, I think my dog's sick. Can you tell me? So he gets his stethoscope out and he listens to the dog's heart and sure enough, he seems to be dead. He says, well, I'm not happy with that. I need a second opinion. He says, OK, then. Well, there's nobody here, but I've got my cat out the back. I'll, I'll go and get that, and you can have a look at it. So the cat looks at it, runs his paw across the dog. Nothing. Cat hangs its head down over and lets out a meow, or a mindful meow. So he said, no, still not happy. I want another opinion. We said, I've only got my dog in, my Labrador dog. He says, well, all right, go and get him, and we'll try him. So the Labrador dog comes in, and uh, he looks at it, pokes it, prods it hangs his head down low and lets out a, a woof woof. Um, the chap says, well, OK, he's dead. How much do I owe you? He said, that's 640 pounds. He said, what? 640 pounds? Tell me my dog's dead. Why is that? He said, well, if he just asked me, it would have been 40 quid, but as soon as you wanted a cat scan and a lab report... Cat scan and a lab report! <laughs> boom, boom. Thank you. So one, Thank you. Go on, then. One, one more. All right, one quick one. Right, Mr Goldstein walking down Stamford Hill High Street. Oh, no, 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 no. We can't do any... No. It's Zionist. not that bad. No, I mean, if it is. <laughs> it's oh, well, not. it might be, then. All right, well, Mr. Smith walking down Stamford Hill High Street. How's that? Okay, sure. Right, Mr. Stamford Hill, uh, Mr. Jones walking down Stamford Hill High Street. Yes. And he sees his whole form like a table in the window. And he's, it's got four thousand pounds on it. Can't believe it. Goes in the shop. He says, "How comes that for, for my table four thousand pounds?" He says, "Well, it's a magic table, sir." So to ask you a question using numbers, and it'll give you an answer. So, right, magic table. How much have I got in my back pocket? And with that, jumps up and down ten times. So he goes to the bank, gets the money, and takes it home. His friend comes over from over the road. He says, "What's this old rubbish for my table you got in your window?" So the magic table. He says, what do you mean it's magic table? So, I'll ask you a question using numbers, and it'll give you an answer. Said, all right, then, magic table, how much have I got in my back pocket? He says, but that, it jumps up and down 20 times. He said, no, nah, it must be magnetic or voice activated or something. Try asking you a question you not even you know. So all right, magic table, magic table, how much has my wife got in her bank account? With that, the table's gone absolutely crazy. It's hit the ceiling, it's hit the wall, it's fallen over, it's twisted upside down, it's jumped up and down. So then she stopped 40,000 times. So I stood in the middle of the room, scratched his head and said, Goodness gracious me, how she got that much money in the bank? And with that, the legs are spread out and the drawers are falling down. Thank you very good much. Night. Yeah, OK. <laughs> good enough. Yeah, good work. Wasn't really a very quick one, was it? But he told it. He did. Quickly. He did. <laughs> <laughs> yes. He told it very quickly. Do you have a favourite joke? What's the joke you tell? Um, I have one. Go on that, uh, but you need a lighter to do it. A lighter? Mm. Yeah, and it's kind of a seasonal joke. I did hear one the other day, though. I'm just trying to remember it. Um, a guy walks into a bar at the top of the Empire State Building. He says, wow, that's a lovely bar, beautiful view. Guy standing next to the bar goes, yeah, yeah, amazing building. Yeah, you've been here before? He goes, no, no, never. Always his drink. The guy goes, yeah, the place has got amazing history. He says, you see like, that window over there, just two along from the right? 
no one really knows why, but you throw yourself out of it, you fall, one foot, two foot, three foot, four foot, five foot, all of a sudden, whoosh, up you come, back into the bar again. That goes, no, absolute rubbish, you can't throw yourself out of buildings. He says, no, seriously, he goes, look, I'll show you. You know, I'm not messing around. So this guy, strange at the bar, gets up, throws himself out, drops, one, two, three, four, five, whoosh, back up into the bar. But it goes, my, that's amazing, I have a go at that. So he jumps out, drops one foot, two foot, three foot, four foot, five foot, six foot, seven foot, splat. Barman turns around to the guy at the bar, he says, you know what, Superman, He's you're a right yeah. idiot when you were drunk. It's oh, a relief for a minute. <laughs> I, I thought you were going to tell the Angel Gabriel version of it. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh. <laughs> mm. It's uh, knocking off time on the building site, but the uh, lift going all the way from the top of the scaffolding down to the bottom of the building site is full. Mm. Um, so they, they say to the last chap, wait here, we'll come and get you in a minute. Mm. He says, no, that's all right. He says, I'll make my own way down. So he jumps off. <whistles> Boom. Very badly mangled at the bottom there. They all rush over and they say, well, <laughs> what were you thinking of? And he says, well, it's just that over lunch the foreman told me that he used to fly in Wellingtons. <laughs> that's the type of plane. <laughs> It doesn't right, matter. Right, no. It's a, it's a Second World War joke. <laughs> yeah, I think it's a lot of my material. Not all of my material is that modern. A bit more up to date, <laughs> maybe. It's the most recent joke I know. I'll give you my one that normally needs a lighter, but I'll do it without a lighter. It's not about arson, is it? <laughs> <laughs> it's I, I, about I this guy and he wants courage. to get a really special Christmas present for his missus. Okay. So he thinks, right, I want something different, don't want perfume, really want to go all out. So he thinks, I know, pet shop, find something unusual and original there. So he goes into the pet shop and he explains to the owner, I want something really, really knockout, standout present for my wife. He says, sir, I have just the thing for you. Chet, the singing parrot. Goes out the back, brings this bird out in this cage. He says, wait till you see Chet. Bloke's not sure. Husband thinks, mm, don't know my wife's going to be impressed with a parrot. The owner of the pet shop says, no, watch, watch what happens. Gets his lighter out, holds the lighter under Chet's left foot. Chet starts to sing. Silent night, holy night. Husband thinks, wow, this is impressive. Owner says, oh, you ain't seen it all yet. Puts the lighter under Chet's right foot. Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. He says, right, well, that's it. I love that. Hands over his money, takes it home. Christmas Day, the wife opens her present, takes a look at Chet and thinks, what on earth is this? Husband says, no, no, this is Chet, the singing parrot. Watch what he does. Lighter under the left foot, silent night. Under the right foot, jingle bells, jingle bells. Wow, she says, that is amazing. I love you. Just the one thing, though. What happens if we put the lighter in between Chet's legs? He says, well, I don't know about that. The owner, the pet shop owner never showed me. Have a go. So she tries it. Chet's nuts roasting on an open fire. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Let's have a lighter with me next time we go out. Mind you, we both have lighters <laughs> before we go out, don't we? That's um, awful. I like that, I mean, it's that good. Though. It's good. It's good. It's good. All those jokes about, you know, thing, uh, forming animals they're always very good mm. there's the duck one isn't there is there the tap dancing duck on the <laughs> no. biscuit tin <laughs> what you know? i don't know that one you do no i don't it's the same sort of principle bloke comes in he says you know duck it can tap dance the barman says he shows him it does he sells it to the barman the barman sees him a week later he says um the duck's not tap dancing on the biscuit tin anymore the bloke opens up the biscuit tin. He said, well, there's the problem. The candle's gone out. <laughs> oh, Chet is much better than that one. No, isn't that better than Oh, Chet? no. No, 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 no. The 12-inch pianist? No, <laughs> I don't know what you don't you're going to say, one, you? Ben. <laughs> <laughs> no, you don't want that one? Okay, fine. I like all the silly little ones as well, like... What do you call a man with a seagull on his head? No. Cliff. Yes, yes. Hello's there. Hello. 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 Hello, it's Pat here. Hi, Pat. Now then, a very quick, a very small little quick joke, then a bit longer one, if he's got the time. Mm. Right. Why was the sparrow pregnant? I don't know. Ah, oh, because she lifted her leg for a lark. 
<laughs> that one. Yes. yes. Now the other one, a little bit longer. Mm. You know, I, I don't, where are you where are you uh, based? Uh, are you based in Brighton. Yeah. Well, you know New Haven, don't you? I know it well. You know, got problems there with the ferries. Yes. Right. Okay. Well, to get it all going, they decided the French ferry company and the British ferry company decided to have a race from Dieppe to New Haven. Mm. Right. Now the British ferry was called one two three. The French ferry is called Un de Trois. Yeah. So there's all these people standing at New Haven waiting for them to come across the channel, right, the two ferries, to see who's going to win, right? There's everyone standing at New Haven, their binoculars, it's very misty, la la la, and there's the British people saying, one, two, three's going to win. No, it isn't. The French say, no, Un de Trois's going to win. No, Un de Trois. And the mist was so thick, they really couldn't see who was going to win. Anyway... Through the mist came one, two, three. And all the French were saying, What has happened to un de trois? And what what did the British say? Ha! Un de trois cut sunk! Ha <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Yay! Was that, very good. Was that quite good? Yeah, that very good. That's a nine, yeah. Well you, told, too. You, you two aren't married, are you? No, we're not. No. Well, you know, you get on very well, I tell you. Well, you do? That, Sometimes. That proves we're not married, yes. then. Yes. Well, that's very true, <laughs> my dear boy. That really is, yeah. I know, I know, I know, I know. Uh, I know. 08459 Well, luckily, we've got to jokes quite late in the show, otherwise... Otherwise, we'd, we'd have I know. a long show. Yeah. Um, and we've got Mick. Do we know which one of those might be Mick? Old quarter to one man? Yeah, I think this might be Mick. Hello? Hello. Oh, hello. Oh, hello. Hi. I've got a joke. Go on, then. Um, there were two men going to work in a lighthouse at night, and, well, they're rowing out on the boat, go row, 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 get to the lighthouse, go through the corridor up the stairs, go through the corridor up the sta stairs, and so on, get to the top, and they find out they need a new light bulb, so they go down the corridor, through down the stairs, down corridor, downstairs, doing corridor, downstairs, and they row, 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 get in light bulb, row back to the lighthouse, through the corridor up the stairs, through the corridor up the stairs, through the corridor up the stairs. But when one of the men is putting the light bulb in, he gets a very, very nasty electric shock, um, and he dies suddenly. So right. the other man goes down the stairs, through the corridor, 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 row, 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 row to the mainland. You ask another guy for a coffin. So but they both go row, 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 back to the lighthouse. Um, but when they get there, they find that the co coffin doesn't fit through the corridors. And he goes, OK, what are we going to do? The other guy goes, forget it, we'll just take the lift. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. Very good. Just emailing Mick to see if he's on tonight. Uh, I think Mick's one of our mobile callers, so let's try line four. Hello, line four. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> no let's, talk, let's talk back. <laughs> Oh. Oh, it sounds really rude now. <laughs> a, no, it doesn't sound rude. It doesn't sound sexual to me at all. Hello, line two. <laughs> right, Tommy, it's Mick. Oh. oh, hello. Hello, Alison. I've got a quick joke for you. Which will come first, Christmas or the response to the <laughs> questions and answers <laughs> you to do nearly a year ago? Christmas, probably. Okay. Which is mm. rubbish. <laughs> Jarvis Cocker. Beautiful. She came from Greece. She had a thirst for knowledge. She studied sculpture at St. Martin's College. That's where I caught her eye. She told me that her dad was loaded. I said, in that case, I'll have rum and Coca-Cola. She said, fine. And then in 30 seconds time, she said, I want to live like common people. I want to do whatever common people do. I want to sleep with common people. I want to sleep with common people like you. 
So what else could I do? I took it to a supermarket. I don't know why, but I had to start it somewhere. So it started there. I said, pretend you've got no money. She just laughed and said, oh, you're so funny. I said, yeah. Well, I can't see anyone else smiling in here. Are you sure you want to live like common people? You want to see whatever common people see? You want to sleep with common people? You want to sleep with common people like me? But she didn't understand. She just smiled and held my hand. Rent a flat above a shop. Cut your hair and get a job. Smoke some fags and play some pool. Pretend you never went to school. But still, you'll never get it right. Because when you're laid in bed at night, watching roaches cry on the wall, if you called your dad, you could stop it all. You'll never live like common people. You'll never do what common people do. You'll never fail like common people. You'll never watch your life slide out of view and then dance and drink and screw because there's nothing else to do. Sing along with the common people. Sing along and it might just get you through. Laugh along with the common people. Laugh along even though they're laughing at you and the stupid things that you do because you think that poor is cool. Like a dog laying in a corner. They will bite and never warn you. Look out. They'll tear your insides out. Because everybody hates a tourist, especially one who thinks it's all such a laugh. Yeah. And the chip stains grease will come out in the bath. You'll never understand how it feels to live your life with no meaning or control and with nowhere else to go. You're amazed that they exist and they burn so bright whilst you can only wonder why. She said, I want to live with common people like you. So I said, well, I'll see what I can do. Another great one from Mick. Yeah, we said it before, but it's it's interesting how the lyrics turn out to actually be better than mm. you, you always than you thought they were when they had the music. Yeah, you don't listen Deflect to the lyrics in yeah, the same way, do you? I mean, yeah, you hear them, but but the music is the thing that that rips mm. at your soul, and so the lyrics kind of you, know, you can tell they're good and interesting, but uh, he does a good job, Mick. I like Mick. Five minutes to go to Radio 5 and back to proper radio. Much to the relief, I think, of a, a lot of people who mm. need normal radio. Yes. And, uh, and there are such people, plenty of people such like that. Mm. So, um, where are we then? Are we seeing each other during the week? No. No. Not this week, but we will speak. We will. Well, we'll communicate because we've got various projects. Mm. Of course, you'll be in Guildford all week, won't you? I will be in Guildford, you will be in Brighton, my darling. But I will message you. <laughs> we can ENPS each other. Yes. What's the anagram of that? <laughs> Who knows? I, I will message you. <laughs> I say. <laughs> I'll bring the patchouli. So you're going to be on Monday. It's your first show. Yes. I shall be tuned in. I'm practising pressing the wrong buttons. <laughs> no, 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 it'll be, it'll be good fun. I'm looking forward to it enormously. Um, cause, uh, cause, well, it's just something slightly different and interesting. Mm. And we need interesting, don't we? We do. I think I have a greater morbid fear of boredom than anything else. Mm. It was about quarter to midday in a tech ops lesson at Tudor Grammar School with Bill Cobb, who was our teacher, Mr. Cobb. And I suddenly got so bored that I couldn't sit still. I, squ I had to squirm. I felt my life slipping away from me as I tried to, to construct a right angle using a set square mm. and a T-square. 
uh, on the drawing board that we had and I knew it was irrelevant and and, and I didn't want to be spending any of my life doing anything irrelevant mm. because life is so short and so precious that why should I do this thing that I knew was irrelevant it was deeply irrelevant and I squirmed on the seat mm. you're the same yeah I mean a lot of work a lot of what you have to do like clearing up the sink yeah boring but it has so, a purpose yeah it does it. it does but when you do but something school, irrelevant you do, yeah you do stuff which you, you know really you're never ever going to use again yeah. did you not want to stand up sometimes and say this is a waste of time. What please. is the point of this? Can I go and mm. run barefoot through the meadow? Please. Mm. Please. Why do they never let you do things like that? Why do you never do things like that at school? The thing I've never understood, though, is, okay, that happens at school, but that's at a time when we don't have any choice over it. Why is it that some people still in adult life do things... I know. ...that they really don't want to do just because that's what's that's done? That's what you have to do. I know. Mm. Well, you know my old theory about the fact that the Brits are um, the people who stayed at home. The conventional people who wouldn't go to America, wouldn't go to the New World. Millions of Brits did. Scots, mm. Irish, Welsh, English. Mm. Millions of English went. Not, not, not fleeing famine or anything, just going, yeah, that looks good. And the ones that stayed behind were ever so sort of... Hello? Hello? Oh, mm. it's a cluster here. <laughs> Boats can be very dangerous. Mm. But what I'll do is have several generations of children, all of whom inevitably will be a bit like me. Luckily, my parents aren't like that. Nor are yours. No. The safer option. Yes. That's the size of it. Um, I think I will be working with you on Thursday. Bliss. Joy and bliss. And then we're back on Saturday. Beautiful. Isn't life sweet? It is. Yes. That was a Mike Lee play. Not his best. No. <laughs> They're getting ready. What? Radio 5. 5 Live. I can hear them now. I can hear there. them warming up. Yes. Well, we mustn't take the mickey. I'm not. But yes, I can are. hear them. No. Warming up? No, in about... 30 seconds time what, they're going to be doing that me 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 red leather yellow leather red leather yellow leather are you aluminium my man no i'm copper bottom wing mum they're getting ready peter piper pick up pick, pickled pick peppers turn your radio down now because yeah. otherwise they're gonna really no, shout I, in I your ear really make it obvious by being very quiet. really quiet see you next week no no Radio 5 Live. It's one o'clock. Good morning. I'm Dahlia Raphael. Welcome to Up All Night on BBC Radio 5 Live on AM, on FM, on BBC Local Radio, on digital and online. Coming up on the programme, we're live courtside at Flushing Meadow for the women's final of the US Open. There's the very latest from New Orleans as President Bush calls for national unity and reminds Americans how they came together four years ago on the anniversary of 9-11. And we'll have a roundup of all the action in the Premiership and can England clinch an Ashes victory at the Oval.